Surviving 500 days in a Minecraft zombie war. Get ready for an emotional roller coaster in this unscripted 500 day video. What started as a simple game mode of escaping a zombie infested island transformed into a captivating passion project with its own unique lore. And after a year of hard work, we proudly present this incredible movie. If you go on to enjoy this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss a video. But sit back, relax, and enjoy the compilation video. We were instructed to log onto the server and to follow all the rules. And most importantly, listen to everything they had to say. I logged online and instantly someone was aiming a gun right at my face telling me to get against the wall. This was interesting. And it's great to see what the admins are actually doing for us here. But what's gonna happen? Once everyone was logged online, it was now time to get moving. So the admin opened the door and shoved us out. Emerging onto a street with a truck and a car waiting. Looking around, I could see that this town or city had fallen. Were the admins being nice and evacuating us? I know the answers, but that's my future self talking. At this current time, all the players here didn't know what game we were getting ourselves into. And it wasn't long until we were driving down the broken streets of whatever this town used to be. This journey took time, but in all honesty, it was actually building anticipation. I was getting excited for the adventure that was about to come, and we all knew roughly what we were getting ourselves into. We knew there were going to be zombies, we knew there were guns, we knew the mods that we had. But the mods weren't everything. It's the game mode that the admins have created for us players to compete against. So these little details are appreciated, especially by me. After being ferried through the town, we ended up at an airport. And this is where things get really interesting. And Admin was ready to greet us. He led us through what was once, I'm sure, a thriving terminal. But now this airport looked abandoned. And it's a ghost town. We came to the departure section and we were told that there was a diamond, iron and gold door. Choose one of three. It's your choice. At this point, a group was already starting to form. Jack and I wanted to go together and Dermo and Bubbles were also coming with us. The others were shoved into their gates by the admins while we waited because we were unsure if we should enter or not. I didn't want to get killed before the party even starts. But here we have a team of four. And what looks like to be a plane waiting on the outside. This is very interesting. We were shoved through the gate and told to go down to the end and to jump into the vehicle. A plane is waiting for us. We all jumped into the plane. This was the vessel that was going to be taking us on an adventure. But I wouldn't call it an adventure of a lifetime. It's an adventure of death. The plane taxied up the runway. Going past the other two planes where the other players were in. We were finally on the runway. And with that, the admin took a short pause. Until all you could hear is the roar of the engine. And we were off.
the adventure is only beginning. After a 15 minute flight, we started to see land for the first time. An island was emerging and the plane was beginning to descend. But little did we know, our cells were descending into chaos. The plane touched down and everything seemed quiet until we got to the end of the runway and instantly we were greeted by flesh eating zombies. I've experienced these guys before on another mob pack and they're not easy. So we do have to take good care. Our first instincts was to get somewhere high where we can take a breather and figure out a plan on what we're going to do. Because we have limited food and walking around with no head on us is gonna get us killed. Maybe not by a zombie, maybe even by a player. So we must be careful. But that's when we learned we were definitely a few days into the adventure. Because while waiting on top of the tower, we saw another player. But not in the default stuff that we spawned in. But in Diamond and Iron, we was running past. We weren't the first players to be dropped off here. We didn't have long to figure out a plan. Because while trying to contain the zombies on the ladder, Jack accidentally knocked me off. And with this, I had to jump down for safety. If I stayed up there, I would have died. But the whole team followed me. And now we had Monty Moo 2 here. Who looks like was helping us out. These zombies were deadly. And now there was a second plane load of players here. They just landed. And this is the first thing they see. Complete chaos. As a four-man group, we decided it's time to get out of here. So with that, we look for a gap in the fence. I know for a fact zombies are 100% a threat. And it's easy to think that it's just the zombies we're against. But it's also other players. You can't trust anyone. They can kill if they want to. And some people find fun in that. When we left the airport, we found a house. Where being rookies, we thought would be a fantastic place to just lay low for a while. Gather our thoughts instead of running endlessly around the place. And we did gather our thoughts. Maybe too many thoughts. Because now we had a horde around the house and no way out. The doors were blocked. Mostly every window was covered. If we're gonna get out of here, we have to go for it. So we decided we'd break this empty window right here. And that's what we did. That was a close one. It's time to escape this horde keep moving. For that night, we traveled along, looting houses as we go, not really finding much yet. But we had to keep moving, because that horde, yeah, they were on our tail. It was now day, and we had lost a horde in the night. Now zombies do spawn in the day, and they don't burn for sure. But the day is a lot easier than the night for some reason. But even as our group was completely and utterly just in a bit of chaos mode right now, all talking over each other, all having plans on what we should do, we all agreed on one thing, and that's we should find a place to sell. Make a house, make a building, a fort. Somewhere where we can be safe and survive endless nights 
And with that, we found a town that we were going to settle nearby with. And I had also found a massive stash of hay bales. That would give us some temporary food. But I was currently waiting in a house, waiting for Jack to come over with backup. So while he grabs the hay bales, I can defend him with the baseball bat with nails that I had just acquired. Jack was harvesting the hay bales, and we were defending him. Finding his food is much needed. With the food acquired, it was now time to settle down. We found this field nearby the town we were just at. And this is where we agreed we were going to build a fort and where we were going to live. And I'm telling you this right now. It couldn't have came at a better time. The blood moon was rising. And when this happens, the zombies, it's a frenzy. If we were outside right now, we wouldn't be able to survive. As a group, we huddled together and prayed that the walls would hold and we'd survive the night. We survived, but we had a slight problem. Now we might have survived the night, but the zombies that came with the night, they're still here. And there's a lot of them. We had to get rid of them. So with that, we all took positions and we started slicing him through the fence. Slowly, but surely, breaking down the horde. But after killing zombie after zombie, we started to realize that maybe staying home isn't the best thing to do. We do need a safe place to be when we're on the server, for sure. But I think we have to go out and loot, get stronger. The admins had placed loot all over the world for this reason, to make it more entertaining for them. So they don't just watch people for a hundred days sit inside their base, all safe and cozy. They want you to take risks. So with that, Jack and I decided that we'd go. While Bubbles and Dermo would attempt to make this into a fortress where we can be fully self-sufficient grow food, have all the materials we need, like building blocks. So when it comes to it, we have a place to be safe. And myself and Jack then would get supplies for the four of us. We all agreed on one thing before we left. That it's the four of us and that's it. We're gonna survive the 100 days together. So with that, Dermos and Bubbles got building and stayed at home and we headed off into the wilderness. Ready to see what this world had to offer us. Jack and I took things slow while searching the wilderness. Moving every single time the sun was rising. And then hiding every single time the sun was falling. We were following power lines. In hopes that that would lead us to a big town. And then looting whatever houses we could get along the way. I say it was maybe three days or so we were following these power lines. But I must admit, it did pay off in the end. Because it led us into a town. Which had a decent bit of loot inside it. And this is when Jack found ammo. For the gun that I had been carrying for so long. And now, we had our first gun with actual ammo inside it. But we were taking things very slow. Just keeping a lookout. There's a lot of players on the server currently right now. We gotta be safe. It's always better to be safe than I suppose being dead. And when walking back to Jack, I saw a name that wasn't us. Jack and I hid in an apartment room with my shotgun aimed at the door 
There were two players. It was Rainbow and Midori. They might have spotted us because they were talking in chat. But we were just staying quiet. And a bit of time passed. And it seemed like they were gone. But just in case, we exited the building slowly. But that was our first player encounter out in the actual wild. But it was time to keep moving. And then when looting a small little village, I spotted another player in the distance. And Jack and I, well, we didn't want to be evil. We didn't want to just kill people, but we wanted stuff. And we wanted stuff for our players. Dermo and Bubbles, they didn't have the greatest PCs. Especially Dermo. And this guy, from what I see from the distance, has diamond leggings. So we came up with a plan. Will you help? Uh, excuse me? Will you help me? I have nothing. You have nothing? Nothing. Will you help me clear this house? Somehow you cleared that house? I... No, it's zombie invested. Oh, it's completely zombie infested. Well, yeah, there were zombies there anyway. Help me. Um, I could, but I'm not very good at fighting, man. No problem. I think we just kind of need to find a safe place for the night, man. Just around the corner. Yeah. On this yes, side. you're in that barn, though, aren't you? So you're here. No, no, you're going very yellow, far away. The yellow one. It's just here. Can you can you get can you come up behind? If I go behind these rocks, can you come up and get behind them? Yeah. Oh wait. This Wait, never mind. Okay, just do your thing. There's no zombies um, here Should now. we just kind of find a place to stay for the night, man? Hi, buddy. Excellent. Look. <clears throat> I, look. We can both, we can all live here. I just need those pants. That's it. This is not even for me. Perfect. Here you go, man. Here you go. Just take, just take the stuff. No problem, right? I'll let you live. Now. Get yourself nice and cozy in here. Move out of the way quickly. Get yourself nice and cozy in here. Stay here for the night. Yeah, I mean, are you sure zombies won't spawn in here? Yeah, that's fine. Get in the corner. <laughs> and be safe. There you go. There's some pants for extra protection. Come on, Jack. We gotta go. Come on, let's get home. Yeah, yeah. Right, we can give those. Uh, to yeah. We can give these to Derma. After that successful holdup, I hope that guy's doing alright in the barn right now. We were home, with a fresh pair of leggings, but like I said, they weren't for me. They were Dermo. We wanted to keep him safe, his PC is not the greatest, and the mod pack that we're playing on is pretty darn intensive. It can be laggy at times. And look, if these leggings help him live, I want to do all the best for my members. We can't save everyone, but I can try save the players that are living with us. I went down to the mine to find Dermo. And after a while of searching, I found him. Oh. Stay safe. Oh, thanks. But during that night, I couldn't help but feel bad. I felt terrible for the player we just robbed. He was so low and alone. And we didn't even offer him to come home with us. So as soon as the sun rose and it was safe to go out, we started heading back to the barn. Hoping we'd find him. He wasn't at the barn, so we decided to head in the direction he was going. When I first met him. And that was the road going up the village. And that's... When we found him. Where, let's just say... He didn't want to be caught by us again. Hello? No, 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 please, 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 please. Yo, it's okay, it's okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's all good. I, I don't mean any harm. We feel bad. Oh? Are you with anyone? Um, yeah, I was on my way to like a, a base, but yeah. Well, we've got a settlement if you want to join us. No, no games this time. We feel honestly so bad. We went back to the, the little barn, but you'd run off, so we just guessed from the direction you were going. Um, give me one second, second call trouble. Yeah, we have a settlement. If you'd like to join, it's nearby. It's safe. You won't die. And then you can slowly, hopefully, meet up with your friends. Um, sure, I'll follow you guys for now, as long as it's not like another trap. It's not a trap. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, it's not a trap. We feel bad, honestly. Ah, no worries, man. I got like some food out of it. 
Yeah, okay. It's right. Come with us and we'll take you there. Now Jack and I, we had a new plan. And that was to defy the Abbots. And to gather as many players as we could. Make a massive settlement. And all survive the 100 days together. So with that, Jack agreed to take Knight back to the settlement. And then both myself and Jack would head out solo and alone to find and recruit more players for our camp. And with this, I said to the group that I'm going to disconnect myself from Discord and fully immerse myself into the project. And if anything happens to the camp, I won't know until I return home. I asked for Knight's iron armor because I was heading out alone and he was heading back to camp where he can make some more there. But Knight was very skeptical of us. I don't blame him. We just robbed him. But now, it was time to survive by myself. It's the first time going solo. Going solo and not knowing where I needed to go, I found myself not finding any houses. And it was night time, and to make it worse, it was raining. I just don't like rain. But finally, I'd found myself a house. I'm gonna stay here until the day. Or that's what I thought anyway. The zombies started gathering, and they were breaking through the doors. And to make it worse, there was a player on the other side, who I didn't know was friendly or not, and he had a gun, just to make it worse. I knew with the doors breaking, I had to get out of here, so I did what I had to do. Please don't shoot. Please don't shoot, please don't shoot, please don't shoot. I have to leave that house. Please don't shoot, please don't shoot, please don't shoot. Coming in. Actually, maybe not. Too risky. I'd made it to the house. I did try to break into his house because I wanted to survive the night with him. He didn't shoot me and he had every opportunity to. Maybe this is a player that can come back to the camp with me. I've just got to hope the zombies don't break down this door. This is going to be a long night. It was just very awkward. Having one another just across the road from each other. Just surviving the night. Just trying to live. He was on top of a roof. While I was just standing in a house. Waiting. And everything was fine. And to be honest, I couldn't really see him on the roof. Other than just his name. But watching replay mod. The zombies must have broke into the house. And they managed to get onto the roof. By the hole that he had created. And they knocked him into a horde down below. He didn't even stand a chance. His life was taken away in seconds. And it was over for him and his journey. It just proved how strong those zombies can be when they're all together. And to make it worse, the sun was just rising. He nearly made it the night, but now, he was dead. I know his body was barely cold, but I rushed over. I wanted his loot, anything I could get, and this guy was absolutely stacked with weaponry. He had tons. I gathered it all up and then went into the house. To see maybe was this his base? Was he living here? But no, it was just a place he was taking refuge just like me. When his zombie walked into the house. When you die, you come back. Come back to hunt others. Come back zombie fight. After this encounter, it made me realize that maybe what I'm doing here is actually worth it. Trying to get as many players together as possible. 
brings us together. As corny as it sounds, we're stronger. I just hope that when I die, or if I die, I don't end up being a human happy man. But the adventure continues. And hopefully the next player I come across, I'll be able to save. Okay, yeah, hi. You see me in the tree? Yeah, it's the next day for me. And, uh, let's just say everything's changed. So, when we logged on today, every player I assumed got the same book as me. Which said, hello guys, it's been a few hours. So I just wanted to give you more information on what will be happening at the end. One plane will be coming to pick you up. But there's a small twist. Only five players will be able to get onto that plane. Good luck. And the book also read, Feel free to use your siege token to purchase upgrades. Order and you shall receive. This has completely thrown everything upside down. This is not a just a 5 to the 100 days and you win type thing. This is literally a zombies hunger game that we're playing in. So now, the whole story, the whole mission of trying to get as many players as possible to come back to our camp has changed. Right now, if Bubbles, Dermo, Knight, and myself and Jack are all still alive, that's five. We're the perfect amount of players to get out all alive. Bringing anyone else into the squad is useless because one of us will have to be left behind. And for the longest time ever. And since the starting days of all the looting we've been doing, I've been disregarding the siege tokens as useless items, not knowing they're literally a currency for the game. So now it's time to scout, not for weapons, but for currency. With the currency, we can buy everything we need, including weapons, ammo, and even better armor. So over the course of the next few days, I started looting like a madman, trying to gather every siege token I can use. Now there's different tier of these things I realized, and different tiers are responsible for different things. For example, tier 7 coins are used for buying weapons, and they're one of the rarest to come by. While looting a town at night, that's how desperate I was and how much I was racing, I was playing at night where I should be hiding. I spotted a helicopter flying over top. That was someone getting in a supply drop. So our squad, well, we were already behind the curve. Anyone who was keeping siege coins, they were the lucky ones. I think a lot of players were throwing them out thinking that they're useless. Going house to house, I walked into a house that had a grave of a player. Spiny. I knew this guy. But he obviously didn't recognize me because he was a dead zombie. And now his loot was there on the ground for me to take. I popped him open and he exploded. So much loot, so much to filter through. It took me so long, but the main thing was, he had a few siege coins, which I took and kept moving. I was an absolute machine, just rushing from each house to another, using my axe as much as I could against the zombies, instead of wasting precious ammo, which I might need for the bigger towns where more of the zombies live. But there's more loot there. I suppose that makes sense. High risk, high reward. But the main towns are not somewhere where I want to go near. It's where all the players live and from what I could see a lot of players were dying from other players there. Pretty much a bandit zone. I found myself in a village and there was nothing different about this. Like I said I've been looting for days just going from house to house to house. But I found something that I hadn't seen before yet. And watching this back I didn't notice that it was a vehicle. I thought it was just one of those vehicles that were just pre-built by the map. But as I was attempting to loot this lovely, lovely garage here, as you can see. Which had a ton of zombies inside it. Better be worth it. I finally noticed the truck that was sitting there. I got inside it, turned on the engine. It did start, but the problem was it wasn't really moving properly. That's when I got out and realized that the poor truck was missing three wheels. One at the front and two at the back. That's why it wasn't moving. But that was interesting. I now knew where a truck lied. And if I get the right tier of siege tokens, I can actually purchase the wheels for it. And then repair that thing up and drive it. So I noted down the location and I 
แคทยูนั่นคือเมื่อไปเดินไปทางทะเลสาบไอ้ฟังอีกหนึ่งผู้เล่นที่ไปที่นี่นี่คือหนึ่งในที่ผมเจอที่ผมเจอจากการเล่นนี้ที่ผมเจอได้รู้ว่ามันใหญ่มากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากมากม Across the way, from the player camp, and from what I could see, I, I couldn't see if anyone was home or not. Until that night, the zombies started heading toward the player camp's walls, meaning there had to be someone inside there. Maybe multiple, I'm not sure, but there were definitely players inside, and there was. I could see a player on the roof. The sun was rising, and the player inside. There was more activity going on by the scenes of it. Now I didn't want to start a fight. Because obviously now we knew what the end goal was. It was survive to the end and make it on that plane, just the five of us. Our moment to fight will come. That's when I noticed a player coming out of the camp, and it looks like he was probably doing his daily routine of taking the horde that had gathered around his base at night and leading them away, shooting his gun as he went, almost signaling to me, "Hey, I'm gone from the base. You can rob it." So I rushed over. I assumed the base was alone and empty, for the fact that no zombies were targeted on anyone else. I got up to the walls of the camp, knowing that the player who had just left was just down the road. I couldn't see anyone else inside. No names, no nothing. So I rushed on inside, ready to steal all the siege coins that they might have. But I did notice that they had custom armor on, so maybe they've already spent it. That kind of armor can only be bought with siege coins. I slowly went into the house, just taking it slow, in case anyone was waiting for me. I'm very paranoid at this point. I went onto the roof to have a look to see if anyone was returning. I couldn't see anyone. It was now time to rob. I started looking through the chests to see if I could find anything. There was a lot of zombie flesh, but I found a standard car wheel. That would be useful, but I didn't have much use for it because I hadn't found a car yet. That's when I stumbled across a truck wheel. That is what I have use for, because we know exactly where a truck is. It's been a few days since I've been back there, but hopefully it's still there. And with finding that one truck wheel, I now had enough siege coins to buy the two other ones. So I didn't get what I actually wanted from this raid, which was coins, but I did get something really useful. And I was about to explore more of the base. When I heard a gunshot, signaling he was returning. With that, I legged it out of here. Jumped right over his fence. I bolted from the scene. Now knowing I just found a truck wheel and had enough to buy two more wheels, that would be three wheels. Quick maths, but I wanted to make sure that the truck was still there. Before I wasted my coins, I was back at the truck location, eager to see if the truck was there. But when I looked over, the truck was gone. Someone has obviously beaten me to it, and I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty darn gutted. I wanted to drive a truck. Like that's just so zombie apocalypse feeling to me. I don't know, just driving a truck through the wilderness, nothing better. But. It was gone, and now I had to stay here and wait for day, because I don't fancy being a happy meal. But as I waited the night, I could start to hear beeping. To be honest, listening to it back now, it sounds like beeping of a radio. Curiosity got the better of me, so I jumped down, hoping to find the source of whatever this was beeping. And just to my left, I could see it was the truck, crashed into the forest, beeping away. It was still here, and maybe the player that tried to drive it was still here. Or maybe that player's dead. Probably dead. 
I went closer to the truck to investigate. Having a look around, of course, to see where any players about, but I couldn't see anyone. No names. And instantly I could see that there were two wheels put on the back of it. But the first wheel was still missing. Someone had clearly tried to drive it with no front wheel. And with that, crashed into the forest and probably had to abandon it. That player probably is now out searching for another truck wheel. Little did they know, they've just basically given me a free truck. That's of course if I can get this zombie whore to stop following me. I stuck the wheel on and then I did a little bit of cardio. Looping around the forest to try gain as much space between me and the zombies as possible so that when I jump in the truck, I can drive away. And that's what I did. I jumped in the truck and I put pedal to the metal. I now had a truck. And also, I had all the siege coins I needed to buy everything I wanted. Things were looking bright for me and the squad. If they're still alive, of course. I've disconnected fully from Discord, so I don't know. But soon, we'll be meeting up with them. There's just one more hurdle that I gotta cross. And that's getting my supply drop. After driving all night, I'd finally came to the coastal road. And if you don't know, all the big cities lie on the coastal road. They're all on the coast. Not many big cities are inland. Just mostly villages and small little settlements. But before I decide if I drive left or right, I wanted to wait and purchase my supplies here at this crossroads. Because on Discord there were three drop zones. Drop zone 1, drop zone 2 and drop zone 3. And right now I was in between drop zone 1 and 2. 2 is left, 1 is right. So with that I went on Discord, looking at all the prices and everything I can buy. I put in my order, and I waited. And then a few minutes later, I checked my inventory. And my siege coins were mostly all gone. The admins had taken them. And I was informed that my supply drop would be the next night. I have all night to retrieve the supply drop. If I don't get it within then, the helicopter will fly away with my supplies, and I won't be able to get them back again. So with that, I knew I needed to head right. Drop zone one was the area I was told to go to. And with the truck, I'll be able to make it there in no time. I was getting close to the town, so I decided to park my truck up and head in on foot. I knew that anyone could just steal the truck, but there's nothing I can do about it. I was on the clock here. We had one night to grab my supplies, get into the city, and wait for the helicopter. I took a tactical route. I knew that drop zone one was on the docks, so instead of going straight through the town, I went around the town. Ignoring the town centre where mostly all zombie hordes live. Taking it nice and slow, keeping an eye out. When I could finally see Drop Zone 1 over the wall. It was night time, but the helicopter wasn't here yet. And they had definitely said this night. I was getting nervous in case maybe I got it wrong. But I did check the Discord and it was Drop Zone 1. Maybe the helicopter was just late. The map is big after all. I was very much alert, keeping an eye out, waiting for the helicopter to come. When I crawled under the fence and spotted another player who was in custom armor who had clearly got their supply drop. I knew it wasn't mine just because of the armor that they were wearing. It's not the armor I ordered. I was in no luxury of running away because I had to stay here for my drop. After waiting for what seemed like an eternity, the helicopter came into render distance, landing at the drop zone. I rushed in, knowing that if I don't go for it now, every second I waste, someone might seize this opportunity. I threw out most of my scrap items and started trying to grab everything I could, as quick as I could. My hands were shaking because I thought I was going to get attacked. I didn't want to die now, I was too invested. I now had everything. It was time to go. And with that, I could hear the helicopter taking off behind me and leaving. I had no clue where that player was. I found a quiet spot so I could hopefully organize my inventory. 
I had ordered a lot and my inventory was an absolute mess. But the place where I was organizing, I realized I had a sniper and a really, really dirty spot on Drop Zone 1. And this, after all, is a game. And I don't want to be too ruthless and just go killing everyone. But at the same time, if I could wait here and steal someone else's supply drop and then give that to my team, that would be beneficial. After all, only five players can leave this island. We're dead no matter what if we don't get on that plane. So I waited and waited until I spotted someone heading towards what looks like the supply drop. And with my sniper, I was able to see who it was. It was a mill ruse. And the mill has been quite evil in all our shows. You know, he doesn't really have much respect for other players in game, of course. And he was getting himself a supply drop. And I was moving into position to take him out. But just before I was about to shoot or go over and engage, I could see two more players. who were shooting at a mill. This changed the dynamic completely. And now, I almost felt bad for a mill. This could have happened to me. So I engaged the two others. Mill had gotten himself trapped in water and he was a sitting duck. If I wasn't here, he definitely would have been murdered. I was doing my best to defend the mill, but I wasn't trying to put myself in the firing line. He wasn't part of my squad. A mill? But I was trying to scream over. So he knows that I'm on his side mutually. And right now it's a 2v2. And it feels good. He didn't shoot at me so I assume he knew. That I was doing my best to defend him. That's when I whispered him to jump onto Discord. So we can communicate. And maybe get ourselves some loot here. Emil and I instantly got talking. We thought that the two lads were backing off, but Sorrow and Wilbo were actually trying to push on us still. So with that, we knew we wanted to fight. It was a 2v2, and whoever comes out of this fight will come out hopefully stronger. They were pushing, so we decided to keep pushing back, and I lobbed a grenade. This grenade instantly changed the game, and now the 2v2 was a 2v1. We had taken out Sorrow. Now both myself and Emil Expected Wilbo to push back, but I think after killing his friend, maybe it made him want us dead even more, because he still kept fighting. We were trying to get closer to secure Sorrow's loot, which we didn't want to open just yet, because our inventories were full and we didn't want anything clear lagging. But Wilbo was still in the picture, and with the zombie horde still chasing him, he was still after us. Motivated by revenge. While Mill and myself were behind the hospital building trying to get refuge from all the zombies that were around that had been attracted by the gunfire. We stumbled across missing gnome who was defending himself from zombies. I told him to get on the ground and let me help him. This was a very awkward and chaotic scene. We thought gnome was an innocent bypasser but actually he was with Wilbo. And we had the chance to kill him but we didn't. We got on the roof of the hospital building and still Gnome and Wilbo were putting up a fight. Honestly shocked that they weren't running away yet. He was just across the way. We jumped off the hospital building to try and rotate our position so we could hopefully get in behind them and take them out swiftly and save ammo. But when we got around we could see that they had gotten to Sorrow's loop and now Gnome had Sorrow's armor on and was now properly geared. shot my sniper rifle and he fell off into the horde 
He was on the run. And he was trying to group up with Wilbo. And we decided to go on the offensive. It was time to clear out these group of players. And it felt good, to be honest. Because Emil did inform me that he's been a solo player this whole time. And has been fairly good. Barely killed anyone. But these players here have been camping the supply drops. Hence why their gear is so random. We kept chasing them down the docks. Until we started to realize that Gnome and Wilbo were heading in a dead end. So this was only going to end one way or another. And that was by clear fighting. But every time we got closer, they kept running. Trapping themselves even more. I pushed up to them and every time we got closer, they continued to run. When Wilbo abandoned Gnome and left him by himself. Now there was a big open field and I had a thing called a sniper. I took it out and one bullet was all I needed. Gnome's dead. Wilboat, here we come. Wilboat had hit the end, and it was the end of the line for him. And on the Discord rules, it said we can't touch the water. So he knew if he jumped inside it, he was dead anyway. But at all costs, myself and Emil didn't want him to jump into the water. Because if he did that, we wouldn't be able to get his loot. Which was the whole reason why we did this. Down! On the ground! Turn away! Look away! Look away to your dead end! Down! Underground! Underground! Lie down! Lie down! Lie down! Take a weapon out your hand. Take off your armor. At least if he takes off his armor, one of us again. Trying to steal someone's supply drop. Who would do that? Totally wasn't doing it myself, but hey, anyway. Do you not speak in chat? Um. <laughs> evil in medieval. Evil in this. Look, this is the mill. Hey. <laughs> We're working together for once. You know what, Wilbo? You're a great soul. But you know what? I let you off once. You betrayed me in medieval. After a while of talking, Emil decided to join us. He knew that our group was full and we had five people. And if it comes to us winning the final event, then one of us will make the sacrifice so the others can win. But we'll come to that when we get to it. I had trust in Emil because of what we've just done. We'd fought together, we killed together, and we played as a team. If I can't trust him now, when can I? I led him to the truck, we got in, and it was now time to return home to the camp. If the camp still exists. Driving up to the camp, my heart was in my mouth. Because one, the camp might not exist, and two, I might be bringing home a murderous player back home. But when I got there, I could see that the structure had definitely changed. But was there any signs of life? Hello? Does home still exist? Oh, I see someone. Does home still exist? Hello? And there, I could see the knight in red on a tower. And Dermo! I'm home! Can you guys break what? me in? Camp was still here, and they had done a lot. It might not look like a lot since I've been gone. I've been gone for a while, but taking ground is harder than you think. But they had managed to stay alive, which was the main thing. They made a way for the truck to get in quickly, and they patched it up before the horde could flood in. We were home. They were alive. Except one player. Bubbles. 
sadly died in the construction of this base. A rogue zombie managed to break his way in through a crack in the wall. And Bubbles was AFK. Didn't stand a chance. Domo and Knight also informed me that Jack had not returned yet. And like we all said, we're all disconnected on Discord. So if he's died, we don't know that. And he won't tell me either to make it more fun and mystery. Let's just hope he returns soon. Because the end game, the final game, is only a few days away. So with this, we started dispersing all the loot to Dermo and Knight that we had gotten. And for the next few days, I'm gonna chill at the base that they made and hope that Jack comes back. Because if he does, with this squad, we have a real chance of winning this. We are now at day 100. The purge, as the admin had called it, had begun. Really, we called it the Great Escape Day as the team. Every team and base and player were given a huge supply drop of just simple weaponry in case you were too cowardly to go out into the world and to buy your own weapons. These weapons were simple and they weren't fantastic. So really with three of us having our own custom weapons, it's gonna be a huge deal and definitely is gonna change the game hopefully because the weapons that the admins had supplied us with weren't fantastic. While I was waiting for the final days to come, Emil had gotten himself a motorbike and I must admit he looked insanely cool on it. So good on him. It was time to say goodbye to the camp that allowed these two members to stay safe and stay alive. We had achieved what we wanted to do so far and that was all survive as a unit, a group of five players ready to escape this map. It was now time to head back to where we landed and hopefully where we'll be leaving at the end. We got close to the airfield and we decided to bring the vehicles in with us. They're not really used for anything other than transporting and they were very handy for the 100 days adventure itself. But we thought maybe the truck could be used as moving cover. We are fighting on an airfield, as you know. And when driving in, we could see all the little squads. We were late to the party and they had already taken very nice vantage points. But luckily the admins had placed down crates and extra cover, just to make it a little bit more fair. We had spotted crates on the right side of the airfield. This is where we decided we'd set up and start the battle from here. The aim of this game is simple. All players must stay inside the boundary walls and cannot leave. The plane is coming into land shortly. And when the plane turns off its engines, the battle, the fight may begin. And this plane will only leave when there are five or less surviving. It's that simple. After a little while of waiting, the plane came into land. Anxiously watching its propellers, waiting for the plane to turn off. I gave a little good luck to everyone in the chat. Any moment now, that engine's about to turn off and all hell is about to break loose. Let the games begin. Scouting around, we could see our first priority and who we needed to take out. There were players on the right hand side of the airfield, hogging the boundary walls. These players had themselves in an awful position and we had to take advantage of that. It was time to wipe out this unit. These players were not leaving the island today. Using the sniper, I got one. And now the players in the corner were using the grave as cover. Jack and I decided to push closer. We started pushing closer with grenades in our hands. They attempted to throw down smoke grenades so that hopefully they could keep moving and move to cover. But with this, I threw a grenade into the smoke. It exploded, wiping out two of them. Leaving only one player behind. He didn't last long. And with that, 
this unit was wiped out. They were out of the game. And now, from what we're aware of, we had two units, or two factions, one on top of the hangar, and one in the air control tower, who were most likely fighting out. We started pushing closer to the hangars to start our engagement on them. This one was slightly more tricky. These players have the high ground. You have to be careful and take this slow, pushing very, very slowly. Anytime we got closer, they had grenades lobbed down at us. And as you just saw a few minutes ago, grenades are very powerful. While Emil and Jack got close, I was sniper support in the background. These guys didn't know it yet, but they were sandwiched in between two teams. The team in the hangar and us. And it was only a matter of time before they get squished. After a while of fighting, we finally managed to get ourselves up onto one of the hangars. Slowly pushing them back. Until they had nowhere else to go but to jump off. So with that, we started going across onto the other hangar. Getting people off the high ground was our strategy here. Getting people out of their bases was the plan. And this was the first stronghold we had managed to get rid of. With that achieved, now we had players on the air control tower that we were worried about. They were our main priority to try and get rid of. And luckily our hangar was just slightly taller than the control tower, giving us a perfect line of fire. Some players were so desperate they were even trying to get into the plane, but that plane isn't leaving until only five people remain or less. Going back to the control tower conquest, we had achieved a lot. The players that were on that were now only inside. It was time to try and clear them out. They had shotguns, so we need to be careful. Shotguns are highly deadly at close range. They had cowered on into the inside, but we weren't going to chase them close quarters. That would be too dangerous. So we just kept opening fire on the people on the airfield, putting my sniper to good use. At this point, we were just hunting down anyone we could find by themselves, taking out the weak. After all, this is survival and we want to get out of here alive. Hammer Time had got himself into a tricky situation. And let's just say... Uh, wait, 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 time out. Time out. Kill this. He came to an explosive end. Midori, a survivor we saw in the starting days, was back on the hangar and was trying to use it as a little base, but we weren't allowing it. We drove her off the hangar roof, falling her death. This was when we cleared out the air control tower, making sure no one was hiding inside it, like a coward. With that, we knew that no one else was now hiding. It was all the people on the runway that we needed to take care of. It was one final squad, I believe, but they were completely disorganized. They were hanging by the plane in desperation to get out of here. With the zombie horde stuck on them, we were taking the opportunity to hunt them. We chased Sicko around the place, chasing him down and not letting up. We were hunting them. And at this point, the stress of trying to survive was kind of going. And with each kill, we were gaining confidence. We were doing what the other teams weren't doing, sticking together and not playing solo. Sicko put up an amazing run, but my revolver was too much. Now, the game was really won. SD Trex was the last player surviving, and he was hiding somewhere. So while everyone was looking, I decided to take out some of the horde, because they were being an absolute nuisance. That's when SD Trex, with the others chasing him, ran to the plane in desperation in hopes that that thing would fly. But it wasn't going anywhere, because there were six players alive, and it'll only take off with five players or less. He was sitting in the plane, begging 
but begging won't get you anywhere in a world like this. It was now time to get out of here. We had survived, with only one member dying in the group a few days ago. That was Bubbles. Everyone else had survived the onslaught. We had won this zombie apocalypse. But will we win the next one? So, we had a mission now. And we couldn't land a plane until the runway was cleared. And the zombie threat neutralized. All the objectives in this video are set up by the admins to make it more of a challenge to try and survive. To stop us camping in buildings. And to push us to explore the map. And there are secrets here, like every other series I create. And the goal is to get out of here alive. Now there's no time for chit chat, because that plane is currently right now doing circles of the map and is running low on fuel. We have two days to clear the airfield, otherwise that plane crashes to the ground and we don't get a valuable resource, which is an admin, which offers us tons of information about this map and our surroundings. It's so valuable. But before we can get to the runway, we need to go back to where this journey originally begun a hundred days ago. And it's back to this building. And inside here, the admin in the plane made us aware of a key. A key for an aircraft, which we want to retrieve. We started making our way to the school building as quick as possible. Taking on the zombie horde that was rushing towards us. Lovely stuff, guys. School should be down to the left, apparently. So these are the survivors with me. We've got Jack, who's my right-hand man and has been with me since the beginning. I trust him with everything. We have a mill, an absolute killing machine, and he doesn't care for his own safety. That's a dangerous combo. And we got Knight. He's not a fighter, and he shouldn't be alive in this zombie apocalypse, to be honest. We've been keeping him safe ever since we robbed him in the barn, and I feel responsible for keeping him safe, and I'll do my best to do it. And here's Dermo, a natural survivor. He knows how to make anything livable and to stay safe. And lastly, myself. Well, I'm just a survivor just like the others. I'm just fortunate to be surrounded by some great company. Couldn't ask for a better group. We finally made it to the school building and a horde of zombies came spilling out. Usually this wouldn't be a problem and we're used to them from the last map. But now we're under a time constraint and the pressure is building. Once we cleared the zombies, I ordered everyone to spread out and search for the key. Has to be hiding here somewhere. And it wasn't long until Jack found it. I got the key. Lovely. I don't know if there's anything else here. He brought it down and dropped it to me. But I gave it back. Best to be in Jack's hands. Now with the key in our hand, but the sun rising, we need to pick up the pace. As we got closer to the airport, the horde that the admin was going on about became more apparent. And we had limited ammo. And we had strict orders to use none of it. We could easily take out this horde with our guns, but then we'll have no ammo, which will leave us vulnerable to players. A horde was in the car park of the airport terminal, but we decided to leave this horde and to run right past it. Hoping that if we run quick enough, they won't follow us and they won't add to the problem. The airport runway was nearly in sight and all plans and all ideas were starting to go out the window. Weapons were starting to be used. We were beginning to panic that we won't get this done in time. We need to slice this horde apart. We need to quiet it down here. We can't have this following us. Knight, watch in front. But we knew if we get this admin on the ground and we secure him, we'll know a lot more info about the map. We got to the edge of the airfield. And straight away we could see that this horde was something that we couldn't take out with just melee weapons. But we stayed calm and we hatched a plan. We just had to clear the runway and clear the horde. So what about if we lead the horde away? 
opening the runway so it's safe to land. So Emil being Emil without hesitation ran in to try and distract the horde and to take them away. And he had a bunch on him. But his efforts weren't enough. There was still a considerable amount of zombies on the runway. And we didn't want to use ammo. We had to save it so that if we do fail in this mission, at least we'll still have our ammo. And just over there, I could see the plane that the Avon was talking about. It's just sitting there, abandoned. So it was my turn now to try and take a horde with me. And hope that me and Emil taking a bunch of the undead away, the rest would have a chance to clear the scragglers away. Freeing the runway and clearing it. I brought the horde of the undead through the gap in the fence. Some of them made it through, but others were struggling. I needed them to get them off the airfield for the objective to count. But I needed to be careful. I'd nearly died already. These zombies hit hard. I was trying to create another hole in the fence to get them all through. And now, it was seeming to work. I was leading this horde back to the car park horde. I now had to lose this horde and get back to the runway. But whatever happened, I had to make sure that they were not still on me. Otherwise, I'd be bringing the problem right back to us. But with an incredibly tall building in sight, I had an idea. Maybe I could scale it and use my parachute to jump across, leaving the horde below. And that's when I could begin to hear the plane. Every so often, this plane was doing a sweep of the airfield to make sure it was cleared because communication could not be told in Discord as we had no radios, so we were relying on in-game chats. So at this time, I didn't know if the airfield was cleared or not. But if that plane spots it now that it is, it'll be landing shortly. I just need to get high enough to be able to parachute back in. This should do it. And the horde don't seem to be following underneath. My job was done. But were the others okay? I touched down in the airfield. And it was quiet. Which is a good thing. But my team were nowhere in sight. Until I heard Jack. Hey! Is everyone alive? Hey! I took the car park cord all the way over to a building, so if we go back the same way, hopefully they won't be right on us. So we can sneak past them. The airfield was successfully cleared. And just in time. Because the night was nearly over. We ordered the aircraft to park inside the hangar. So here we had. These were the admins that flew us to the last island. And that made us fight. And now here we are, responsible for protecting it. Because who knows, other things or other players might be after him. He's incredibly valuable. Why did he make us fight a load of people on an airfield 100 days ago? I don't know. For fun, I suppose. Yeah, it's just a few stragglers. We cleared this area, so they shouldn't be spawning. Yeah, I guess so. Don't waste ammo on him. I'm so, I so want to shoot him, but I can't. The admin told us to open the aircraft with the key. So with the key, I unlocked it. And I could see it was empty. It had no fuel. 
but there were supply crates in the back. And in there were seven radios and a book. The book read, Radios allow you to use Discord and not rely on in-game communication. This way you can stay in communication when apart. And now we have secure communication on Discord. Thermo, are you good? Here, take a radio and you can go on Discord. So with day now breaking and the horde beginning to trickle back in, it was time to find safety and find a place to rest up. Just a place where we can be safe and we can ask the admin all the questions we need to know. Like what's our objective? Why are we here? And what can we do to benefit us and yourself? We found a house in the suburbs, just across from the airfield, and we decided to enter and board it up. Here, we'll now collect our thoughts. Well, let's gather our thoughts and figure out what we need to do. And also, as a group personally, how are we going to interact with the other survivors here in the island? This group has a reputation for killing a lot of players. I'm sure they've all watched my past zombie video. They might not trust us. That night, the admin gave us everything, and we now know our objective and what we need to do. We need to escape this island and get across the bridge. But before we can do that, we need to complete some objectives. First, there's a supply plane on the runway, the white plane. We need to fuel that and find the pilot. Protect the pilot, and he'll take off with the plane and bring you back supplies. Objective two, refuel the black plane and extract five survivors off the island. And then after that, extract as many more as you can by other vehicles found on the map. Then lastly, we have the Umbrella Corp. This is the new admin team, and they are dangerous. They're all the dead players from the last series that we played. They all died, and now they're here to make our game harder. You know them straight away. They're dressed in black, and you don't know what they'll do with you. They're the players guarding the bridge at the end. If we want to get across the bridge, we're eventually going to have to go to war with them. And that's everything we know so far. But we need to keep moving, look for food, and find the pilot. The bridge is the Umbrella Corp's headquarters. If you want to cross, you need to go to war with them. So be careful who you extract off the map. Make sure not to extract fighters, because you're going to need them. And the final thing we were told is that Umbrella Corp are aware of the two admins. The one we have here and the pilot that's hidden somewhere on the map. They know what they look like, and their objective is to kill these admins. They know they're somewhere on the map, and we need to keep our admins safe. If we get them off this island and to the next, we then gain an advantage. What that is, I just don't know yet. We'll find out if we make it to the next island. And would you look at that? Scaling a building for safety, we just found the pilot. He's on the building across from us. Jack had parachuted across to try and secure him as fast as we can. We went down the ladder, except one, a mill. I told him he was being silly and he was risking his life for nothing. And that to be careful. As we got to the bottom of the stairs, it wasn't as simple just across the next building. Zombies were outside, and there were a lot of them. Emil learned the hard way that shortcuts sometimes aren't the best option. And as I was getting into the next building, oh. an accident happened. Oh, there goes Emil. Is Emil dead? Emil. Emil fell. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Emil, where'd you, where did you fall? In? Emil slipped and fell to his death. And it just shows how harsh this environment can be. And sometimes when you think you're being boring and you're surviving in a simple manner, these are the moments you realize you're doing the right thing. And you're not trying to be too smart or creative with your moves. Well, Emil died, we all kind of lost our head for a second. Running around aimlessly, I nearly got myself killed. I needed to get into the building and get up and rest for the night. Being out in the night is too dangerous. As I got to the top of the building, it was so long trying to get up there, but the sun was rising. And here's a prime example, trying to be too creative. This felt like a risk to me, but I took it. So here's the pilot. He's responsible for flying the white aircraft, the one that we got the key for. But we can't take him to the airfield now, as that aircraft needs fuel. 
So now we have two admins to protect. One that's feeding us information and guiding us through the game. And another that if we get out of here, will give us supplies. Knight and Dermo had managed to get some belongings from a mill. They dropped them to me. And I was holding them in my inventory. But me and Jack had to deal with the death of a mill. I was actually gutted that a mill died. Because, like, even though these 100 days, they're not... It's not real life. But it means you don't actually get to play with your friends. Because it is only one life. And me and a mill had quite a journey. We met in a city and ended up fighting a gunfight together. And we would just after meeting. It was incredible. And since then, we'd formed a strong bond in this series. And we couldn't leave a mill here. Not like this. He doesn't deserve it. But I couldn't do it. So I gave Jack a mill's revolver. And he understood. And done what needed to be done. After taking time to organize a mill's stuff and to share it out amongst the crew, I kept a few things. I kept a mill's revolver and gave Jack mine to honor him. And I also kept the duffel bag he was holding. The duffel bag is extremely useful and can hold a lot of items. A mill was always our loot runner. He always went out and got loot because he had the duffel bag and not many players did. So now that responsibility goes to me now. Food is low, we're stuck on top of a building, and we have two admins that we're trying to protect. We're not in the luxury of going running around. Knight and Dermo took point and stayed on the building with the admins, while me and Jack went and scavenged for loot. We were so desperate for food that we were heading out in the night. And throughout the whole series, you're most likely going to see us using melee weapons. We need to conserve ammo, especially since we've been told this map is severely drained of supplies. We found some terrace houses we started searching them one by one. Slowly but surely going through them. It was our best option, especially since it was during the night. Then we started getting paranoid. We started hearing sounds. Like a player shuffling. Wait, I hear that. I hear that. It was like... You can hear other people's shuffles. Yeah, it's that direction. And with the dynamic sound mod, you can really hear every movement. From footsteps to shuffles. Hi. Someone was here. And it just felt like we were being watched. If Is anyone here? If so, please let yourself known. We will be peaceful. Made them aware. Don't trust this. Because last thing you want is startling a player door. around a corner. They unload their magazine into you and you'll be dead. Closing that door. Hello? Please let yourself know, and otherwise if we do see you, we'll shoot. And there's a lot of us. But after a while of giving away our presence, and making survivors aware that we're here... I'll go upstairs and open the door. And the other one had the gun working. It sounded like it was either behind us they were shuffling. Wait, this door's open. This door's open. And things started to get more tense. Are you in here? Or are we just being super paranoid? Okay, ready? Look left, I'll look right. Could be in past this door. No, are we just being paranoid? I heard someone shuffle. I don't know. I definitely heard something up here. Okay. Wait. I hear it again, right? Okay, let's just stay still for a second. During this whole process and clearing the buildings, we stumbled across a basement. And we thought this would be an amazing place to hide the two admins we're looking after. It's not on top of a skyscraper where you stand out like a sore thumb. It blends in with all these other buildings. We need... To get our team here. But before we go back to them. We need to get food. But still paranoid that someone was here and watching us. We decided we'd try and get up to the top of the building. And see if someone's hiding up there. We got to the top. And no one was here. And now we can start to see more of the map. And just how beautiful. And how much work. Had been put in. Oh! oh! So get down, get down, get down. Look, look, look. Yeah, the helicopter. You see it? Yeah. There's people up top there as well. Oh! Those players had a helicopter. That's incredibly interesting. And there proves my point. If you're sitting on top of a tower, you stand out like an absolute sore thumb. Especially when you have an aircraft sitting up top there. But we didn't want to get spotted, so we stayed low and we got off the building. We wanted to stay as incognito as possible. Looking out of a window, I don't know how we didn't see it. A wall cart, which is obviously a Walmart. 
It's a supermarket. Surely there has to be food in there. So we made our way across the car park and into the door. Each time making any survivors in the area aware that we're here. Is Might as well let people here? know we're here, right? Or do we? No, probably not, to be honest. Unless we know. Yeah, well, there's, zom there's okay. zombies in here. Ooh, wait, there's food. Seven steak. Nice. Oh, and a lot of bread. Got you. Nice. Loot, loot the food. Yep. But Jack found food straight away. And I was beginning to find food now. Potatoes, we didn't have anything to cook it with, but they'll do. It's food. It's better than nothing. It then came time to exit the building. We now had a bit of food. It wasn't loads, but it was more than we had anyway. It was now time to move the admins to the new safe house, the basement. But we decided we'll wait for day and we'll move then. But during the night as we were waiting, I spotted what looked to be a ship out in the water. It was very foggy, so it was hard to see. That's something I'll have to investigate. That could make a great home. But when the sun rose, we began making our way to the new safe house. And when we got there, we decided that Knight and Dermo will stay with the two admins and keep them safe while me and Jack head out to investigate the ship and to continue on with the main mission. It was time to leave the safe house again. We had trust in Knight and Dermo that they'd keep the admin safe and that if Umbrella Corp comes sniffing, they'd at least be able to hatch a plan to try and escape. I wanted to investigate the ship that I saw when we were sitting on top of the tower. It's been playing in my mind that it'll be a fantastic place to set up a base, a settlement. There, if we can clear the ship, it should be cleared of zombies and the water should act as a natural defense against players and the undead. It's literally textbook zombie apocalypse home. And I was lucky to see it. It was just coming through the fog line on my render distance. And there it was, sitting out there all alone. And it looked empty and ripe for the taking. We didn't want to rush straight out there as the water would leave us vulnerable. But exposing more of the ship, we still couldn't see anyone on it. But getting to the top of that lighthouse will give us a great vantage point. It'll hopefully allow us to see deeper into the ship. The lighthouse was an absolute gem. Straight away it was feeding us. I managed to find a baseball bat, which is a really strong melee weapon. But I do admit, I do like the way the tactical tomahawk looks. It feels good. We felt safe in the lighthouse, as that stuff would have been taken if someone was already here. Up in the lighthouse we could see a lot. We can see an industrial area, the docks, and more of the ship. And still, we couldn't see anyone. This ship was abandoned. And look how far it's off the coast. And the fog naturally hides it. It's brilliant. After seeing everything we saw on top of the lighthouse, we were confident that we could go explore. And that we could head over there. And just in time, because the sun was setting. And if we stay the night here and no zombies come, then this will be a brilliant settlement. But of course, as we're heading out... Oh, wait, I see someone on the top. I do see, I do see someone too. Oh, okay. Um, we could be friendly. Yeah, I don't know. Should we go be friendly? Let's see. It's only one, two of us, right? He's in diamond armor. Diamond armor could be as strong as shield. Yeah. It could be, he could be wearing diamond armor because he's figured out like diamond armor is better. He knows we're coming over. Do you think so? No, wait, you know, that's the back of his head. We want to stay quiet and try to get the jump on the person. That way we can control the situation. I'm in, I'm in. That could... It's going up. Be more. What are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't... I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> we could get ourselves killed so easily here. Hello? 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 Are you friendly? Yeah. My team has gone. Okay. Are you on your own? We weren't trying to kill you. We were just trying to suss you out. And we were afraid that if we said hello to you when we were coming on board, that you might just open fire anyway. So it's sometimes best just to stay sneaky. Now, would you stay where yeah. you are so then we can stay where we are for a second? 
Well, where are you? We are underneath you. Now I can and hear you what? loading your gun a bit. Um, we we don't mean any harm. To be perfectly honest, we saw the boat. Thought it looked cool. Perfect place to survive in a zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. nice. And it was turning night. But I promise you, we weren't trying to kill you. Okay. Can I ask you this as well? 100% your other teammates are gone. Uh, they're on their way back. They told me that they're, going to, they're coming back soon. Okay, so there's no one else on this boat. Except us. Well, at this moment in time. Yes. Okay, that's I fine. Don't. I'm I, scared. Is this your base? Have you claimed this? Yes, we have. Is uh, is it open for more members? Jerem Gnome went on to tell us that this was his settlement. He lived with two other players, and he wasn't the leader. It was Zipkick, and they were on their way back. While we were waiting, I was trying to suss out Gnome, and he was trying to suss out me. We were asking each other questions back and forth. My main ones being, are you open to having more people, potentially? Have you killed anyone? These are important things we need to know. Can we... I'm not saying we want to join you right now, but can we at least stay here till morning? Uh, okay, but... You know, there's a fee for staying here. But then shortly, Zipkick and Vic showed up. They seemed like nice guys, but we agreed it's nighttime and we don't know one another. So we separated, with me and Jack being on one side of the ship and those guys being on the other. We were waiting for a day. And during this process, me and Jack were talking. They had a great settlement and so far they seem trustworthy. If we can get the admins and our players here, we know that this will be the safest place for them. And these new guys that we found, they need more members. Because others will try to come and take this with force if they find this settlement exists. This base is a rare resource. The next morning came around and we went over to greet them. I asked could we join them and they said yes. I then was completely honest with them. I said we were hiding two admins that Umbrella Corp were looking for. And these players right here had ran into Umbrella Corp. And they're not friendly. They had been robbed already by them. But the three of them were on board. And they understood the mission on why it's so valuable that we keep these admins hidden. And we don't disclose these to other random players. We need no one knowing about these admins. Zipkick also then told me that he's been talking to a group of people that own a helicopter. That might be the people that we saw on the building not too long ago. But he told me their helicopter was broken and they're looking for parts to fix it on the map. And Zipkick told me he's going meeting the leader of this crew very soon to maybe create an allyship and work together. But I asked Zipkick to keep our group and all our information out of it. I don't want anyone knowing that we're working together. We don't know these people and I don't trust them yet. It's better to be safe than sorry. So now knowing we might have a future in this boat, it was time to go get the admins and to meet back up with Knight and Dermo. We need to tell them of the news that we've got a new home. But Vic, who was part of the ship, wanted to come with us. I suppose out of curiosity and to make sure that our story all matches up. He's basically keeping an eye on us, but we've got nothing to hide. We told the truth. With the excitement of having a new home, we foolishly headed out in the night, which turned out to be a bad idea. So we ended up taking refuge inside a house for the night. And during the night, I could get the sense that Vic, he didn't trust us. So as we went into the house, I done this. Well, look, dude, I'm going to give you something to make sure that you don't betray us. Uh, it's kind of stupid, but look. It's the key to the aircraft. Right? We're not going to kill you. Keep it safe. Uh, that's a Hopefully, Vic could trust us a bit more. But let's wait out the night and go get our team when it's daybreak. Now with the trust established and Vic holding something so valuable, which is the key to the aircraft, it was now day and it was time to escape the horde that had surrounded us in the night and to get moving to the safe house where the two admins have been hiding out alongside with Knight and Dermo, keeping them safe. But when we got to the house, no one was here. Where were they? Yeah, I hear the one room. Are they not here? I'm not sure if they're still here, but we had a search around and we had a look. 
We checked upstairs, we checked downstairs. While Vic stayed hidden in the corner, just in case danger broke out. Maybe they heard of our survivors and decided to leave this area as it wasn't safe. The safe house was completely empty and there was no signs of a struggle or anything. So I gave Vic the nod and it was time to move, get to a safer place and then enter the Discord channel where the others were. When we got to a safer place, they told me that the Umbrella Corp were knocking around and they could hear them getting closer and closer. They were doing a sweep of the buildings. So Knight told me he found a sewer system and now he's hiding out in a new house. And he told me to meet him near Walcart. And when we got here, I couldn't see him. But there he was, right to the right, calling us over. And he led us to the new safe house. Knight told me that Umbrella Corp were getting closer and closer and he could hear them using in-game communication. Clearing house by house and they made the right decision to move because they could have been next. To be honest, what he did was genius. He circled his way back into a house that they had already cleared and checked, thinking that they wouldn't check it again. After the introduction was complete, it was time to get back to business. We decided since it was nighttime, it was probably best to wait for a day and then make a break for it and make it back to the ship. So during the night and waiting in the house, I got talking to Vic because we could see the helicopter settlement in the distance. And Vic shared something that maybe he shouldn't have shared. Maybe something we weren't meant to know yet. Zipkick didn't want us knowing. He revealed that his settlement has fuel. Fuel for aircrafts and vehicles of all sorts. And that the reason why the helicopter settlement was working with Zip was because Zip could give them fuel and Zip would get a helicopter from them. So it all made sense. And maybe the helicopter settlement could be trusted. And we might be able to use their aircraft to get survivors off the map to save people. When day broke, it was time to make a move. And Knight knew how we might be able to get out of here a bit easier. Going back into the sewers that they use to escape the Umbrella Corp. Because they are still around here somewhere. I headed out the door and I made sure that Vic was behind me. We couldn't talk to him in Discord as he didn't have a radio. So he needed to stay silent because in-game communication could give us away. We all entered the sewers and Vic was behind me. And as I got into the sewers, I knew something wasn't right. Vic wasn't behind me. Is everyone in? Everyone coming? Yep, you good. One sec, I need Vic, I need to wait for Vic. Which way? Uh... All right, there we are. Here's the sewers. Yeah, all right. <gasps> Vic died! No! No! no. The second I knew Vic was in danger, I started heading back out to help him, but it was way too late. But he had the key to the aircraft and we needed it. But this has made things very awkward. Will Zipkick think that we killed him? And during the whole chaos of trying to retrieve the key, someone unknown was talking in the chat. It means they were close. And with the two admins by our side, we weren't taking any risks. So we started bolting it down the sewer system. But quickly, the sewer system became amazed. And we were struggling to find our way out. We liked it down here though. It was quiet. And you could definitely hide here for quite a while. After wandering around lost for ages, we stumbled across what looked like the main sewer line and potentially an exit. Guns out, we started heading down. And it was. It led us right out to the ocean. And believe it or not, we were very close to the ship. It was absolute dumb luck. I just hope that when we get back and we explain what happened to Vic that they believe us and they don't suspect any foul play was involved. <laughs> we are so sorry. I'll explain. So Zipkick, you can come into our Discord. At least it'll be easier to communicate. And then you can explain to Gnome. I did my best to break the news to them respectfully. And I told him the truth. I just said that he was right behind me and the next he was gone. And I should have done better. And I'm sorry. And hopefully this doesn't affect our relationship. Now we had the admins on the ship and Zipkick was introduced to them. We needed to hide them. And Zipkick had the perfect location. This ship is big and there are lots of hiding spaces. And his idea was to hide him in the engine room. It's the deepest part in the ship. And it's like a maze even trying to get down to it. There's no better space in here. After the admins were hidden, I told Zipkick and Gnome that Vic kind of told us that you guys have fuel. And this ship right here is a fuel tanker. But then they quickly told me they have the fuel, but they don't have the fuel pump to be able to put that fuel into vehicles. That is somewhere on the map and their mission is they need to find it. I wish they didn't keep that a secret and they told me sooner because that's exactly what we need. 
We need fuel to get these planes out of here and to extract survivors and to get supplies. That's our mission now. Find the fuel pump. It was the next day and we were safe and we were feeling positive. How could we not? We had a new settlement with two new friends, Zipkick and Gnome. I trust them and I think the whole group does. We have to, we have no other choice and it's better to have a positive frame of mind than a negative one. And they've done nothing that hints to a sign of betrayal. They seem genuine. It was a new day and new jobs to be done. And my main mission was finding the fuel pump where Zipkick seemed strangely distracted with sorting an alliance with the helicopter crew. In my eyes, if we don't find the fuel pump, an alliance will mean nothing. But I told Zipkick to keep our name out of the helicopter crew. I don't want them knowing we live here or that we're with them. We can't trust them. Can't trust anyone really. So Jack, Knight and myself decided to head out in search of finding the fuel pump. It has to be somewhere here. We might have walked right past it. When we were searching houses, we stumbled across a car. And at first we couldn't find the key. It was locked. And then Knight found it. What do you mean? Did you just right click uh, it? Uh, no! Uh, I, I, oh my god! What? We're dumb dumbs. There's a dropper underneath it. What? Look, right click it. Wait. It says dropper. Look under the car. Look under the car. We didn't even see it. Oh, that's kind of oh. smart. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we got in. Fully expecting this thing to be out of fuel. And all we heard was the engine start. We had a car. We didn't know how much fuel was in it. But we were going to drive it until it's all out of gas. This was a small win. We took stops to get out and loot the buildings and to search around for the fuel pump. And in one of the buildings, we were inside. When a player snuck up outside, he was staring right through the window. We screamed at him to get on the ground and to drop his weapon. Drop, oh, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun. Hey, I'm going to get a gun. In the house. Go, go, in the house. And he was listening. We then took him inside and got him on the ground again. And started asking him important questions. Firstly, like, has he killed anyone? And are you alone? Because it's important that he's alone. And no one's watching us. And then I asked him, do you want to be saved? We can get you out of here. Potentially on a plane very soon. Saving your life. And all we ask is that you help us on the next island if we survive. He agreed and he wanted to be saved. He wasn't much of a talker, but I could see with the head nods, he was genuine. I had a gut feeling. So now it was time for Ginger to get inside the car and to go for a spin. The ride for Ginger didn't last long because sadly the car ran out of fuel and we were now rolling. I think we're out of fuel. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, we're. Yeah, mm. yeah, we are.
Right, well, if we leave it here and lock it up, I don't think anyone's going. Let go yeah, the we the but with the speed we were going, the car had quite a bit of power. And we were still slightly moving. And we wanted to try and roll it into somewhere where it would be hidden. Not just sitting on a road somewhere. We tried to tuck it into some trees. So that hopes if any passer buyers wouldn't spot it. Ginger was absolutely stuck to me. And I did tell him that you can follow any of us. You can just, just follow us around. You don't have to follow me. Because I don't want to accidentally lead him to his death. But just, just stay close. And after that, he began to relax a bit. After searching that house and finding absolutely nothing, except night finding a bit more bread, it was time to keep moving. And we had spotted a stadium. And we were heading inside. Jack and Ginger were ahead, and they broke inside the stadium building. And straight away, it was apparent that someone was here, but someone was living here. There was a helicopter and Jack told me there was a crate inside it. This was a base. Ah, uh, this is a settlement. There's, there's, this is player build, surely, right? Or maybe not. Wait, Monty's talking. I'm, I'm, I, I found the people, I found the people. Should, should oh talk. my god! <laughs> Hi, Can I... no, no, calm down, calm down, we're coming, peace. Oh, I, 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 I... And Knight was talking to two random players while we panicked and ran off. But we couldn't leave Knight. We didn't know if these players are hostile or not. And everything was going amazingly. We were having a chat with two guys who went by the name of Monty and Big Boy Chazza. They were really friendly. Wait, wait, do we need anything? Wait, no, wait, we, maybe I, I suppose, yeah, I could give you half a stack of iron for him. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can do some negotiations. I'll, I'll be right back. I'm, I'm gonna ask him about the gases. And then, the boss, the ringleader, showed up. And it's like the atmosphere was sucked away from the stadium and changed into some dark force. We're outnumbered. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, we, um, yeah, I know, just, just, I know. All right. He's too friendly for his own good. Uh, so don't, don't worry about it, guys. I'll, 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 I'll be right there. Knight had gotten himself stuck. All right, uh, you guys have questions? Oh, wait, that's, that's, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, and we knew that. We knew what was going on here. You guys are all talking. I cannot, I cannot hear a single one of you. Please don't kill him. Are they? Whatever is going on here, please don't kill him. Are they? We can sort we're this out. We're, we're friendly, guys. We're friendly. But with us in view, they knew that it would be too risky, especially with a sniper rifle aimed right at them. I don't. They sound like they sound like trolls. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they... Is it right if I? If, it, listen. Is it right if you ask questions while I stand over there? I'm just gonna stand over there while I'm, asking, I'm while I'm answering questions. There, move. This is the weirdest encounter I've ever. Listen, yeah. you guys seem friendly, but like aiming a gun, putting on your armor—that does not make us feel safe. Jesse was not someone to mess with. I've known him in the past to be hostile and explosive, but this is where Knight was nearly getting himself killed. He's too friendly for his own good. After that incredibly close call with the stadium crew, we realized that Knight, he was a liability and he nearly got himself killed. So we reached the shore and I ordered Knight to take Ginger back to the boat. I didn't tell Knight the real reason why I was sending him back because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I just told him to take Ginger back to safety and Knight being who he is, wanted to do just that. It was now becoming day and Jack and I wanted to go and investigate the stadium crew a little bit more, but not go up to them. We wanted to do a bit of recon. We had so many questions that we wanted answers for, but we knew we couldn't talk to them because quite simply, it could get us killed. But they had a helicopter. How did they get this? Was it there when they found the stadium and does it have fuel? To get this information, we're gonna need to get high and we're climbing this tower right here. And when we got halfway up, we got an incredible vantage point. We can nearly see right in and we're not at the top yet. This motivated us to keep climbing. Climbing the exterior of the building, going up the vines. That's when we got a much better view. Jack then spotted two players below us, but I recognized the yellow skin. Those were the two players from the stadium. 
and now potentially Jesse is alone inside the stadium. But Jack made a valid point. We don't know if there's only three of them. If we rush inside trying to get answers and we find out there's more than just three people in the settlement, we could easily be dead. And also Jesse alone is a complete threat. He's easily taken out groups of people in previous shows. He's dangerous and very good at what he does. But then we heard a helicopter and we couldn't believe what was coming out of the stadium. The helicopter was leaving the map. I jumped across to the next building to try to see if I could get a better view. Where was that helicopter going? I don't know. Not yet, anyway. But we think this might be similar to the supply plane that we have. They might also be on a mission. But what does that helicopter do? Does it bring in supplies like our plane on the runway? So many answers. We decided this was too good to leave. We wanted to wait and see what it returned. And wait we did for a very, very long time. The players that left the stadium we're now returning. Server's a bit more simple. Oh! Down hmm. below. Monty Moon, Big Boy Chaza. It's like they were rushing home for something. Something they were excited for. It was the helicopter. And it was returning. And it was coming in fast. We're see. gonna get seen, but it doesn't matter, right? We're not, like, if they shoot at us, we're not doing any. Can you see? I, I My opti finding is terrible. Uh, It's not diamond armor. Whatever it it's is, not it's not diamond, diamond armor. armor. Oh my god, spinning around. The helicopter landed and now it was out of sight. We couldn't see what was going on. And we knew if we weren't spotted before that helicopter definitely spotted us when it went to land. It was time to get out of here. And we decided to parachute off the side of the building heading back into the old town, the town that we're more familiar with, and return home and tell the lads what we've just found. When parachuting, Jack and I kind of got lost and we were split apart. I ended up parachuting into an old train yard and I couldn't find Jack anywhere. But this was a blessing in disguise because when looking for Jack, it steered us off course, and we stumbled across a fuel pump. This wasn't the fuel pump we were looking for. The sign said this is a fixed asset and cannot be mined. It's just a random fuel pump on the map with a limited amount of fuel inside. Four jerry cans to be precise. This might be enough to fuel the supply plane and to get it out of here. So I took my jerry can out and I filled it up. We'd have to do three trips if we're going to do this. We started making our way to the runway. Eventually, we got to the plane. It's still here, thank God. I right-clicked the aircraft and thankfully it took the fuel. It was a match. Now we had to do this three more times to make sure that the aircraft had enough fuel to take off and to return. And heading back to the fuel pump, we stumbled across horses, which then gave me an idea. I had a saddle inside my duffel bag. Maybe we could tame the horse and use that to get back and forth without using any food while Jack takes watch on a building in the middle keeping an eye out for any survivors or any threats while I take the horse and do a few return journeys. This was incredibly successful. I took the horse back and forth and it was speeding up the process by a mile. Then, on the final journey, I got to the runway and I could see a player stacked up in the distance. He looked like he was in a bit of trouble and I began to investigate. Drop your weapon, please. You can get some food off him as well. Drop your weapon, please. 
I can't hear you. Can you just drop your weapon? And and the and the bat, please. When I got closer, I noticed it was a guy called Supernova, and I asked him the simple questions that I've been asking all the people I find. Firstly, have you killed anyone? And do you want to be saved? Of course he wanted to. He needed help. Look at him, he's on a tower. I told him to come down, and I said to follow me. I said to Nova, get on top of this tree and wait here, and I will be back. It's too risky to bring him with me right now. And I said, if you trust me, I won't be long. He then began to get up in the tree. I think he was just thankful to have someone looking out for him. I began heading back to Jack, and when I got closer, Jack made his way down. The plan was to take the last jerry can that we could take from the fuel pump, all the way back to the car that ran out of gas and we hid near the stadium, and use the car to get as close to home as we possibly can while picking up Nova along the way. Eventually, we reached the car, and at first we didn't know if it would still be there. And when we got there, someone had already found it, and it was covered in blocks surrounding the car. Someone was obviously trying to hide it, but thankfully I had the key, so even if they had a fuel, there was no way they were going to drive it. I put the fuel in, and Jack broke it open. We reversed out, and we drove off, heading towards Supernova, if he's still there. I sounded the horn as we were getting closer to where I last saw Supernova, and he was there still in the tree, and he started coming towards us. Come on. Jump in. We don't have much fuel. Jack got out of the car to protect him. And when he got inside, it was perfect timing. Get in, get in. Because an umbrella court member was right behind us, chasing behind. I told Jack to get in quickly, and we drove off, leaving the umbrella court player in the dust. It was a bad idea, but I didn't want to get killed. I just wanted to get away from him. We had a car, and he didn't. I thought it was the right thing to do. We drove the car as far as we could, and just as we got close to the tanker, our home, the car ran out of fuel. But this time, it couldn't roll as far as it could, so we had to park it up right on the road. There was no hiding it. I locked the car, and we began heading back home. It was in sight, thankfully. I climbed onto the ship, and I introduced everyone to Supernova. We had a new player in our settlement now. That's something positive. We believe now the supply plane has enough fuel to take off and for a return journey. So it's now time to take the pilot from the safety of the engine room and bring him up. And escort him to the aircraft. Knowing that this could be highly dangerous, I crafted myself some diamond leggings just to give myself some extra protection. I had the diamonds anyway, they needed to be used. Dermo and Gnome decided to stay with the new survivors on the ship and keep them safe. And also we believe Umbrella Corp have been sniffing around. We believe they're close. We're close to the runway and we're keeping the pilot protected. The plane was still there and it couldn't be gone anyway. We have the key for it. We thought we'd have to go through a big ordeal of clearing the runway, but the airfield was fairly cleared of the undead. So while he loads up the aircraft, he gets it ready for takeoff and does all these checks, we kept him protected from the zombies. And as the sun was setting, it was finally time for takeoff. Just in time before the horde of zombies spawn in the night. This pilot will be back. We don't know when, but he'll let us know when it's time. Uh, but we should fight quickly. We should fight so I can back to base because... Ryan, watch out behind you. Behind you, Ryan. Behind you. The three jerry cans is enough fuel to get him there. Be free! I need to see it take off. He punched it, and he took off. I'm also a documenter as well. All right, at least that's one person we have to don't have to look after as well, I suppose. One mission completed. Time to head back to the ship. When I got back to the ship, all the team were high on morale. It felt amazing to have something. We had a little win and we deserved to be happy about it. A plane will come back, bringing supplies, hopefully food which we desperately need and maybe more ammo and guns. 
everything we'll need to hopefully get across the bridge at the end of the show. But the good times didn't last for long. As in the night, one of our members spotted Umbrella Corp watching us. Now we officially know they found us. We thought we were hidden, and they didn't know. The fog of the ship was no longer hiding us. But we had one advantage. Luckily, there's water that separates us from them. And if they want to attack, they're going to be at a natural disadvantage. And we will have the high ground. Now that we knew Umbrella Corp had found us, we had people watching out 24-7. Taking shifts, almost. But there was one thing we had to do. And it felt like the right thing, and I put trust in Jack. I know he'll get this done, and I know he'll do it with flying colors. And I know if he gets caught, he'll give everything he has. It's Jack, how would he not? We decided, now that Umbrella Corp know where we are, they most likely know we're hiding the admin. It's just common sense. So I ordered Jack to take the admin out of the engine room and to take him out of the base. Take him somewhere where I don't even know. Just hide with him in a random location. We swapped the admin's armor out to make him look more like a player. We couldn't get rid of the helmet because that's his identity and his look. If we got rid of that, it wouldn't be fair and it's not in the rules. Jack and the admins jumped down at the back of the ship to hide them disappearing. While I went to the front and started rowing to the opposite side to grab all eyes hopefully on me before they go. And hopefully this will be enough so that they can get away. Let's just hope wherever they are or wherever they go, they'll stay hidden. All we can do is hope. Food was still a problem and our settlement was getting bigger. And we were trying to grow food in the ship, but it just wasn't enough, especially as we were taking in more and more and more people. Without Jack, I needed someone to come on the supply run with me. Knight offered, Gnome offered, and Supernomer did. But I chose Gnome, as he'd been staying on the ship for a period of time, and he wanted to get out. So we went on an adventure together, hoping that the wall car would be restored now, and there'd be more food there. Here I could see water running down the side of the lighthouse. We had to be careful. But me and Gnome were having a chat about everything. Have so you think they're working with Umbrella Corp? Or you think maybe one person? They were Umbrella. They were Umbrella Corp. Yeah, but you think the team that we're dealing with is working with them? I don't know. I'm pretty sure the leader died. Okay, maybe it's like a certain person. Like, and lost in our conversation, we'll find out, I suppose. we fell right for a trap. We'll have to like look. We'll try and we'll try and get them involved. Obviously, we need their helicopter. Yeah. To be honest. Hello there. Uh. Hello. Hello. Should have expected this. How are you um, doing? would you mind uh, reading the signs? Sure. Stay there. Got him covered. Just one gun? Yeah. Then can you leave us alone? Yeah, of course. Sorry, you kind of spooked us when you came up to us in the car. We had to go. We had someone who was basically about to die of hunger. I know, I know. We didn't have time. Oh. Oh. So, just one gun? Yep. It's better than conflict, isn't it? Sometimes in these situations, it's better to cooperate instead of fighting. Unless you've done bad, bad things to them or their group, then they might kill you. But I complied. I have my only gun, that's it. Alright, I'm putting the gun in. Okay. I put a gun in the chest. I took the ammo out, of course. It was a mill spare gun that he had. Luckily, I had it on me. No funny business, yeah? Just gonna put, I'm putting this gun yeah, in yeah. here. Yeah. I'm not gonna kill you and nothing. Yeah, this gun. Car's out of fuel, by the way. We just found it. Oh, okay. Okay, there's a gun in there. We're gonna yeah, go. Okay, that's, thank you. If that's uh, the worst that Umbrella Corp do to us, I'll take it. Luckily, even though they've been watching us, they still don't know we have the admin. So they're not hostile. Not yet, anyway. But that's the price we paid for driving away in the car a few days ago. One gun less, but we're alive. Before heading back, I wanted to meet up with the helicopter crew. And Gnome could take us. He's been there before. So we started heading deeper into town. When we spotted a player and I tried to communicate with him. Hello? Friendly? That's from the team with the helicopter. Friendly, friendly, friendly. I asked him, did he want to stay safe with us? Get into a house for the night. But he refused. I don't blame him. For possibly complete strangers. But Gnome said he was part of the helicopter settlement. And they said they weren't friendly. He said he doesn't know. Maybe. Who says that? Gnome suspected that something wasn't right. With the helicopter settlement crew. But Zipkick was convinced that maybe. 
They were good people, but Noam wasn't. Still, we we're gonna go talk to them. Noam didn't think that we were in danger going to talk to him. He just said that he didn't trust him. So it was worth it. We waited till day before heading to the tower. When day broke and we started getting close to the tower, an Umbrella Corp were up there. We knew now. That was definitely them. We knew them by their armor. And Noam and Zip already had suspicions that the helicopter settlement were working with Umbrella Corp. We bolted from the scene, using the city to hide us from the tower above. What's that? Let's go at the back here. Let's keep moving that this way because I want to go onto the main road. They might see us. Yeah. Oh, chest. Yeah. Uh, get onto a building and listen in. Ooh, pumpkin pie. What's up? Oh, yeah. Uh, I haven't full inventory, so grab it. Oh, okay. <gasps> shh, shh. Yeah, I know. Then ooh, we could ooh. hear voices in the distance coming towards us. Friendly? No. Yo. Friendly, friendly, friendly. Yo, you guys friendly? Oh, don't copy. don't move. I won't come across the road. You guys stay... You stay there. I stay there. Yeah, it was pretty, like, yeah, it was pretty hostile. The two of them I, instantly apologized a, last time I've for how Jesse treated us. Maybe to ask, you guys don't seem very loyal to Jesse. I'm not asking for anything like a betrayal. When we got into the house, Gnome passed his radio over to Big Boy Chazza so he could chat to us in Discord so it could be secure and safe and no one will know our plan. Chazza and Monty, they didn't like Jesse, but they really feared him and they needed him for safety. And they thought if they leave him, Jesse will come and hunt them down and kill them. I'm sorry to say, but Monty and Chazza, they're, they're not the strongest. And I believe they need Jesse to survive. See, they were scared of Jesse, not loyal. And they weren't loyal because now they were spilling all their secrets to us. And every question I asked them, they answered. And I believe this information is to be correct. They told me that the helicopter they have is an admin run helicopter. And every stack of food they stick in that helicopter, then that helicopter will take the food and bring back supplies instead like guns, armor, ammo, you name it. Food is their currency. It's how they survive. They have an abundance of food growing, but they're not using it to feed people. They're using it to get stronger and gain more weapons. I asked them how they were fueling the helicopter and they said that they had a fuel pump which they found. That was the fuel pump that we've been looking for this whole entire time. The stadium has it. And I'm not sure if we can trust Chazza and Monty yet. I think they're too scared to steal the fuel pump. So I asked for something light first and maybe then we can trust them after. I asked if it would be possible to do a secret meetup and for them to trade us some food. As I told them, we have a lot of survivors on our ship and we desperately need it. They agreed. And since we'll have no lines of communication, we agreed that in two days time, when the sun rises two times, we'll meet at the end of the road where the fancy houses are. They understood and Chazza passed back the radio to Gnome. And the meeting was over. And just when we were leaving, we heard the Umbrella Corp. One of them said hello. They had heard us have the meeting. And what makes this worse is that the fact that Chazza did tell us that Umbrella Corp had made a deal with Jesse for food. And if this information gets back to Jesse that we had a secret meeting, Chazza and Monty might be in danger. But we all scattered from the scene as quick as we could. Right now, me and Noam are hiding in a house. Staying low. Umbrella Corp are around and we don't want to get caught. But I saw a survivor outside alone. It was Leonard. Leonard. And I didn't care. I tried to call him over. He looked completely lost. And he's not going to survive if he keeps running around like this. We're now rushing home. Not only to give Leonard safety and to keep him safe. We trusted him. And he dropped his weapon instantly when I asked for it. But also, there was a really big situation unraveling at home. Three people from the helicopter crew had suddenly shown up and we had already radio zip kick that we spotted Umbrella Corp sitting comfortable on top of the helicopter settlement and we didn't trust them and now we believe that they're working with the Umbrella Corp. And in our head, we think they've been told to come here and act like refugees, but secretly. They're sniffing around to see if they can spot the admin, so Umbrella Corp can order the kill order to come in and kill our admin. So, firstly, why are you guys here? Um, so we had a helicopter crew, um, no, and our leader died. Two zombies. Okay, this is all going to depend on honesty now. Are you guys working with Umbrella Corp? 
Some, I think so. No? You want to be honest? So can you explain to me why Lambretta Corp was in your base? We saw them. They wanted to hang out. There was like some zombies on the bottom floor. And we let them stay in the middle. I just joined today, so I'm kind of learning everything right now. I met up with them. They all told us no. And I believe two of them, Dazrun and Youngjer. But Zipkick has information that MZO is quite high up in the ranks, but he's pretending like he's not. That's highly suspicious. I have a plan to find out if Zio is working with Umbrella Corp and to prove our suspicions are right, but I don't think Zio is going to like this plan. So I had a plan and I knew Zio wasn't going to like this plan. And I said to him, if this all goes right, I won't be the one to kill you. And he didn't question the fact that I said I won't be the one to kill you if this goes right. So here was the plan. We knew Umbrella Corp had now been sniffing around and they were watching us and there was a lot of them around. My idea was to make Zio vulnerable, put him in the open where one of the Umbrella Corp members would see him. And I did just that. He was down here by the crates while I was up in the tower, watching him closely with a sniper rifle. At this point, he now had a radio so I could communicate with him in Discord. And I told him not to run off, even though he easily could. But I knew if Umbrella Corp came, they would either kill him or rob him if he's not working with them. I knew I was putting his life in danger, but to be quite frank, I didn't care about his life. We're pretty sure he's a traitor. And the safety of my own crew is more important. We can't have a rat inside our home. We waited here for a while, and he was fending off all the undead that was coming at him. He was cooperating. I knew if the Umbrella Corp members do nothing with him and are friendly, this is not going to end good for Zio. That's when finally, two Umbrella Corp members came up to Zio, and it seemed like they knew one another. So what I want- oh, 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 oh! Now what I would need uh, you to do, what I need you- to, Oh, they're not shooting you. Come back, please, your life depends on it. I need you to do something really important for me. Okay. Hello. Um, nothing, everything is fine. Can you drop in the radio? Can you drop sick or the radio? Um, here. I found this if you want it. No, 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 tell him to stay there. Tell him, tell him to join Discord. Wait, uh, can you come Discord? Gonna get ready to pop you, Zio, if this is the wrong answer, okay? Don't move a muscle, Zio, because I will shoot. Uh, just try and VC one or something. Or two. Hello? Hi. Hi. Howdy. Hello. How the turntables have turned. <laughs> um, this, well, just stay yeah. still. I'm, I'm not here to okay. shoot you. I'm not here to do anything. Just want some answers. So, you, you, do you know Zio? Yeah. You're Umbrella Corp, right? You don't care. Do you know Zio? Like, do you know Zio really well? Like, are you working with Zio? Uh, I can't answer that. I'm sorry. That's all I need to know. Zio, can you see me? Three, two, one. Can you guys not work with the helicopter crew? Thank you. Sicko quickly left the Discord call and they began firing back at me. And just as one of them was running away, a sniper went right in the head. I was defending myself. And sooner or later, we're going to have to cross that bridge and start a war with them anyway. Remember, they're the prison guards of this island, essentially, they're keeping us here. But I parachuted down to collect the loot from Zio and from the Umbrella Corp member I just murdered. There was a lot here. Let's just say the server is uh, one rat less. Okay. Yo, listen up. You work for us now. Okay, you cool with that? All good. You work with us now. No one deals with Umbrella Corps. They're the rats of the server, okay? They're here to make... No deal is worth it. Because they're there to make our life harder. They're the dead players from last season. That's the whole point. So any deal with them will end bad. No matter what they promise. The attack that we did on Umbrella Corp wasn't a good one. They weren't happy. But the ship was still keeping us protected. But they were watching us even more now. But we couldn't stay on the ship forever. Because our food was going incredibly low. And our settlement was getting bigger and bigger. And more mouths to feed. So I decided, finally, 
After a long time, I'd meet back up with Jack. And we would go and meet Big Boy Chazza and Monty, as it's becoming the second day now. When we told them we'd meet them at the end of the road with the fancy houses. Noam came along with me because he's going to be escorting the admin back to the ship when we meet Jack. As Jack is coming with me for backup for the food exchange. We finally met up with Jack and the admin was put into Noam's care and he was escorted back to the ship. Me and Jack continued on our adventure. We had to get to the opposite side before the next day. And we did just that. It went smoothly. We managed to slip by the undead horde. And we're now where we needed to be. I was going to go into the house where we were meant to meet. But Jack had an idea to maybe sit in the opposite house. Somewhere different. But somewhere where we can keep an eye out. Just in case. These players can't be trusted. And we waited. And we waited for a long time. Something didn't feel right. It felt off. And our gut feeling... Let's just say it was right. Uh, yeah, something like that. Sickle, it's sickle. He's going to say what they're like. He likes killing people. No, I'm, I'm just. I do, but. No, it's the shit. Like, realistically. It's fine. Hello. Anybody here? So. This is what I found. They had ratted us out, and they had ratted us to Umbrella Corp to save their own skin, probably. But Jack and I had to leave. They're going to the end house where we said we'd be. Jack's thinking just saved our life. We decided to head in the opposite direction of where they were going. So we started going along the shore. We traveled underneath what looked like was once a carnival. Now we we're on the opposite end of the stadium. We we're heading into town, where the skyscrapers were, where the cities were. We've been told this is where the horde of zombies spawn at night. Be careful. We found a church building as the night was falling. And we headed inside for cover. And everything seemed fine at first, but then we were overrun by zombies. They were flooding in and we needed to find a more secure building. And there was a massive cathedral across the way, but a horde of zombies stopping us from getting there. We just ran our way through them. And we closed the door behind us. We then began scaling the building for safety. And this building was so tall. And the zombies looked like ants down below. Up on top of the cathedral building, we got a massive view. A 360 view of the whole entire map. And here for the first time, we could see the bridge that we need to get across. And right there was the Umbrella Corp headquarters. There were so many of them standing on top of the building, guarding it, making sure nobody crosses the bridge. This just showed the scale and the amount of members that Umbrella Corp had because they had a group of five players searching for us while they still had an army at their headquarters guarding the bridge. And it looked to me that they had somebody captured, but that person wasn't part of our crew. Not that I can see anyway. So it's not our problem. On the other side of the cathedral building, we could see the stadium. And Big Boy Chazza and Monty had betrayed us. They'd ratted us out to save their own skin. We knew they had the fuel pump and we needed that fuel pump. It was a matter of saving people. Chazza and Monty gave us no other choice. It was time to use our final parachute to glide down and attempt to steal this fuel pump. With the hopes of attempting to not try and start a war with the settlement.
When we landed on top of the stadium, I instructed Jack to fire a warning shot so we can let them know that we're here and that we have the high ground and we have eyes on them. Don't try and be silly. Sniper! It's Jack, it's Jack. Run, run, run. Stay there, nice. okay? Run, what's going they can't on? come out anyway, right? They can't mine themselves yeah. out or anything like that. They have to come out that way. Right, you guys are... Whoa, 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 don't... Calm down. Wait, no, Calm you think the zombies are the zombies. Calm down. <laughs> Hello, guys. How's it going? Right, our whole settlement is, is here. What the hell? Yep, apart from... Stuck in a ball. Apart from one person, yes. But mostly our whole settlement's here, okay? Okay, well, let's just have a chat, right? You're well, in I'm there, out, we're okay? in I'm there. Out, don't shoot. No, 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 don't come out, because we can't trust that. We, You're safe, we're safe, we're not in your base, it's all good. Oh, Jesse's come out. No, no, I'm like, I'm coming out of time. Okay, don't come out, go back in. Okay, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. I, I can see Go him. back in. Go back in, or I'll shoot you. Okay. I'm going to get the fuel pump, then you're going to parachute out, you're going to make your way home. Okay, you need to talk to him, Jack, now. Keep him distracted. So talk to him about, talk alone, him about Umbrella Corp. Talk to him about Umbrella Corp. Okay, I, I, we... I want to ask you a few questions. I can't do anything. Can I get out of here? So, no, 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 under no, no circumstances. You cannot, you cannot leave. Or I will shoot. We can barely hear you, actually, because there's mobs. That's fine. Kill the mobs. Uh, I want to know about Umbrella Corps. Uh, they were here. They were here. Yeah, they, they tried to, they, they tried interrogate someone. No, just shut up. They were here. Let me know if they're coming out. Okay, and I want to know what you told them. You got forced to. You lied to them. Keep them in there. How how did they know about our meeting? Yeah, get out, get out. How did they know where to meet us? Right. Let me know when you're gone and I'll parachute away. Just say, okay, right, pleasant chat. We just need to know about Umbrella Corp. Try so they don't suspect it at all. Okay. Say okay. sorry for the warning shots, but we had to get you inside. It was the only way to keep it peaceful. Just say that. We now have the fuel pump. And we didn't kill anyone. We didn't want to start a war, but we need this fuel pump. And rightfully, it belongs to the tanker settlement. They even had a book left by the admin saying it belongs to you. You just need to find it. This is a zombie apocalypse. There is no good or bad in a way. You do what you need to survive, and I need to get people off this map because we are looking after survivors that, if they were alone, wouldn't survive. They need to be saved. And I can do that with this fuel pump in hand. After achieving a lovely objective of getting the fuel pump, we now had a few days at home, getting prepared to head out to the runway. But we had some problems. Some people didn't understand what was going on. Leonard here, he wanted to leave, and he wanted to go out there into the city. I told him he's free to leave, but I said, out there, people will kill you. It's dangerous. I said, it's up to you. We also managed to get a fishing rod. We were actually gathering our own food. And we had loads of cooked fish now. Things were looking up. But then once the fuel pump was sorted and we were ready to go, it was time to leave a few days later. Ryan, you pick up the boat. They're all, they're all here. I need to pick up the boat. Give me the boat. Give me the boat. Leonard was back and he did go out. Right, come on. Everyone, get in a boat. And he said to me that he got robbed and he had lost all his stuff. And now he's naked, has no gear whatsoever. Good. Do we have enough boats? So I think he learned the lesson and he's happy to get on the plane and take his ticket out of here. Someone drop a boat, someone drop a boat. Down at the back, down at the back, quickly. And you might be wondering why I was panicking in game at the time. Well, we had spotted quite a few Umbrella Corp members outside. And here we were finally taking the admin and the few survivors to the airplane. With the objective so close in sight and getting the admin out and the survivors, I was panicking that it could be taken away with one single sniper shot to the head. I was scared. I tried to convince Knight to get on this flight. I needed him out of the map for my safety. It was my personal mission to save him and to keep him safe. But he wanted to stay a little bit longer and help more people. And I couldn't force him on the flight. So he's sadly not getting on the plane. But Gnome is taking his place instead. And I'm going to miss Gnome because especially he's a fighter and we will need fighters at the end of this series when we're taking that bridge. We snuck onto the airfield and we placed the fuel pump down. 
We told Supernova to go easy on the weapon. Shush, 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 shush. No shooting. We didn't want to draw any attention. It was time for Zipkick to fuel it up. The plane was fueled, the admin was in, he was flying. And it was time to say goodbye to the members we'd looked after for so long. Right, don't press any buttons, Supernova. Don't press any buttons. Okay, it's fine. The zombies were now attracted to the plane. And we did our best to escort the plane to the runway. Where then it could punch it and take off. For some reason, this was strangely emotional. Because we don't know when the next series will be. And how long it'll take. But they got out. They had survived. They won. We helped people. It felt incredible. Goodbye, crew. See you in the next world. It was time to go. Head back to the ship. We're heading back to the ship, and even we joked that how funny it would be if we came back and it was all just on fire. And as I got to the ship, there was a hostage situation. Night was being held by Jesse and his group. We had to do something. This was our base. I don't know what happened. On your Ryan's team, though. Yes, I am. It's the zip space, though, is it not? Yeah, I mean, Brian, Brian was here. I, I see you had to as well, I hope. Where's, where's your hideout? Where's your hideout? I don't know. We just kind of stayed wanna... around here. We don't have a permanent base. Oh, that's why no one's seen you. Knight was doing his best not to give any information away. Jack, myself, and Zip were sneaking in. They knew we weren't here, and we now had the advantage. And then Jack said this. I don't think peacefully. They've killed our whole team. I don't think peaceful is an option. They haven't killed the whole team. Knight just logged back on, that's what he said. That's the only reason he's alive right now. Uh, Jesse's got one of the radios he wants to talk to me. Not yet. Dazrune's dead. Okay, we're gonna have to pop. If we pop Jesse... We, we've got a snipe. Like, uh, two snipers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we pop Jesse... Like, that's it. Like, they're gonna kill Knight. No, 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 wait, he wants to talk to me? Let him talk to me. I'll distract him. You better not uncrouch though. Uh, how do I not uncrouch? Okay. Come on. I'll go to the back of the ship so they can see. Okay, I'm gonna try pop Jesse, I suppose. Uh, I'm here with you, I can also pop. I have Undead Hunter in my scope. Yeah, so do I. Oh no, I'm gonna try to pop Jesse. I've 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 uh, eyes on the leader. Here we go. Three. No, I don't have eyes. Three, have eyes. two, one, go! We can talk, we can talk, we can talk! Talk! Talk, talk, talk! talk. We, talk. We're not after you! No shots, we can we're talk. We're after Jesse! Do not kill Knight! Jesse's and down! We let you live! We got rid of the ringleader! So, whoa, whoa, whoa! Ch on the ground! On the ground! On the ground! On the ground! Jesse! Jesse's dead! On the ground! On the ground! On the ground! Get your gun away! Get your gun away! Did you see Jesse? We did! We did! On the ground! On the ground! On the ground! You put the gun out of your hand, Chelsea. On the ground. Don't care. Uh, well, well, I got forced to come here. Jesus. Take the gun out of your hand. On the ground. I ain't gonna hurt you. I was trying to find you for like the past. We only minutes. wanted to take care of your uh, ringleader. Uh, we'll that was it. Like it. We'll do it like this. We'll do it like this. If you guys are surrendering, all right, just take off your armor. You're all good. You're all good. Just take off your armor and drop your weapons out. Drop them overboard. Weapons out. Take off your armor. Drop it, depression. Drop it down like underneath the ladder. Just drop it over, down underneath it. Depression, I, I think, is lagged out. Yo, the rest of them, are, uh, they abandoned ship, they're coming back. Kinda robbed me already, I don't really have anything. We're Didn't not trying to, to rob attack you. you. It, was, it was only thingy. It was only thingy who wanted to kill you, Jesse. Now, I'm about to shoot your ringleader to zombie, you okay? Alright, please do it. That kid was really Can I ask you a question? Is Dazrune yeah. and the rest, are they dead? 
I'm not sure. Yeah. We didn't find anyone here. Yeah. I saw people over here, and they went underboard. But we don't know where. We didn't kill them. That nothing happened that I know of apart from thingy. Yeah, Zip should be in the chat. Can someone check Zip? Hey. Okay. I, are they dead? They are not dead. They're coming back to the ship now. <sighs> oh Jesus! We made a mistake. We thought our team members were dead. We had made a mistake. Jesse didn't actually kill anyone. And Jack had given me the wrong information. And it wasn't his fault. It was a very heated moment. And you had to think on the spot. And we did have the advantage of nobody knowing. But Jack's false information led to Jesse's death. But big boy Chazza was glad Jesse was dead. We had accidentally taken out the big bad wolf that he was afraid of. Jesse actually wanted to speak to us. They weren't even aware that we stole the fuel pump. He was here because he had an Umbrella Corp member who he captured. Herp! And he's definitely part of the Umbrella Corp because he has no name. And only an admin or the Umbrella Corp have this. We quickly brought him down to the engine room. As now the admins were no longer hiding there. And it was safe to do so. It's a perfect place to hold someone too. Herp told us now that he's been captured. He's been put into hardcore mode. And we questioned that. We asked can the Umbrella Corp members respawn. And he said yes. But he said, if the commander of the Umbrella Corp is taken out, then all the Umbrella Corp members are in hardcore mode. And they have one more life left. And he said, the commander is wearing the black armor, but has a green helmet. You know the difference between them. And he carries a one-shot sniper rifle. Someone to be feared for sure. I believe Herb gave us all this information, hoping that we would spare his life. And he would live another day to fight. And we just let him go. We had now learned some valuable information about our enemies and their weakness. Something that even our admin didn't even tell us when we had him. Herp was our enemy and he was going to stop us getting across the bridge because that's what he had to do in the rules. There was only one thing to do with him. Oh. Congratulations! <laughs> oh. Big boy Chaz and undead, we couldn't fully trust yet. He had betrayed us in the past. He said he didn't mean to. He said he was forced to. Umbrella Corp were asking questions and he was desperate. I understand that. You'd save your own life anytime. But before we can trust them, they want to be with us. They want to join us. Or at least be friendly with us. And have a good relation. But I said, bring us food. Then, we'll talk. So they were going off to get their shipment. Zipkick and I and Knight were heading to the helicopter settlement. To see if there's any more survivors and investigate the helicopter. Because now we'd gotten five survivors out by plane. And the helicopter we can use to get more survivors out. It's time to head and investigate. Zipkick was leading us to the building. And he was going to make contact as he's been contacting that team in and out. The only thing is we don't think there's any more survivors in the settlement. We think Umbrella Corp or someone wiped them out. We have the fuel to fly the helicopter. But do we have all the parts? That's what we're going to have to find out. Helicopter's still here. Oh. Sick. That's good, that's good. Alright, so this is completely abandoned. So what is it they're actually missing? Uh, the rotor. The main rotor. They're missing the engine. Oh, so they have the- Oh, so they found the engine. They found the rotor, but they haven't found the engine. Oh. What it needed to oh, be. Oh, here it is. Hang on, hang on. Helipad settlement. You are the helipad settlement. As you may see, you have a helicopter in front of you. As of now, this will not work. You will have to travel around the map where you will find some chests with some parts in. You can see- You can then bring them here and build it up. Did you- Some just shoot? People are shooting. Yeah. Up top, up top, up top, up top, up top. Zip. Get up top. Yep. Zip, wasn't you? No, that was not me. Oh, uh oh. Okay, I, I definitely just saw one over in the, oh. on the building there. 100% oh. and it's all in black, so it might be Umbrella Corp. Uh, I got oh. a sniper. I don't I know if he's seen me. So try and... I, okay, try and not look at him, because then we might be able to snipe him. I've got one bullet. Uh, Knight, will you do me a favor? I know you're trying to stay safe there. Would you go down and watch the ladder system? Okay, the oh. way up. Uh, I've got a sniper. I think he saw me. I'm yeah, I've got a sniper it. too. So let's stay right. together. Let's see if we no, can down, get down, nice down. Oh my god. Oh, there, there. Fight or flight yeah. kicked in, and I wanted to fight. Come back, you guys. 
But someone was right behind me. I was surrounded. I told him it was only me and Knight here. No one else. Zipkick was hiding. Everything? Drop everything? Get all of them upstairs. It's only it's only me. It's only me and Knight. Yeah. Oh, no, Bugger, if you stayed hidden, dude, we could have used you to take them out or something. Oh, that was good, that was good. But sadly, Zipkick got found. They lined us up against the wall. And they told us that Leonard, the person that we extracted off the island, broke out of their prison. And technically, he broke the server rules. Look, I'm going to be honest in good faith. Take it, take you. So, I heard a little about Leonard on your team. Yeah, did you guys mug him? We imprisoned him and he escaped. So what we want is revenge. You guys can choose, but one of you have to die. So, one of us has to choose who dies. Basically. Yeah. And what happens if we don't choose? <laughs> you all die. We were ordered out onto the ledge. And I might just say this now, guys, quickly. My parachute, it doesn't work anymore. It's broken. It's not an option. If I fall here, or if any of us fall here, it's to our death. Someone is going to die here. We were contemplating and talking. We were put in a messed up situation. Zip put himself forward and so did I. But then Knight stepped forward and said this. Earlier in the series, you asked me, what, what do I want to do this series? I said, either to kill someone or to save your life. To protect you. I believe this is the moment. I believe this is the moment, Brian. Can you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Can you look at the view? This is so sad. <laughs> this is not how I wanted you. I wanted you should have went in that plane. Okay, look, I'm sorry to blame you like this before you're dying, but you should have went in the plane. I wanted to keep you safe. I'll see you in the next life, Ryan. I'll see you, man. Look at the view. See ya. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I wish that you had not pull the trigger. Shut me down with my bitter heart My blood is getting thicker You shut me down, you shut me down With my bitter I turned around and I asked, can we go now? We had just lost someone so valuable to our team. One of the most loving and trusting players on the server, I believe. And I'd let myself down. I didn't protect him. I should have put myself forward. They said we could go, but they're keeping all the guns that they have, but I could keep my revolver. Then suddenly one of them had another question and they had a question. Yeah. I have one last question before you go, actually. I heard from one of my men that you kidnapped her. Well, at least that's where we're even. Excuse me? Zip. Explain yourself? Zip. Zip. They didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't know. Are you meaning um, to tell me to well. kill her? Uh, no. Well, well, yeah. yeah. No. Zip! Did you kill her? Nope. No, we didn't. Then what happened to him? Tell us the whole story. If he's not dead, where is he? We didn't take him. My men saw you take him. I saw, saw them you them put know. him in the sheep. You can't lie this one out. My men saw him being taken to the ship and we saw you there. Yeah, we killed him. Oh, no. he, but he technically, but he technically broke the rules too by breaking character. 
I thought Umbrella Corp aren't like they're an admin team. They shouldn't be meddling like that in between people. Do you think I care about that right now? Well, like... Whatever. Right now, this is an eye for an eye. Get on the ledge. But we just had an eye for an eye. No, that was for Leonard. I got you to kill Kick. This one's my fault. I'm going. For Leonard. I this shouldn't have said anything. On the ledge. Not you, Sip Kick. I don't care about you. Listen, it was me who said it. Take me. No. What? What? Why me? What? Are you the leader? Uh, not really. Not really. No, not. technically Zip is. Yeah, I'm the leader. Listen, it's my, I'm the leader. It's my fault. Take me. You might be leader, but who actually killed him? I'm really afraid to say the answer, but I need to be honest, because if I say you, Maybe they're going to kill you, and then I feel really bad. That goes against my character arc completely. Oh, no. I did? But That's he broke the rules? Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. He broke the rules? Can you at least... If you're going to kill me, and this is the end of the series, please give me my at least moment to end this in a cool way. Yeah, I, I did it. I did it. But I need no, no, no. If you're going to kill me, and this, and 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 this is going to continue. Hopefully, Jack can continue something or something like that. I need reassurance that Zipkick isn't going to be killed. Like that's all. All I need is reassurance that he's not going to be killed. That's all I care about. But Zip, you're free to go. You're not. Zip, will you tell yeah. Jack? Uh, whoa, no, hang I'm on a Zip. second. Can I give Zip? Okay, hang on. Can I give Zip my duffel bag? Sure, I don't care. Make Zip go. Alright. Anything anything you need me to tell Jack? Just tell Jack Just I love him. Sure <laughs> um, tell him to try and continue on the objective of getting people out. That's what I wanted to. I wanted to get people out in the helicopter and stuff. Zip. And go. if he can survive two, two seconds, go. I'm telling I'm telling him some like come on, I'm talking to him some last words. Look, there's no funny business here, man. Okay. And and give this to Jacket when you meet him. Like just give him that. All right. I there's a chance maybe I might die here. They, they, this might be all a trick, so I might be good. Who knows? Yeah. Um. But just tell Jack to Time continue the journey to and to. Because yeah, yeah there's there's no way. Don't try and fight your way out of this. There's no way you're gonna do it. Like, I have your you do know how you fast you die to guns. Yeah. Listen, you have my shots. We will try to get, get as many down. people out as possible. Wait, can I have two minutes to write a book for Jack? Two, two minutes. Two minutes top. You have two minutes, what you're saying there. Okay, yeah, I won't. I wrote a book for Jack and the rest of the survivors on the ship. Now, you guys might be thinking, why don't you just shoot them up? But put yourself in my shoes. When we play these servers, we do like to immerse ourselves in it and respect others. And also, in the back of my head, there's a chance that maybe this could be a test and they might just capture me. That's what I'm hoping for. But at the moment, this is the end of the road for me. And some would say it's karma for killing Jesse, for murdering Herb. Was I too impulsive? Was this my fault? And I don't blame Zipkick for leading me here. But if Zipkick didn't open his mouth, maybe this would be a different situation right now. This is the end. If you kill him after, that's evil. Don't. Please don't. He has my duffel bag, and I want that message to get to Jack. Don't kill that's him. fair, right? That's fair that he gets he gets to leave, because that it's important that that message gets to Jack, potentially. And, oh, you know, you're fair. killing me. You know what I mean? Not saying, you know, I'm the main character, but like, you know... Right the admin team spent a long time this map, and this is the way I'm going out. Can I have a minute taking the views? I won't move. You can have your last words. Okay, I don't know who I'm gonna really say my last words to, but I just wanna uh, take in the they, map. They let, me, they let me go. They let me go. Sweet. See you later, buddy. I love you. See ya. Um. Yeah. All the ways that go out. Technically, Knight got me killed. I told Knight to watch the ladder. Was he watching the ladder? Can you answer that for me? 
Was he not watching the ladder? Did you guys come up the ladder system? He was doing something else. Fantastic. You know, you know, you spend, you know, the whole series protecting someone and you end up getting killed. Okay, um, give me... Count down to ten, I suppose, and... Can you, could you come up here and, and, and be level with me so it looks cool for the, for the camera, I suppose? We are now moving over to Jack's perspective. He hasn't heard from Zip, Knight, or I in some time now. And he went to investigate. And now he's outside the helicopter settlement. Expecting to hear a friendly voice back. Maybe me, maybe Zip or Knight. But instead, he hears one of the Umbrella Corp members. And here begins a conversation. Oh. Uh, Jack, Hello? I'm not sure you should be here. What, uh, what are you doing? Um... Where's Ryan? Just, uh, checking the building. Where's Ryan? What did you do? Instantly Jack knew that something went horribly wrong. Umbrella Corp were here and this was our last known location when we radioed it in. But then he heard Zipkick's voice. He was up in the tower with them and they were threatening to kill Zipkick now as well. Jack then hearing that both me and Knight were dead, he gave them five minutes to let Zipkick go. Otherwise he will be coming in for revenge. And Jack was thinking on his feet. And there was a skyscraper across the road that towered over the helicopter settlement. That would be a fantastic sniping opportunity. Jack was now motivated by the biggest motivator of all, revenge. Jack knows he can't go straight into the building and fight. But this tower might give him the opportunity to fight from a distance. When Jack reached the top, the five minutes was over. And Zipkick was nowhere to be seen. It was time to engage. He got into position and pulled his sniper out. He had eyes on the enemy, but Jack could just see him through the crack in the window. It was too risky of a shot and Jack was low on ammo. Every shot needs to count. So we readjusted and waited for a better opportunity. And a few minutes later, that opportunity came. Three enemies were on top of the tower, exposed. He waited for the first player to stand still. And he took his shot. Jack takes out a second one. By now they have to know whoever sniping has a vantage point above them. And being on top of the tower is not safe. But a while passed and there was no sign. No activity. The building was quiet. Jack parachuted across to another building, trying to get a better angle. But here, he could still see no one. The Umbrella Corp members must have left the building and went out the back, using the buildings as cover for their escape. But still Zipkick was nowhere to be seen. And Jack couldn't simply get in contact with him as his radio was gone. Discord communication was not allowed. But I'm sure if Zipkick escaped, he'll surely be back at the ship by now. But for once, the hunters become the hunted. And Jack is after one Umbrella Corp in particular. The Commander. If he takes the Commander out, the Umbrella Corp players are put into hardcore mode and have one life remaining. Jack's now outside the Umbrella Corp headquarters with one bullet remaining in his gun. One opportunity. That's all he's got. But knowing Jack, he can do it. He just has to hope that maybe they let their guard down or that they're standing AFK. Whatever he does here, has to stay at a distance. And he has the commander in sight. He's just waiting for the perfect opportunity. The cracks in the window should provide enough room for a bullet slip through. Taking out the commander would be devastating to them. Calmly and smoothly, Jack took his shot. 
taking out the commander in one quick hit and then bouncing out there like a smooth criminal. Expecting Umbrella Corp to retaliate fast, he started making his way back to the ship, slipping right past the Umbrella Corp base. But here when Jack was slipping under the bridge, I can see on replay mod here that a rogue player was rushing into the Umbrella Corp base, going Rambo. He managed to take a few members out, but then was sadly taken out himself. I can only assume one of the prisoners they have, he wanted them back. It was probably his friend, and he got desperate. But Jack had managed to craft himself a boat and was now nearly back at the ship. You could see him scanning, looking to see if Zipkick is here. But even looking at the footage here, I see no signs of Zipkick. Welcome back, Jack. Hello. Hello. We, someone Do you have good news, bad news, tragic news? We, we need to get everyone here. Now Jack has to make the difficult task of letting them know that two major members of this community are gone. And the third is potentially missing. Ryan, Knight, and Zip went over to the helicopter and they went to scout it out. The Umbrella Corp found them and chased them down for a while and killed them. Now, no. we don't know about Zip Kick. We believe he's okay, but we know Ryan and Knight died. Zip might have gotten away. But guys, I need okay. you to know the server is not ending. We're not going down. We're not, we're not leaving it here. We're not, yeah, no. this is not scripted. We're not going down because Ryan's dead. We're going to carry on yes. and we're going to survive. We're going to get our helicopter. We're going to get whatever plane we can. And we're going to get people off this island and we're going to survive. Yes. Yes. We're going to honor what Ryan wanted to do. But before they could continue their adventure, they wanted to say farewell to their friends that had fallen. Ray of sunshine beaming down after it. They've shown my team mercy. Yeah, I really want to fight for them. Fight for them. The helmets off for our fallen I, soldiers. They welcome me and Daz with open arms. Take off your helmets because we are good, right? Look, guys, there's not much we can say. Look, everyone's had a piece to say about these things happening. Everyone wants to fight. You don't all have to fight. I'm not encouraging you to fight. If you want to survive, you can. That's more than fine. But this is what we need to do. They are evil. That's the bottom line of it. They're not good people. They deserve to die. And look, other people might say, you know, the good thing to do is let them live and let them change. But I'm not about that. They've had so many chances. They've killed every single person without remorse. They already killed Knight and Ryan and they wanted to kill Zipkick as well. Like they weren't going to let him live until I got there. So yeah, too many of our friends have died. We don't know if we're going to survive this. Well, I can't promise you guys that you're all going to survive or come through with this. You may die. You, you may be the first person out and not know if we won. But even if we lose, we're going to make Umbrella Corp pay for what they did. Yes. In case there is a way that we do come through this and survive. Oh, that's if there's a chance, we're going to cross that bridge and we're going to survive. We're going to the next plane island the and we're right. going to plane make it to worth right. it. There, there is a plane. Plane to the right. And this plane... Is that a supply plane? It is! Alright, we need to follow that. We need to follow that. And this just shows you how quickly life moves on and survival kicks back in. And then when day broke, they started making their way closer to the airport. They entered the airfield expecting to see a white plane waiting for them. But when they peeked around, all they could see was a red beacon shining up into the sky. This 
was the supply drop. And it was letting everyone know where the supply drop is. Even though we fueled up the plane and we completed the objective, there's still other survivors on this map doing the exact same thing. So if you want the supply drop, you're gonna have to claim it. Jack was being cautious. He knew before he moves in, he's gonna have to secure the airfield. Jack and the crew looped around the back side of the airport. With the water to their backs, they thought it would be more secure. There was an air control tower that they wanted to get in. Maybe they could use it as a vantage to scope out the surrounding area. See if anyone's waiting to ambush them. When they got up there, all they could see was a horde of zombies surrounding the supply drop. The lads spent the full night just scoping out the airfield. And so far, this side of the airfield was cleared. But at this point, they knew if they're gonna go for the supply drop, there's no way they're gonna be able to clear the whole airfield. Not without splitting up anyway. So if they're gonna do this, they're gonna have to be brave. When they got closer, they could finally see the chest as the render distance revealed them. But the zombie horde was proving to be a struggle and they all needed to be cleared before they could investigate the supply drop. But grabbing the supply drop isn't as simple as just opening the chest and taking the loot. There's a mission to it. If you complete the mission, it's simple. You win the supply drop and it's unlocked. But right now it's locked and you ain't getting in it. I wouldn't even test the admins in trying to take stuff. They'll ban you on the spot. Welcome to the supply drop mission. And the rules are incredibly simple. One member of your team, minimum, must stand inside this white line. There, you'll have five minutes to defend yourself against the oncoming horde. If you step outside of the white line, the timer will be paused until you step back in. So don't stay out for too long. When the beacon goes orange, the game begins. And when you see the beacon is green, the objective is completed. Now Jack and the lads know the goal and know the mission. They start setting up a plan on how they can beat this easily. And their objective is, is to keep one guy in the white line while the others try to protect. Sounds simple and sounds like a good plan, but will they be brave enough to stand their ground? Yeah, there's a lot in coming, all right. Everyone take a side and just protect that one side. Everything started off great. Everyone was taking a horde and one guy was standing in the white line. But so far, everything was manageable. But this was only the beginning. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull them all over towards me, guys. Just make sure you keep dark side alive. Five minutes in a scenario like this will seem like an eternity. But then chaos erupted. The player in the middle was consumed by the zombie horde. And now the timer was on pause because no one was standing inside the white line. Jack now was taken in the middle, trying to make the timer go down as quick as he could. But the horde kept pushing him out. Every time they think they had it under control, things got incredibly messy, just like that. Make sure any new ones don't aggress on me. There's a lot of new ones coming. They're not they're not aggressed on me though. Hordes of zombies were everywhere. At this point, no one was even on the white line. Jack getting even more desperate orders the team to start using precious ammo to try and break down the horde. The longer they go at this objective the more zombies that will keep spawning. But looking at this from a bird's eye view, it looks like the plan had now just turned into chaos and everyone was just doing their own thing. But Jack stepped up and began standing in the middle again. Someone's gotta do it. After the longest five minutes of their life, the beacon went green. 
indicating that they had completed the mission. The objective went green, and now the supply drop was theirs. It was unlocked. All they had to do was take the loot inside and get out of here alive. But that could be a struggle, because as the supply drop was taking place, the Umbrella Core players were watching. And as soon as they opened the chest, they were now under fire. So they began fortifying the supply drop, building a wall around it, giving them enough time to load everything into Jack's new backpack. Once that was done, they knew then they had to get out of here fast. They were gonna come under fire and they were gonna have to dodge and weave the bullets coming in. So Jack crawled through a hole in the wall and began killing the zombie horde just outside it. And once they were all dead and it was cleared, they dispersed, heading away from the runway. While under fire and running, they ran into another group of survivors, but dispersion was with them. Yeah, I keep, I keep using in-game chat. Hello? Guys, guys. Are you guys peaceful? We need to run away. Umbrella Corp. All right, Umbrella Corp are here. And Dispersion had led these new survivors back to Jack, knowing he was somewhere near the runway. Little did Dispersion know that all this chaos was going on. He probably wouldn't have came if he knew. A lot of radios. Yeah, I've got a lot. Okay, let's, let's... Now wasn't the time to chat, so they kept running. And then on the outskirts of the airfield, they found a house. And they went inside. Here, they could hopefully gather their thoughts and hide from the Umbrella Corp. Jack wants to make sure these new group of survivors don't bring any trouble. You don't want anyone with bad baggage just gonna bring your whole team down that's why we always interview people when we find new survivors make sure they're not murderers or just greedy players no one wants them but these players these new ones have done some harm one of the players who came from the other group he goes by the name of doran and he had managed and i don't know how to raid the umbrella corp headquarters and he now wears the umbrella corp commander helmet he stole it from their base and on the airfield umbrella corp saw that and now the entire house has been surrounded. Oh no, oh no. Uh, Umbrella are here. Oh, oh Hello? Okay, uh, crouch. Crouch behind, crouch behind stuff. Crouch. You come forward. Get your guns ready, we're going to gun them down. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Let, let's try and reason with them. Let's try and reason with them for now. Because right, we obviously, we obviously right, took everyone. one of their stuff. So right, we right. reveal our numbers. Right. Why don't you guys give us the guy that has the helmet, and we can all just leave. What are you going to do to him? Uh, first I was going to speak to him. Umbrella Corp wanted to talk to the guy with the commander helmet. He's not yet part of our settlement. And Jack's pride right now is keeping everyone under his leadership safe. Jorin brought this on himself and now must face the consequences. This situation right here isn't to do with Jack's crew for once. This is to do with other players and their group. Eventually, Jorin left the building to talk to the Umbrella Corp members. You guys know what Umbrella Corp is like. This won't be a talk. Instantly, Joran was surrounded by the Umbrella Corp members on the bridge. And all Jack and the rest could do was just watch. But Doran's friend couldn't take this any longer. And he bravely went outside to defy the Umbrella Corp members to maybe trade some materials back to them so he can get his friend back. You know, to come back, man. I'm an armor collector and I want to collect armor. I'm sorry for it, but... If you don't want the helmet, I'll take it, please. Oh, also, we've got some of this gear I think we got from them, so here you go, okay. you might want that. Just as a show of loyalty. Okay, all oh, stay. Oh, that was from that guy, he handed it over to me. Get back in the me. building, now. Come back, man, you're gonna die, they're gonna kill you. That, that for the helmet. Go in. What is he doing? I know I'm gonna get killed here, but... One, you have one last shot. Why did you do that? You said you wouldn't kill any of our members. Oh well, yeah, if you go it. But he didn't. And we have to teach. After the death of Doran's friend, he was then put to the test. He was now on the edge of the bridge. And below him was a sewer line that had a horde of zombies. But Umbrella Corp hit him with such force, it knocked him over the horde of zombies, saving his life. Allowing him to live and run away. Jack not wanting to meet the same fate potentially as myself. He ordered the rest of the survivors inside the house to run, battle the horde in the night, and make it back to the ship. The ship is their safety. Jack had now had a lot more survivors, but to take the bridge, he's gonna need a lot more. Jack and the gang and the new players that made it are now back on the ship, safe 
and the most important thing, alive. But I'm going to take you back in time. Because there's still a lot more that needs to be done by these survivors, if they want to make it across the bridge. When Jack was opening the supply drop, there was a book inside, and the book read this. It said, congrats on making it this far. These supplies here are to help you take the fight to the bridge. Before you go for the final objective of getting across that bridge and you feel confident you will make it and succeed, make sure to extract as many survivors as you feel comfortable to lose. Remember, you will need fighters for the bridge, but the more survivors you extract means those players get a few days head start on the next island, which might be valuable to you. It's essentially planning the future. The book then went on to say, P.S. If it hasn't been found already, maybe try trekking the tallest skyscraper on the map. It might just help you get everyone together. And that's all the book read. So later on that day, Jack and the few of the gang left the safety of the ship. And now they're outside the stadium on the shores. They were heading towards the stadiums when they saw a crowd of zombies surrounding a house. And inside the house they could see a name. Okay. No, just to clear them out. Oh wait, wait, there's a guy. Hello, can you can you open this door, man? Yeah, can you open the door? Someone needed help. When Jack got closer and investigated, he noticed there was actually two players inside, and one of them didn't have a name tag. That means he's an admin, and he's dressed as a pilot. And after talking to the player that needed help, he told him that he found the pilot and has been keeping him safe for a few days now. Pilots are incredibly useful admins as they can fly tricky aircrafts that are easily crashed. Jack and the gang absorb Val and the pilot into their group, and now they're heading back on course towards the stadium. The stadium had been abandoned for many days and it was now already run down as players had broken their way in and the stadium was now breached. Many holes for zombies to slip through. This will be a major repair job. But they're back here because this helicopter is incredibly valuable. It's not a transport helicopter. It's a supply helicopter. It's simple. This crate right here, you fill up with food and you let the pilot fly it off. It'll then come back with supplies. And I mean big supplies like guns ammo, the real things you need. It wasn't long until the group loaded a helicopter with all the bread it could carry, and now it was ready to take off. The pilot got in, and he started the engine. be back in a day or so but big boy chaza and monty they were hiding a massive secret and they've been keeping it quiet and to themselves and i don't blame them it's hard to find the trust in people even jesse didn't know about this their past leader monty and big boy chaza had discovered a tank now before you get your hopes up it's not fully built yet and it's missing materials and they're somewhere on the map apparently there was a book hinting towards that they're inside a back of a truck and Monte and Big Boy Chaza have been looking for it ever since. This is something to keep in the head, as this might be very useful for the end of the map, getting across that bridge. But they left the tank and closed it back up, heading straight back into the stadium, as the helicopter was due home any day now. But in this process, Jack was looking into the city, looking for that skyscraper that the book told him about. And Jack believes he has in his sights what might be the tallest skyscraper on the map, that's what the book might be talking about. Apparently there's something up there that might be really helpful. Oh, and here it is. The helicopter's back, just in time. And inside was a shotgun with ammo and also sniper rifle rounds for the exact sniper that Jack has. Some would say he has plot arm. I think it's just good luck and the fact that he has a generic sniper. And then the rest was filled with things called Red Bull, which are basically regeneration potions. The coolest thing of all, there was a chainsaw. That was given to one of the players and hopefully we'll get to see an Umbrella Corp member be killed with it. That would be a sight to watch. But the helicopter operating, it's super loud. And now everyone was at the helicopter and everyone had let their guard down. And some unwanted guests were now breaching the stadium. 
and no one knew anything about this. Jack and the gang are seconds away from potential disaster. Yeah, let's get to cover. That's not. These guys are really bad at aiming. Stay in the get get in the box. Get in, get the, in box. the box. Wait, they're on top. They're on top. They're on top. Everyone get in. Everyone get in. I hey, see them. Is it umbrella? Yeah. Umbrella, go so away. If we get into that top base, there's a way to go away. It was Umbrella Corp. They had breached the north side of the stadium. One second, Monty, get in! Oh, Monty, get in! Monty, get in! Alright, guys, they're in there. Where, where are they? Can we cover. They're let's cover the, up our exit. They're in the top tower. No, they are straight across. They are in the stadium right now on the top floor. Jack and the crew were in a very awkward position, and they were closing in. But Jack was bravely defending. I think they, I think they've run away. Let's, let's get high. Chaz, Chaz. Seven of us and one of you. All right, uh, Dazrin, 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 and uh, Andy. I want you guys staying in here, keeping the pilot safe. Make sure to have your guns uh, like pulled at all time. Make sure all these exits are closed. Jack knew he couldn't stay in that hole forever, and he'd have to push for ground, otherwise they'll close in us around. Everyone, everyone close it off. Are they running away or are they running in here? The other side? I'm yeah, ready to here. rip and tear. Are they still here or are they running away? Go away! Oh, Wait, I see them on the bottom floor! But they quickly realized Umbrella was up to something. Are you guys and they friendly? now had a hostage. He wasn't part of the original group. He was a random let's, survivor that they'd captured. No, 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 no. Let's... Yeah, we're friendly, we're friendly. Are you friendly? Are you sure? We're friendly. And they were trying to use him as a human shield. Okay, okay. Can you guys come out? Can you guys come out here? Okay, I'll come out. I'll come out. But this kind of stuff doesn't work with Jack. Friendly, 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 Jack's very friendly. hot and fiery. We won't shoot. We won't shoot. Okay, okay. Why have you got umbrella cop armor on, man? He doesn't have the same compassion that I have. Um... Why has he got umbrella cop armor on? He's a brother, shoot him, he's a brother, shoot him, he's a brother. I didn't trust him. He was pretending to be a player, just wearing umbrella corp armor, but having no name gave him away. After that incident, more players had to be left at the stadium to make sure it stays safe. The pilot and a few players were left there. And now they had to keep on with the mission because they knew the longer they stayed out here, the more umbrella corp would try and make advances, or even other hostile survivors. Jack wanted these players and himself to be on the ship as much as possible, because the longer they're out here, the more resources they use. And the more resources they use now, means the less when it comes to what matters. Getting across the bridge. It's time to scale this tower now, and see if this is the one that the book was talking about. Jack and the crew took the long and boring stairs all the way to the top, hoping this will be the tower that they're looking for. When they got to the top, Big Boy Chaza had found the book. It was the tower. And the book read this. Congrats, you have found the special radio. Write a message in this book and we'll get it broadcasted on our Discord server. Be warned. This is a one-time use and everyone will be able to see this on the island. Make sure to sign the book once it's done and place it in a chest on top of this building. It'll take one Minecraft day for the message to broadcast. This is how we can get everyone to hopefully join his side. But he has one message and one shot only. Whatever he says, it needs to be the right words. And once this message goes out, it will be a call for war. And Umbrella Corp will know the war for the bridge is closer than they thought. And there's also a chance they might get more aggravated and more aggressive. But this has to be done. And talking about Umbrella Corp again, the group came under fire. Sniper shots can be heard. That sniper is deadly. It's a one-hit kill. It's too dangerous to peek, and Jack knows that. They're on the cathedral building. Straight across. Their best bet is not to take this fight. It's not worth it. Time for the lads to make a necessary but risky journey down the side of the building. Everyone had managed to make it down the building alive. They were all safe. 
and they were on the run, heading towards the helicopter settlement. But a few moments ago on top of the tower when the team had a slight bit of peace, from the tower Jack could see the helicopter settlement. The helicopter was still there, but the interesting thing was he noticed another player on top, and it wasn't an Umbrella Corp member. Jack needed that helicopter, and he needs to make sure another group of survivors don't take it. So he needs to investigate who's up here, and can he strike a deal to keep the helicopter for his group. But climbing up the ladder, they only spotted one name. It was JCO, and he was a well-known JCO, player JCO. in our community. We need, we need to make sure that we're okay. JCO, we're coming JCO. up, man. We're, we're friendly. JCO, if you're friendly, we're friendly. Okay, JCO, look, we're, 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 we're gonna be friendly here. Okay, are you are you on your own? No, I'm not. Okay, Who okay. Who are you with then? I'm currently alone. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, do you, is this helicopter yours? You claim this now. Yep. JCO was alone and he had claimed the helicopter. He said he owned it. But that claim wouldn't stand if a bad group came along. But luckily Jack and his group, they're pretty honorable. Jack just needed to convince JCO to join our group so that the helicopter can be technically his as well. But a few days ago, JCO found the helicopter engine, found it in a random warehouse. And he's been looking for this helicopter ever since. He didn't know where it was. And now he's found it. And it's luckily that Jack and all the gang arrived because JCO needs fuel for this thing to fly. And as you guys know, we have the fuel. Okay, okay, well, look. We're, we're not gonna we're not gonna say too much here because we, you know we, we, I still don't know if you're friendly. I assume you're friendly. You haven't got a lot of armor on. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, so we've got the helicopter right now. So uh, at, at the moment we're we're currently set up in this stadium, like the, the big like NFL stadium at the moment. Uh, we've had a lot of encounters with the Umbrella Corp at the moment. It's it's not been fun. There's been a lot of them, uh, but we, we, we're here. We're, we've survived. There's like five more of us. I think at, at minimum. I don't know if there's more, there could be more. Yeah, around five. One slight problem. No one in this group can fly a helicopter. Not with confidence anyway. And the player they need is the pilot. But there's a slight problem. They left the pilot in the stadium with a few other survivors. Jack and two others, Big Boy Chaz and Val, now need to head back to the stadium to retrieve the pilot and to get this helicopter operational. The mission of extracting players off the island into safety is now within arm's reach, but don't get your hopes up too much. The enemy aren't stupid. Umbrella Corp are watching. Oh! I got, I got killed. You got killed? Oh my god, we, we need to run. Just like that, big boy Chazza was picked off and was put into the ground. Then raised again to walk this world lifeless and cold. Jack and Fowl, they couldn't stop. Big Boy Chazo was already dead. They had to keep running or they would be next. Umbrella Corp aren't playing games. And they're doing their role perfectly, making the survival challenge even harder. Jack and Fowl got back to the stadium. They grabbed the pilot and two extra players to act as backup and to escort the pilot back to the helicopter. It's vitally important that this pilot stays alive now. Watching this footage, I didn't understand why Jack was taking the same route back where the sniper shot Big Boy Chazza. But then I understood, and I remembered. Jack had formed a good relationship with Chazza, and they became friends. I'd want to save some of his stuff as a memory, so I understand it. But when they got there, the location where he died, the stuff wasn't there, and it was a little bit more over. Someone had ciphered through the loot and taken what they wanted, and discarded the rest on the floor. Oh wait, Chazza's loot! Yeah, someone grab it, someone grab it. Okay, thank gosh. Oh, wait, be careful, the, sni the sniper will come in. Yeah, watch out for a sniper. Everyone, everyone, run, run this way. Yeah, the sniper might be camping here, guys. Watch out. Run down this alleyway. This should be safe. Make sure the pilot's safe in the back. Someone should always be behind the pilot. But Jack, not one to take the exact same route as he took last time, he started taking them in between the buildings. So that if the sniper is still up there somewhere, he'll have less opportunities to take a crack at the team. After a long detour of looping around the building, Jack had someone, gotten someone, them all someone to the settlement safely. We need to make sure that the pilot goes up third. All right, pilot, go up. I'll follow you. All right, make sure you clear, clear everything. Make sure they're not, they're not around here. So we heard a sniper shot. Uh, anyone dead? Yeah. But the sniper that killed Chazza had been keeping the helicopter settlement under heavy fire, keeping them suppressed. The Umbrella Corp know that the helicopter is close to being fixed, and they'd be doing their best to not let this thing get off the ground. They mean business. The sniper needed to be dealt with, but they had no clue where he was. Oh, on top of the broken building? He was well hidden. I think I see him, I think I see him. I see him, I see him, I see him. 
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna snipe him. I'm gonna try and snipe him. But then Jack spotted him really far away. All right, three, two, one. Oh. I I think he, don't get yeah, him. Yeah, you got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Okay. 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 All right, pilot, you're safe to come up. The sniper was now down, and it was time to quickly get the helicopter fueled and get out of here. But it wasn't gonna be that simple. See, there was a few survivors left in the stadium, and it was time to evac them and get them back to the ship. It was time to get everyone back to the ship. Now that Jack had the helicopter up and running, he wanted to make sure that no one else dies today. Not a single soul. And he's gonna use the helicopter, hopefully, to make this happen. Here's the plan. Everyone here is at the helicopter settlement, and he's gonna keep everyone here, protecting it like a fortress. He's gonna go collect the stadium players, bring them back here, and then use this base as an extraction point. Helicopter settlement to the ship. That's the plan. Let's do this. But when the helicopter was getting close to the stadium and beginning to land, Jack had an idea. One to make sure that he stays high and doesn't bring the helicopter too low. He wanted to land it on a close by skyscraper. And then hopefully the two stadium players could make their way over to this building slowly but surely. Jack ordered the pilot to land on this helicopter landing pad right here. It's tight and small, but hopefully the pilot will be able to land it decently, just as long as it doesn't crash. It was a rough touchdown, but the helicopter was intact and everyone was safe. Now the stadium players had to make their way over. But here you can hear an engine of an aircraft in the distance and no, it's not the helicopter. A plane's coming in to land. A plane that none of us, and even myself, has seen before. Umbrella Corp were up to something, and at first it was just a plane landing, and it was mass confusion among the group and what they're up to. But then you could see Umbrella Corp were doing something with the prisoners that they've gained. There's a reason why they've been trying to take prisoners. They obviously have their own game mode and their objectives and what they want to complete. They were escorting players at gunpoint onto the plane. Those players are probably going to the next map too, but wherever they're going, it's not going to be a good place. But you gotta love this show and our game modes we create. It's just so special. Once all the players were loaded into the aircraft, it swiftly began its takeoff. Heading off into the night. And by this time, the two players from the stadium had safely made it to the tower and they were here. Jack ordered them into the helicopter and to trust the pilot. He said, you're going to be taken to the helicopter settlement just across the way here. Stay there and wait for extraction. The helicopter flew over. And what's really cool, you could see it all the way from here going back and forth. The helicopter then began making its return journey to Jack and Jack ordered the helicopter to take Monty and himself back to the ship first. Pressure has now risen in this game mode. And as long as the helicopter stays up and running, it's a symbol of hope and hope gives you a strong will to live. Jack and Monty had made it back to the ship safely. And now it was time to extract the others from the helicopter settlement. Immediately, Jack ordered the helicopter to take to the sky and fetch the others. Bring them home. I'm sure they were happy to see the helicopter returning to them. They can rest their legs for the final fight to come.
With now everyone home safely, the adventure wasn't over yet, and a few brave souls would have to adventure out again. It was time to send out the radio message. Jack began by writing it, and the message in the book said this. This is to all the survivors out there who want safety or even better, willing to fight the true enemy, the Umbrella Corp. We have supplies and a way of extracting people to safety to bring the fight to the next island. And this is how to find us. To make it to safety, find the lighthouse and head southeast into the ocean. Good luck. Jack now had to make the journey to the radio tower where the book had to be placed in a chest on top of the skyscraper. He asked for a few volunteers to join him, as you never know what you might run into. And before you know it, a few survivors stepped up and the helicopter was full. And Jack instructed the helicopter to fly around the side of the island, not straight over goal is not to alert any enemies of our presence and where we're going. After a short trip around the island thanks to the helicopter, it touched down right outside the stadium as Jack felt that this was the safest place to land and it was probably best to head in town on foot. They also had one extra objective that they had to do. Luckily, Monty had found the truck, and inside the truck had all the materials it needed to fix up the tank. And now the tank is fully operational. They're gonna keep that here hidden and bring it out for when they're taking the bridge. Hopefully, it'll be an element of surprise and they won't be expecting it. Then they went back to the main objective. They were quickly at the tower, and now all they had to do was climb the long staircase all the way to the top. And when they eventually got to the top, the sun was now rising, and a new day was beginning. Maybe a symbol of hope. Who knows? Jack signed the book to make it official and then put it inside the chest at the top. It'll take one full Minecraft day for the message to get out on Discord. And then everyone will know, including the enemies, that the war for the bridge is now coming. It's official. Let's just hope this message gets out to many people and that an army is formed. The day had finally come, and the message was broadcasted on our Discord. The call for war was now out there. And here, courtesy of the admins, we have footage of the random survivors who have been surviving coming out of their settlements, their safety, making the journey to get to the boat. Some survivors made it all the way with no issues other than the undead, and others, how do I put this lightly, they simply didn't make it. Umbrella Corp took this opportunity to go hunting. All the players that have been hiding and they haven't been able to find are now out and about and heading for safety. And they're hunting in packs. And some players just didn't stand a chance. Rest in peace. From the ship, Jack could see survivors at the lighthouse. And he rushed out to save them. There's people. Zip, zip. Oh, shit. Jump in, man. I'm coming over. We'll take you over. All right, come back, come back. No, it's another zip. It's another zip. It's 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 a second zip. And overnight, the settlement grew, double the members it once had, and now there was an army. All these players either wanted to fight, or they wanted to be extracted to safety, to fight another day on the next island. Jack gave him a speech explaining what was going to happen and how we're going to take the bridge. He said, "Whoever wants to fight, cross to the other side, and whoever doesn't." and wants to be extracted to safety via the helicopter, stay where you are. A huge amount of players wanted to fight, but these players here, they wanted to be extracted. They wanted to take their chance on the next island. As you know, they'll have a five days head start. But this series will only continue if the bridge fighters make it across the bridge. The players getting extracted to safety here, it could all be for nothing if this group fails. That same night, the survivors were then extracted off the island to join the others who escaped in the plane. The group said their goodbye 
Daz, I'm gonna miss you, dude. A few people can get in the, the helicopter now. Obviously, not everyone will be able to. If you're getting safe, go down there still. Not everyone here is a fighter, so give no hate to the people who took the easy option out. They're survivalists. They build habitats. These are the most important players, and they keep the fighters armed. Without them, we'd have no fighters. If Jack and the game make it, good luck to them on the next map, because they're gonna need it. And now begins the make or break moment, the war. The tank had gotten to where it needed to be, and so was the army of players. They were heading up the only access road they could go. The battle for the bridge commences now. If they fail, the series doesn't continue. If they live, there's more of an adventure in store, and they might actually get a chance at stopping the zombie apocalypse completely, ending the apocalypse. The tank was doing bits to the zombie horde, tearing it apart, while the players stayed behind conserving ammo, keeping a lookout. With the tank, the players felt invincible. It was giving them the confidence they needed. But Umbrella Corp needed to show who was boss, and they prepare for things like this. A thousand blocks away from the bridge, tragedy struck, and the tank was swiftly taken out by an RPG. Looking at the replay mod, I can see an Umbrella Corp here, on a building nearby. It was a clean hit. You can even see here, the pilot who was controlling the tank, was absolutely shocked, and he's lucky to even be alive right now. Just like that, the tank was gone. And this is when the cam and structured members of the group started to fall apart. Guns were now being used to kill the zombie horde. Everyone was running around headless. It's like the tank was their confidence, and with the tank gone, they were losing it. Jack was struggling to get them all back under control. And in the chaos, the group were unaware that they were walking right into an ambush. There's a roadblock here, and Umbrella Corp are nearby in a building. But Umbrella are using sneaky guerrilla tactics. They waited for most of the group to pass by, and then they picked off the stragglers. One by one. Players are dropping like flies. Oh, that's people Yo, shooting! Someone Watch died. Out. Some died. Yeah, Wait, did someone people shoot? Oh, we're getting shot at. Oh my God. Yes. Hide the tree. <laughs> Anyone got an angle on them? <laughs> Anyone got an angle? Is this we're on the roof. Which direction? Which direction? Behind us. Behind us. I, I'm so, facing uh, a different side. This isn't looking fantastic so far. Jack, wanting to conserve life, is using the admin as a proxy. Ordering the admin to go after the players, because if the admin dies, it's no loss of life. That player technically doesn't exist. Jack decides to keep charging up the road with the group, and actually attack the Umbrella Corp headquarters. But Umbrella Corp are so prepared for the siege. They have members on all sorts of buildings, and even the one across from the headquarters. Again, they didn't see this coming. And for that, a member was instantly taken out. Now Jack and the squad were down another man, his life taken away in seconds. He now knew an enemy was on this building here. The enemy peaked again, but this time he wasn't lucky to get a kill, but got killed himself. That's one less enemy to worry about. Nice. I killed him, I killed him, I killed him! Nice. I saw that. I saw him, I saw him. Where's, where's the it's other a zombie, one? it's a zombie, it's a zombie. One northeast, one northeast, one northeast.
Jack and the gang had made it. But they had lost a lot of players, but it was expected. But hopefully all these players going to the next island to make sure those deaths weren't in vain. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm sure you want to know what exactly happened to me. What happened on that tower? Did you die? And I'd like to report I'm very much alive. I was giving an ultimatum. Die now or be captured and be under strict rules to tell no one that you're alive. So I'm heading to the next island, just not the way I wanted to. Who knows what's in store for me or for the others. But I hope one day we reunite. I've been in prison for some time now, and I'll be handing the camera over to Jack for an attempted prison break. They're incoming, and guards are heading out to greet them. Alright, you guys ready? Yeah. It's fine. Though. Wait until it stops, wait until it stops. Get out. Alright, behind this building. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh Make sure we're going together. There we go. Okay. The sniper is now down. The prison guards have no overwatch. Uh, be careful not to shoot each other. And they don't have to worry about a sudden shot to the head. Yeah, yeah pull back if you need to. Yeah. Don't be too far. Yeah, they're pushing well, up. They're, they're pushing you're up. You're very far ahead. You're very far ahead. Oh, God. Pushing back. Right. There's a guy right to that building. The team knew that they were getting surrounded and there were a lot of SCP members outside and they were closing in. The team had lost momentum and Jack took some heavy fire and went super low, quickly using stim packs to get him back to full health so he could take another peek Someone's to hold gone. off the horde coming towards him. You sniped the there. Sniped Jack, you can get up. We need, we need to watch out, watch out. They're up close. Jack doing his best to hold everyone back with his revolver. They then pushed on top of the air control tower. Jackie, yeah, let's go up, up, let's go up, let's go up. Yeah, get up here, get up here. Go in, go in the plane tower and get up. Yeah. Go up the ladder, you said? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna leave. Nice, okay. good, sh good stuff, good stuff. Care go on over! with that sniper. Got him! Got the guy below! Let's go! Nice, nice. nice. Alright, let's go push around this building here. Push around this building with me. Oh god, that did damage. This guy died, oh. dead, dead, dead. Nice, nice, good nice, stuff, nice. guys. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, we got I, this. I need, I need stims, I need stims if anyone's got. I'm wait, wait, guy, 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 you're right in front. I only have I'm six stims. I, I only need, have I six. Sims. I'm on ton of ours. Oh, I'm dead. He's fully domed me, bro. Oh, oh no. no. Wait, no. I'm dead. Ow. Monty, how are we gonna do this? How are we doing this? Jack and some other survivors, their story is over. And now it's up to Monty and Youngjer.
to get us out of this prison. After a fierce fighting, they had managed to make it inside the main prison. And they had taken out the two guards in the control room. But out of the six who came, only two managed to make it here alive. But the sacrifice of the players who did die, including Jack, they had managed to bring 50 or more players onto the game, giving the survivors a chance to win this game completely and complete the lore that was started a year ago. The klaxon was turned off, the alarm system was disabled, and the door to all the prison cells opened, freeing everyone. Woo! Zabe! But sadly, the prisoner in the next cell was accidentally caught in the crossfire when young Jer and Monty were killing the two players in the control room. So instead of a player being released from the cell, it was now a zombie. And to make things even worse, this player went by the name of Zipkick. He was on the tower with me, and I wanted to ask him how he managed to get captured, what happened to him. And now all those answers die with him, and we'll never know. Monty and Jer were down below trying to control the prisoners to get them organized. There's still a long journey to go and we need to get off this island before more SCP players arrive. Once that was done, it was finally time to get off this island and to get out there. And on the island was a plane that we could use to escape. But there was a dilemma. The plane had a limited amount of seats and not everyone could come. And instead of erupting into potential violence, we managed to solve the problem by discussing and some players volunteered to stay behind. But before we could take off, the small runway needed to be cleared of all vehicles. Young Jer was moving one of those vehicles. He was one of the players who had freed us from the prison and we owed him a lot. But as he was reversing the car, he drove into a pole and the car blew up taking Young Jer out of the game. He had taken on countless enemies, survived countless journeys, and that's how he's gone. You couldn't write this. When I was recording this at the time, I was gutted for him. And this puts the show in jeopardy because he was an incredible fighter. And we're going to need people who can fight. I'm gonna need people I can trust. But we couldn't mourn the dead for long. We need to get off this island and reach the mainland. There are survivors in the nearby city who survived the last 100 days. We need to get to them. They're waiting for us and they need us. I drove the plane to the end of the runway and I punched it, shooting into the sky, the engine roaring. And as we broke the cloud layer, we forgot to check one crucial thing. And that was the fuel. Our fuel had run out and the engine has now cut out. And we're gliding. We're going down. Should we God, jump on? Please, boys? God, please, God, please. Oh. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. Uh-uh. Should we jump? Crash landing. Don't jump. The plane had crashed and luckily it didn't blow up. The structure of the plane absorbed all the damage that we would have taken. So luckily, we were all alive. But now, we were stranded up in the mountains. And the admins had given us clear instructions that we had to get off this mountain, otherwise we'll freeze. They had given us one hour to descend 
to lower altitude. So now with the plan changed, we have to get to the city on foot. Remember, there's survivors in the city who made it across the bridge from the other island. They're waiting for us. And they're probably going to be wondering where we are. Up in the mountains, it was giving us slowness. We had slowness three. But before we could set off, I needed to check the canyon that we flew through. I thought a player had jumped out and maybe he's stuck up there. So myself and Monty went up to investigate. But we found no one up there but just undead, frozen zombies. We made it back to the group and we began following the road south. This road was dangerous and zombies were constantly coming towards us. There's quite a few. Be oh, careful. Careful, they are on both sides. Oh, what's that? There's a couple uh, coming up behind us. Oh, great. We had managed to find a small camp that looked abandoned. There were no signs of life, but still we were cautiously moving in. You never know when there might be a trap or an ambush, so you need to be ready. With me and Monty being the best geared, we were investigating the campsite. And after a while of searching, we determined it was safe and everyone made their way into the camp. IGM Wu jumped straight into the vehicle and it started up. That was the only thing that was valuable here. There was nothing else. This base had been stripped of everything else. We got everyone in the vehicle and we thought it would be a good idea to use this to get off the mountain. And the idea sounded great at the time. But after driving maybe a hundred or so blocks, the snow, the mountain was just too much for the vehicle. And it was faster to be on foot and also quieter. And this was maybe a good thing and a blessing in disguise. Because as we kept pressing up the road, a base, a humongous base revealed itself. And this place was heavily guarded. Oh, oh helicopter, get a helicopter, get a helicopter. Oh, no, no, no. This is a helicopter. We're not there. We want to get down. Hug this mountain. This is the best chance of not seeing us. Hug here, in here, in here. Please, everyone quick. Crouch and, crouch and hit prone. Doesn't really matter if you're prone or not, as long as you're just hugging this mountain. I don't think it'll make too much of a difference, lying down or not. If anything, it's better being crouched when it's a helicopter, because you're a smaller looking down. <laughs> I actually don't think the helicopter sees us. I'm actually shocked by that. But he will soon. The guard, I think, definitely sees us. Why don't we shoot it down, though? They might only have... They must have... not have good communication to the I was just about to say, they might... They, no, what they might have is that they might have only in-game communication, which might be a rule to make it more fair. Helicopter So, like, they need to land... Like, that helicopter needs to land, then it'll be told, and then that helicopter will probably take off again. Yeah, that helicopter's seen us. Because it looked like it just took off recently. It's on the map. There was a helicopter flying around, keeping a lookout. If that thing spots us, we're dead. For like a few seconds oh, we got, straight. Hang on, we got another freaking tower with a definitely, they're definitely snipers. This is, this Maybe is the time for a perfect down. sniper shot. Well, it's a bin shot. Run, they're hey, run, run, run. They're pointing down. Run, they're pointing down. Run, they're pointing down. The road's here, the road's here. Down. The road curves in here. The road, go, go, road go, curves go, go, in go. here. Guys, everyone who's behind, just start running. I just got Ooh. slowness again. And as everyone ran, me and Monty held the back lines, expecting a push shortly from players. The helicopter wouldn't dare fly inside here. It's too dangerous. Yeah, it might... No, it could go above it. It might need to go I around the mountain free. to get to we're us. Free. We're free. We're free out of this um, area. We escaped there's, the there's mountain. There's something over the there's 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 But those players that we expected to come rushing us never came. And now it was just me and Monty. We expected once we got out of this valley that the team would be there waiting. But when we emerged at the other side, they were nowhere to be seen. They had ran and left us, or worse, being captured. But things just don't stop. As we got outside, on the right, there was another base. And at first, I thought it was just another building. But then, I could see players on the towers. But this was a different team completely. This was Umbrella Corp. These were the players who took me from the last island and took me here and handed me over to SCP. You see, Umbrella Corp members, they're able to respawn. They come back every session. But if we take out the commander, they have no more respawns. And that's my goal for this series. Get revenge for the Knight in Red. 
and for Zipkick, and for everyone else they killed. And one of the Umbrella Corp members had now spotted us, and that member tried to engage in conversation with us. But I know what happens when you make deals with this team, or follow their instructions. They never mean what they say. Hello, what are you doing now? Not much. Good okay, to see you again. Like to follow me? Yeah, you're, you're on my land there, if you didn't know. Follow you? Yeah, just follow me. You're on my land. We're, we're going to a nice resort called Home. Yeah, we're going home. Follow me. Okay. Okay. Do you want to come see my leader? Not really. She's very nice. We have no. We have no ammo or anything. Oh, okay. So I gave them a swift no. That person killed Knight. Come on, let's go. A games person. No. Okay, I'm good. Oh, Under heavy fire, we fled the scene, and we wanted to get as far away from the Umbrella Corps base as possible, for now, because we will be back to take them down. But the city we were so desperately trying to get to had now came into sight. It was right in front of us, but we knew, with all the shots that were just fired at us, Umbrella Corps won't be far behind. So we left the road and entered a tree line, waiting to see if we could ambush any Umbrella Corps members who are hunting us. Do you think we could take out a whole Umbrella Corps? Area? No, I really doubt we yeah, was could. Quite a few there. Also, I know a lot of people like Oraceco and JJQ. I was doing some practicing with them before this event actually happened, and they're insane. Now, oh, yeah, they're coming down the road, they're coming down the road. I probably think we're in the town if they're using the render distance thing. No, it's not. Sicko knows we're here. He just said hello. Oh. Yeah, the fact that they know it's us. Oh, nice. Get the loot. Don't want to push too fast. I'm gonna go up the hill, see if I can spy anybody, just in case. Oh, dude, they have M16, they've got new guns, they've got players' guns. They haven't got oh. their classic Umbrella Corp stuff. I don't see anybody in the area. Right, come on, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. There was someone else running around. But as we're about to enter the tunnel to get to the city, we notice another Umbrella Corp base in the distance, up on the hill with power lines connected to it. This is where Monty said that this might be where the air defense system is, which we need to take down so we can get our admin team onto the map to help us fight this war. So it's crucial that eventually we take down that base, alongside with Umbrella Corp's main base. With myself looking one way and Monty looking the other, we watched each other's back as we pushed through the tunnel slowly. Okay, right, let's do the classic thing. I'll look forward, you look left. I'll look forward, you look back. And if we get into a gunfight, um, we have to sadly fight this one. <laughs> we need to get yep. out of this area. I'm watching forward, don't worry. Do you trust me? Yep. Good. We had now managed to finally make it to the town we were meant to fly the plane into. And a lot of time had passed since that plane crashed. And this is where I'm gonna be honest with you. My frame of mind completely changed. And in my head, I was at war. And the only thing I was thinking of was survival and ending the Umbrella Corp. Monty and I had managed to find the survivors in the town. And they were running around in a building, not even attempting to hide. And in my head, and I think Monty's too, they were a liability. So instead of greeting the prison survivors, we quietly tiptoed away. They were now free from the prison. Monty and Jack and all the rest, they'd done their job. And it's up to them to survive this series by themselves. And if they want to do that, they're gonna have to take it seriously. Because this server, the admins are not gonna make this easy. And that's where me and Monty had our chat. So like, I don't want that to happen again. I, Monty, I'm not gonna lie, I don't wanna get attached to any more people. Like, 
night and all that, like, I w wanted to protect and I just ended up paying for it. So, like, we agree, like, we fight for each other, but we do not save each other. Does that make sense? Yeah, You sure. want to put that out there? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Because survival at the end of the day. After Monty and I having our heart to heart and figuring out what our survival plan is, it was now time to meet up with the original survivors we were meant to meet when we had the plane. The problem was, a lot of time had passed, and they were all the way over on the other side of the city. So when we eventually made it there and got on top of the building, those survivors, as expected, were nowhere to be seen. They had clearly waited long enough and knew we weren't coming. Something must have went wrong, or maybe we were dead already. And as we were so high up overlooking the town, Monty was able to spot one down below. So we rushed to go get them. Ninety percent. Yeah, yeah, it's Kieran, it's Kieran, it's Kieran. Hey, Kevin. Yo. Wait, I saw Kieran. Where'd Kieran go? Is that Kieran who I think it is? Yo, yeah. yo, yo, yo! Guys! Yo! Come here! Are you guys original survivors? Can you hear me? Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Okay, where's the third guy gone? All right, come on, come on, come with me. Out here isn't safe. In the forest is not safe for sure. 100%. You'll get ambushed. Hurry. I told them to be quiet and follow me. And don't use in-game communication. Just moving into this building because I like the positioning of it. Shh, tell Mohammed not to speak in chat. We need to be quiet, otherwise we're going to get a big bunch of players on us. Monty and myself and two of the other survivors were using Discord to communicate so no one could hear us in game. You're allowed to use this communication when you stay really close. But Mohammed had lost us and he was too far away for us to move him into Discord. Oh, guy, guy on the, guy on the front, guy on the front. What? I think, I think I'm brother Corp. I don't see it. Don't, don't, don't say a word, don't say a word, don't say a word, don't say a word to him. Hey, He's gonna get us all killed. Mohammed's gonna get us killed. Get down, get down, get down. Just all get down, just all get down, hide from Abby. He's gonna kill us. What? what? Right See, now. I just saw the entire team of the people, like the big team, run yeah, down the, the streets and then Mohammed, Mohammed behind the building. Oh, I can literally see Mohammed. He didn't run far, did he? Yeah, it's Umbrella Corp. It's Umbrella Corp literally chasing them down. Umbrella Corp were hunting us. And the two other survivors we had just picked up wanted the same thing. They wanted to go to war with Umbrella Corp. And we thought, with Umbrella Corp being in the town, looking for survivors to capture or kill, we thought that this would be the perfect moment to attack their base. And we thought, psychologically, maybe they won't be attempting such a quick attack with the series only starting so soon. And we were all bloodthirsty and hungry to end. Umbrella Corp. Mohammed sadly ran off before we could even get a chance to maybe potentially send a whisper to him. It was time to quickly move out of the town undetected. And that, surprisingly, was the easy part. We had managed to get out of the town, but what we had just done, we had managed to loop around to that Umbrella Corp base that I had seen just before we entered the tunnel. This was a small lookout base. It looked like it was overlooking the city, maybe to protect the city, to control the city. I'm not entirely sure, but on replay mod here, I can see something. A rocket launcher system on top of the base. And this might be the building that Monty told me about not long ago. There's a tower on the map controlled by an admin team, we were told. And on this admin control tower is a weapon system that's capable of shooting down any aircraft from any range on this island. And before the admins can come in who helped us in the last series, that system needs to be taken out completely. So the helicopter is free to land and it'll give us help when we need it. A one-time use. And in calling in the admins, we'll also reveal more of the lore and our objective that we need to complete. But this was a small Umbrella Corp base. We wanted to hit the mothership, their big main base, where maybe the commander lives. So we attempted to quickly sneak past 
while they were distracted looking into the city. And somehow, by a miracle, this worked. We snuck in under the power lines and we were darting straight for the main Umbrella Corp base. We still had the element of surprise and that would hopefully be enough to end Umbrella Corp forever. Soon, it's time to begin our engagement at this base. And once we begin this siege, we'll potentially have 10 to 15 minutes before the rest of the Umbrella Corp members make it back to base. But this wasn't as easy as we thought it would be in our heads. The players they had left behind at the base were elite and they were good at what they did. We expected them to be like last season, very aggressive and that they potentially leave their walls and come towards us. But they were holding their ground and they were doing the right thing. All right, we're going to try push ourselves in. We're going to try push our way in. Try and take down this fortress if we can. If we were around the backside, we could just shoot in the back and then they'd technically fall off. They're on top of the tower here. I've got a grenade and lava over. Oh yeah, that's this one. Grenade out. In one multiple times on top of the hill. Oh, there's... Yeah, yeah, that's it. Hit him again. Mod the on. Mod on the left. If you can get this guy in the close tower to peak, that means we can clear yeah. this tower. I down though. You can shoot for leaves. Oh, what you know. Can you? Yeah, you can. I would say maybe fall back. That we can actually take this. No, I think we can. T like we can, we just need to clear this top tower. Yeah, Sadly, not long after the siege, Dimitri was taken out of the game. He was killed by one of the players in the tower. And with this, Umbrella Corp, they done their classic trait, where they got aggressive. And that's what we wanted, but at this point, it was too late. We now had to leave. This engagement had been too long, and Umbrella Corp, the players in the town, were now going to be heading back to base. And we were soon going to be outnumbered. This attack was an utter fail. Kieran, Monty and I began running back up the power lines and we had now found ourselves at that tower base with the air system that we need to destroy. We thought that we could rectify the situation and bring down the air defense allowing us to bring the admins into the game where they can help us for a short period and they can give us the objective that we need and tell us more lore about this island. We began quickly engaging the base with no plan whatsoever. But we got the whole situation wrong. The players that were inside the city, the Umbrella Corp members, they were now pushing in behind us and they had ambushed us. Are we being shot from behind? Oh my god, there's loads coming behind, behind, run, run, run! I ran for the closest hill to get some cover, where as quick as I could, I turned around to try and lay some covering fire from Monty and Kieran. Oh, I'm, I'm dead. No, you're not, you're not, you're not. Oh God, run, 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 run. More defensive positions. But that was unsuccessful. Monty had managed to get away, but Kieran was sadly killed in the ambush. It was now back to just me and Monty. Umbrella Corp's mind games that they played in the last season of winding us up and taunting us was clearly working. Our biggest danger and our true threat to survival was actually ourselves. Monty and I decided to take refuge in a building, calm down and recuperate and learn from our losses. If we cleared, if we could have cleared the top building, like we had to give them a fight. Like, do you know what I mean? We had to try and fight them no matter what. Thank you. Just in case. So we had to try and use that momentum to try and counterbalance it. But I was about to say, let's just go because they're not going to come out and we don't have the resources to take care of them and they're going to be on us. And then literally they were right behind us. Here, up, up here. Don't go like probably a good tactic is probably not to go fully all the way up because that's where they're going to expect us to go. Right, we need to keep an eye on this. They're bringing attention over this way as well. We've got two guards in the tower over there as well. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, do you know how I was saying about Herb's team and stuff in here? Yeah, yeah, I think they are. In this know. building? No, 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 just in the town hunting, I think. I just saw a black figure like down an alley just like run past. And, like, who wears black armor? And I think he's heading in the direction of that prisoner. So that prisoner is either going to get captured or I, I, I'm just keeping these an eye on these guys down below 
While up in the tower and taking a respite and recovering from our heavy loss, I was watching three players down below in the town. They were probably the prison players who left the island with us, and it looked like they now had raided some armor. But these players had my attention because I was wondering what had their attention. They were obsessed with looking up the road, and that's when I could hear an engine. Okay, they've just seen something done. Oh my god, that's a tank. That is SCP. That is a lot of- Oh my god! That's a lot of people. Maybe click sad. That's a lot of people. Do not get spotted. Make sure you're sitting really far back in the room if you're gonna be looking. SCP had came to town, and they came to town in force. And SCP had a message for us, so they ordered all the survivors inside the town to join a Discord channel, where they left this message for us. So, to all the survivors, you have five minutes to hand yourself in. Otherwise, we, we will be coming. Alright, that's the message, guys. You may leave and make your decision. So, yeah, go back to your VCs. Okay, Monty, I'm assuming we're not handing ourselves in. Yeah, nah. Okay, yeah, nah. Um, what do we do? Uh, I really don't know, to be honest. I really doubt anybody will actually hand themselves in. With me and Monty agreeing that we weren't going to hand ourselves in, it was time to now flee the city and get out of here. If we have any chance of surviving this, we need to escape the city. We quietly went down the ladder trying to avoid detection from the survivor on the nearby building. We had five minutes to flee the city before SCP would move and sweep the town hunting for any survivors who didn't hand themselves in. But it was proven tricky to escape the town within the five minute period. Hang on, wait, 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 wait. On the floor. The five minutes was up and they were sweeping the streets. We did our best not to get found. We're gonna get down here. We're gonna wait. And then we're gonna try to cross that bridge at this right time. We attempted to take another route out of town, but that got us discovered. And an SCP member came running our way. Fleeing the scene, I knew that that SCP member was still somewhere behind us. Run, 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 run. run. I know. Run. Is he dead? I uh, know. Jump on that tree. Can't hear. Go. We won't outrun him. So Monty and I got in the tree and waited to ambush him. Go, 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 nice. go, go. I'm going quickly get his gun. Now, with him taken out, hopefully, he never alerted any of the other SCP members. Go out of town. Try to get out. Hopefully they're gonna think we go up the opposite way. I don't know, let's just hope. Yeah. He shouldn't have even saw where that came from technically. He was dead before he even looked at me. Like, if we're gonna take out this many people and this is the challenge, we have to make sure that we take them out in small chunks and bites. And if they're chasing us, that's the perfect time to take them out in bites. I'm gonna have bobby pins. <laughs> Ooh. We had successfully gotten out of the town, but then Monty told me that he had seen Dazrune in the town as we were attempting to escape, and Monty wanted to get him. Alright, we'll go back, but like, if it gets too hot and we need to leave, like, we need to leave. Like I said, we're not dying this season. We, we're, we're, I want to go out with a fight, not saving someone. Not anymore. So now, we have to head back in. Hopefully, saving Dazrune will be worth it. Crouch, 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 crouch. I need to make sure they're safe. Oh, that's the prisoners. Yeah, 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 I knew, no. We have to get them to shut up. Got an idea. Both of you on the ground. 
now on the ground. On the ground and okay. don't talk. Yeah. Don't talk. Okay. On the ground in the tree. Now. On the ground. Sorry, dude. You're too weak. You're gonna get us all killed. I killed the guy because he was putting us all at risk. And also, I'm at war. In the city map, I did my best to try and save others as much as possible. And because of my actions, that's got everyone killed. Now, with the only one survivor lying down, we should head into town and see if we can find Dazrin quick. But shortly after being back in the town and going around the corner, I saw an abundant of SCP players heading our way. They had obviously heard the shotgun. It wasn't a smart move on my end. Oh shh, Monty, Monty. Daz, if you're here, come now, come now. Oh, Daz, 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 Daz. Oh my God. Daz, 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 come. We, we need to get Daz, out of here, come, Daz. run, now. Come. No, Monty, run, they're all coming. Oh, they're all coming. They're all coming. Come on, Daz, come run, on, Daz, they're run. all coming, Daz, they're all coming. Okay, I need to. I'm sorry. This chicken needs to go. In the trees, Daz. You don't have a lot of armor. Prisoner guy, get to me now. Bit. Now, come to me. Come to me right now. Crouch here. Crouch here. Crouch here, Monty. Daz, crouch. Come here. Come hey. here. Come here. Come here. I need you to do something for me, dude. I need you to go running down that road. Go, go. I need you to run down that road. Please. Thank you. Right, go. And hopefully, use them. Use him as an escape goat, and we will sneak out of here. Oh, okay. I like these tactics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting killed for anyone this season. You're so lucky you're in that building. Oh my god. When I saw your name pop up, I was like, nice! That's there! <laughs> Alright, let's go. Let's go. Because that guy might return. This is a zombie. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I had to kill I had to kill that guy because he wasn't lying down. He wasn't I was gonna get us he was gonna get us found. We had managed to use the survivor as an escape goat. And when we got back to the mountain overlooking the town and the suburb area, it bought us the time we needed. Because there were maybe eight or so SCP members scouting the beach down. I did what we had to do to survive. Alright, they're gone. We right. could always head to the other town a bit down here. I was thinking, yeah, we yeah, we keep moving. We were just about to head into another town. After that, we kept following the little mountain range by the ocean. And we found ourselves entering a small industrial village with a docks. This is why men there's like a separate area down here. Yeah, but hang on. Just stay here for a second just in case. There's a vehicle down there. Yeah, there is. I just saw that. That's what I'm looking at. But that's why I'm saying like, hang on. Wait, we head down to town, there's people down there, and we get ourselves killed. We get ourselves killed. See the, the, the wood? We'll head down to that at least. At least some cover. Take it slow. Since all looked quiet, we began moving in. And straight away, we could see that there was a truck and people inside here. We wouldn't know. Ooh, okay. Yeah, not good. No, but I'm just saying, they have no names. Yeah. So... Hang on. Oh, it looks like an it looks like a base. I'm not gonna lie. Has everyone got their guns? How yeah, but how come there's nobody here then? Well we don't know if there's nobody here. Well we haven't seen anybody yet. But as we were coming back down the building at the bottom, we'd notice what looks to be a door. A vault door by the looks of it. And there was a chest standing right beside it. And in the chest was a book. And the book said, Find a generator to turn on the power to open this door. This was left behind by one of the game admins and their job is to keep this map interactive and give survivors small missions to do. If we find the generator, we might get some high value loot, exactly what we need. We searched all over the town, but the generator wasn't here. We had to keep moving. There was also a trailer nearby filled to the brim with wood. We all had the same idea. We thought this is somebody's truck. That means whoever owns this, they're gonna hopefully come back. And when they do, we can ambush them and claim the truck as ours and use it to our advantage. But as we got closer to try and investigate it, we could see clearly that this truck, it was locked. So we decided to wait nearby and hide. All right, we need to retreat. Let's let's let's, let's just retreat back to the hills for the end, for the end of session. Because, yeah, this is kind of scaring me. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I think so. It's got wheels. 
the tank could drive today fine, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah. But someone's just collecting a lot of wood. <laughs> After a hefty session of watching and waiting, nobody came, and we were all bored by now, and we had right. to keep moving. Let's uh, loot the building, I suppose. We can't go in the vault because we don't have the power on, so we learned not to click that yeah. button. And if we see a guy, then obviously, yeah, then we'll rob him, but I don't know. We entered a nearby building and we started exploring it. I could see that this building had to be something important because it had cameras on the outside. Cameras signify a high loot area or maybe worse, an SCP or an Umbrella Corp base. But we thought it can't be a base because there's no enemies here and there is loot to be found here. Right here, still. Food. I have loads of food. Oh, do, we, do we have a pickaxe by any chance? Um, They have steel crates down here, which is... Same as shulker boxes almost. In the building, we found some guns in the chest and we took our time carefully looting everything as we can't to afford to miss anything. Supplies are low and we need some valuable equipment. On the top floor, I had found a VSS. This is a small little sniper rifle, but the con is it's not really that strong, but handy against zombies and it's silence. That's the best of all. But I had gotten some equipment, some attachments, for other snipers, if I stumble across them in the world. Have the base for the scope. I think you would need to take that off the of a gun. And no, it doesn't. It's not compatible with the VSS. Not the scope that I have anyway. I think I'm pretty sure the VSS has like a custom. As we were heading out of this small little village, we were attempting to loot everything. There was a lighthouse nearby, and I sent Monty and Daz in, but it came very obvious that we were being looked for. SCP, they were searching for us. And it felt like we were maybe the only last survivor standing from the town that hadn't been captured or killed. Every so often a helicopter doing the rounds, scanning. It seemed like they were very confident that they had us trapped in this area. And all they had to do was find us. As you're not crouching. It's fine, it's fine, he's in the helicopter. If he was in the helicopter, we would've got spotted though. We would have definitely seen our name. Uh, okay, right. We, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We need to try. Okay, that thing went around and back into the mountains. So they're literally looking for us. That's what I told to stay in this area. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Let's go. Let's go. Let's move. Move. So with this knowledge, we took things as slow as we could. We found a couple of houses. Guys, you need to crouch as soon as you can when you get into those visions. Can you crouch? Yeah. Just want to make sure. You're okay, you can. Am I, am I crouching now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because if they weren't in a helicopter. Crouch, 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 lie down. That's the car. That's the car. That's the car. The road there. We need to get somewhere better. Ah. We need to get in like a house or something. No. Maybe behind this house. Car, car, car. Are you in it or is it just. Yeah, no, it's moving. But in the distance, we could hear a car engine. A truck went by. Sadly, we couldn't see who exactly was inside, as the players were invisible due to a glitch. But all we can assume is that it's SCP. Thankfully, as a benefit to us, we can hear these car engines from hundreds of blocks away, making it easy to hide when the vehicle gets close. As we headed out of that village, we could hear another car coming down what sounded like the tracks. And we were right. And that was the same again. Whoever was inside that, we are unsure of, as those players were invisible too. They could be survivors for all we know. Be entity distance. Yeah, I don't think so. White color scheme, probably SCP. When the car went past, we crossed over the tracks to gain some high ground on a nearby hill to overlook the tracks. And also, I wanted to get a look at the power plant in the middle. I had heard some rumors from the prisoners that this power plant had been down for some time. The shield around it, should I say. This, I've heard, is where the zombie apocalypse started. SCP created it.
and the force field here keeps all the zombies inside and that is why there's barely any zombies here. They keep their own island safe. Wait, what? <gasps> Whoa, okay, cool. As I was heading back up the hill, a train was coming by. It was a cargo train and it was steaming across the countryside, heading in the direction where the car had just went. Where's it going though? Let's say SCP or something on the... Yeah, too. I, saw I don't know. I say it is SCP. We decided to head in the opposite direction. Head towards where the train just came from. Where is it coming from? We gotta go. If the train or car does come, RIP. And I think we were after finding that place just up the tracks. There was a train yard. Oh yeah, you're right. It is a train station. Something. Yeah, it doesn't look right. It's not a military base. There's no towers. We'll take it slow though. That's what, that might be what they want you to think. And then the truck that we saw in the village came driving past. Yeah, yeah, truck, 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 crouch, 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 crouch. It's that truck, it's that rogue truck, whatever that's up to. And then shortly after, the Jeep that was going down the tracks was coming back up the tracks the way that we headed. And another car to our right. Oh my God. Oh, it's Umbrella Corp, it's Umbrella Corp. What are they doing on the tracks? I can't see who it even is. And then as I was getting close to that jeep and heading to the train yard, the train came flying by chasing the jeep. In my head, I knew what was going on. Either Umbrella Corp or SCP own this train system and they send the jeep down before they send the train down to patrol and make sure the rails are safe. But it was clear as I got close to the train yard that the train wasn't coming from here. The train had disappeared into a tunnel and heading across a bridge. But it wasn't a complete waste of time. As we found who owns the train and who's been driving the truck, SCP seemed to own the train system and the players driving the truck, that's Umbrella Corp. SCP and Umbrella Corp are clearly working together. That's nothing new. We already knew that from the beginning. As I got deep into the train yard, a helicopter came flying past. I did what I usually do. I hide and wait till it's gone. As Umbrella Corp were the ones who flew me out of the last map and captured me and then sent me to prison and handed me over to SCP on the prison island. Monty and Daz, they weren't with me. And to keep the immersion strong, I had left the Discord channel. I told them before I left, I'll be back. And if you hear shooting, don't attempt to save me. Save yourself. As I got to the end of the train yard, I saw the generator that we needed to power that vault door that we found. The only problem is we need a vehicle to be able to tow it to the building to turn on the power. And that is something I don't have right now. But as I found that, I heard a vehicle coming and it was SCP making their return trip. But since I was silly and I'd killed some zombies, I had left some rotten flesh on the floor and that alerted them that someone had been here recently. So I thankfully found a bit of a glitch spot and I hid inside a crate. And luckily this thing was working because if it wasn't, I'd sure know about it. You could see them looking at the zombie that I'd most recently killed. They knew someone had been here. I was just hoping that whoever they thought had been here was now long gone. After a while, I moved out and I quickly found out that they were still here. But it didn't look like they were patrolling anymore. They were just waiting, keeping a lookout. But I could definitely tell they were still somewhat on edge and they were sitting there for quite a while. I took the opportunity to crawl out. And once I got out of the train yard, I saw them moving back down the train tracks. The way we first originally saw them coming. They were clearly sweeping the tracks before the train came. And then five minutes after them driving off, the train I could hear was steaming towards the tunnel. And I knew what I had to do. But by doing this, I was abandoning Dazrun and Monty. But we might not get this easy opportunity again. And with Dazrun and Monty down at that side of the map, maybe... They might think that I'm with them too, if they do get spotted. So here goes nothing. I had made it onto the train and I was hanging from the back. Hopefully, Monty and Taz might see a rogue me on the train going past. At least they'll know where I'm at. But this train was going fast. And at this point, I was scared that when it comes to jumping off this thing, is it gonna kill me because of the speed?
but all this was going through my head. And then I noticed the Umbrella Corp tower approaching. So I had to sneak inside, otherwise I'd be detected. And as I went inside, there was an SCP member inside the train carts making his way down. So prematurely, I had to get back on the outside of the train and hope the players in the guard tower didn't see me. But as I was looking at them, as we went into the tunnel, I could see that they were looking the opposite way. We had avoided detection and I could tell where the train was going. It was heading to the first SCP base that we found where the helicopter was patrolling. It was transporting or collecting supplies. And with all the excitement, I realized I never looted the train. I never checked the cargo train or to see if it had any loot inside. That way I could have got supplies without even doing any work. But now I had ended up here, back up in the mountain range on the outskirts of one of SCP's maybe biggest base. Maybe it's their main base. Before the train got to the base, I jumped out over a dam and used the dam as cover. And this is when an admin came into my Discord channel and explained some rules about this base and how you and your team can potentially take it down if you want to. And this is what the admin told me. This is an SCP barracks. They transport all the weapons and supplies that they make from their factory to this base right here. That's why it's so heavily guarded. The admin told me there are three main sniper towers with a player inside each one of those. There are also guards on the ground, but there's a twist. When the train comes into the station to offload the loot, the guards are allowed out of their guard hut. There, they can also patrol the base, but also importantly, move the supplies from the cargo train to the appropriate storage rooms. But when the train is gone, those guards must go back inside their room and wait for the train to come again. Or, unless they hear the alarm system go off in the base. If that alarm system goes off, they are allowed to come out and defend the base. Each sniper tower has an alarm system inside it. If a sniper sees you, they'll set the alarm off and bring all guards out. And finally, if the helicopter sees you, they must land the helicopter and trigger the alarm. But the helicopter might shoot you first before doing that. Slowly, creeping my way to the fence, avoiding detection from the helicopter. I'd found an area of fencing where I could easily jump across. With the train gone, I knew the guards were back in their hut and it was only the helicopter and the three sniper towers I had to worry about. The first tower was right in front of me and I was trying to figure out how I can get to it without being spotted. And at the moment, it wasn't really the snipers I was too worried about. It was the helicopter. It was very close to the base and I could never tell when it was about to swing back around. I moved across to the shed and along here, there were a strip of sheds that I thought might be storing valuable cargo. And I really wanted to open these doors, but these doors would be so loud and it would basically be screaming to the snipers, hey, look at me. I needed to remember the mission. Complete this job, take out the snipers and we maybe have 10 minutes to loot as much as we can. Sneaking my way slowly down the lane of sheds, hiding against the one strip of wall I had to hide myself from the helicopter. I could see the snipers doing their rounds, but it seemed that they were mostly occupied with looking outside the walls than inside the walls. And that's a good thing for me. I was attempting to first sneak down to the tower at the bottom. It was the closest one to me. And already in my head, I knew how I was gonna kill them undetected. If I shot my gun, it'd make too much noise and it would be completely obvious. I was gonna have to use my ax. Now for any of you who don't know, these players, they can only use in-game communication. So if they die, they can alert anyone else. They're not using Discord. I'm under the first tower. It's time to sneak up. I had luckily smoothly taking out the first sniper and I had a bit of an idea and that was to put the sniper's armor on that I just killed. Now I look like my enemies and from the distance I would look like just them. This even worked. I even stood in the tower confidently and the other sniper looked straight at me. He didn't know any difference. But now I was off that tower and I was making my way to him. 
But as I got up to the top of the stairs, I could see the other tower, the final, the third tower. And I had to stay hidden now, because they knew the train wasn't here, so no SCP members should be walking around the base. But I had now managed to make my way to the second tower, and I was underneath. I was doing really well on time, and I now had the final tower to go to, and I had to go to this person as quick as I could and try to take him out, because he might notice that the two other guard towers are completely empty. If he saw that, he would set the alarm off, and this would make my mission a hundred times harder. But the helicopter was slowing me down. It even came over at one point, and the lights were right on me. Looking from this, I can see the helicopter is rather useless. It just looks cool, I suppose. Threatening. But after taking out two sniper posts, I was feeling confident with this last one. and I climbed up knowing exactly what I need to do. And here we go over to some live comms that I recorded and I'm not gonna sound as confident as I do now. Oh my God. Yes! Okay, okay, okay. I need that sniper. That's all the guard towers I think, unless there's someone in there. I don't know if there's someone in there or not. Helicopter's gonna see me. Helicopter's definitely gonna notice in a second that people are gone, but the helicopter has to land to set off the klaxon so I can just kill the person when if he does spot me. Oh yeah, he's got ammo for days. My inventory is so full, it's ridiculous. My only problem is I don't know if I've destroyed all the guard tires. I can see a name there. Is it a prisoner or is it... Is that the guardhouse that was mentioned? I think that might be the guardhouse. Oh, my heart is absolutely pounding. This is probably one of the coolest things I have ever done. This is so cool. Now, where's the loot at? If that's the guardhouse, that means that the klaxon hasn't been set off. We're all good. But is it the last klaxon? Is that the last sniper tower? Like, I didn't see anyone in there. Oh, hello. Oh. I'm afraid to walk around normal. Like, the helicopter won't be able to see my name, so that's fine. But if I walk around normal, the helicopter knows that the, the helicopter, the train isn't here, so surely players shouldn't be walking around like normal. Oh, okay, that is definitely the guardhouse. Okay, so if the klaxon gets turned on, they have to come out. That guy's just standing there. They can come out. So I think we might actually be good. Even though it took us like 10 hours to get every single klaxon, we need to now try and hurry if we can. I'm going to literally run for this if I do not see anyone. There's definitely no one up there. That's like an abandoned tower. Okay, this is the factory. Is there anything here? Oh my god. Uh, right. Uh, I'm sure this was meant to be designed to be raided by a lot of people. And instead, we are here like a stealthy freaking ninja. Oh my god, there's so many grenades. Oh my god. Apparently there's something that I can use to shoot them down. An M202. I don't know where it is though. Okay, there's nothing in here. At least the building is giving me some cover from the helicopter. Okay, right, hang on. We need to sort out my inventory. We need to be really quick. This this helicopter's gonna come. This train's gonna come back soon and everyone's gonna get out. Uh right. Uh let's stick. Okay, right, let's just get rid of that. Rem things we got three of. Do we need? They've got ammo in them. Sniper rifles are too rare to get rid of. Uh, M3. Oh my god. Okay, a Barrett 50 cal. That's definitely something I am going to take for sure. Holy smokes. Anything else? M16s. Yeah, there's loads of good stuff here, but like, I can't take it. I'll take more Barretts, though. Oh. What's that? What else? What else? Uh. 
ammo. There's so much stuff. Oh. That can be used to shoot down a helicopter. It's not meant to, though, so I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna do it. I'm not... Without a minute to spare, I aimed the M202 up into the sky. Aimed it straight towards the helicopter and took my shot. At first, I thought I didn't do anything. And then it became pretty obvious I'd done something. Because the helicopter is spinning out of control. And now, he was running towards the base. I knew what he was doing. He was attempting to run to the alarm system to set it off so all the guards can come out. But I was lying down in the grass, and I was patiently waiting. Oh, okay. I missed every single sniper shot. And I'm not gonna lie, I got it, it got very I got very nervous there. Right? He, he at least he didn't crash inside the compound. That way he wouldn't been close to setting up the klaxon. Now what have we got gotten here? Because this train's gonna be back soon. This is taking a lot longer than I thought. Okay, we've got armor. Okay, we're raining this as a solo person. There, I'm just trying to look for what's important. And right now, armor is nothing important. Is that train coming back? No. What's in here? What's in here? Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got an idea, I've got an idea. But this plan wasn't as smart as I thought. The grenade didn't kill all of them, and I was now going to have to fight them. The guards nearly got me low, nearly killing me. And this was proving incredibly tricky, and I regretted my decision straight away. I decided to back off from the guardhouse. They were all together, and they were moving around as a team. I came back in from another angle, and I attempted to use my rocket launcher, but that was unsuccessful and I wasted all my ammo, killing none of them. It was now time to use plan B. Go and hide for a few minutes, and then come back out, and hopefully, they'll be separated all around the base where hopefully I can take them out one by one. And that moment came. There were three SCP members remaining. One was by themselves, which I swiftly took out.
and there were two others that weren't leaving each other's side. They were playing together, and rightfully so. It was the right tactic for them to do. So I came up with another idea. Utilize the snipers that I had gotten from the three sniper towers. Get up on one of those towers and take them down. They were now down, but this whole big-headed decision of attempting to try take out the guards even though I didn't need to had now backfired completely. I had less than five minutes to finish looting. Inside one of the rooms, I'd got a Barrett 50 cal. That's probably one of the most useful things I'd gotten from this. But inside one of the sheds, it was completely dedicated to explosives. Here, I had gotten a detonator, and I'd managed to nab myself 64 explosive charges. But inside the shed, there were charges already placed down. So I linked my detonator with the charges. That way, when I leave here, this place can go boom. But the car was coming back down the tracks, and sadly, I couldn't loot anymore, even though I wanted to. And it was following the same routine it had been following for the whole session. It parked outside, waiting for the train to head into the base. And little did they know while they're waiting, the base inside is completely empty of all their team. And this is when I got a slight bit of an idea and I played mind games with the enemies. Yo, I'm part of you guys. I died! Finally! I'm SCP! Oh god, that was close. I put on SCP armor and I walked straight out. Pretending to be dead and saying I'm part of SCP was a pretty good idea in my eyes there. I had now gotten myself a Jeep and this was probably one of the coolest things I have done so far. Before driving off, I waited for the train to head into the base. The SCP members inside the train weren't even aware that an enemy was sitting in the car because I was wearing their armor. They wouldn't even know anyway. Yo. Call yourself out. Who SCP, is it? it's me. I'm dead. SCP is taking over this area, though. Get out of here or I'll open fire. Are you listening to me? One. Are you listening? Two. Okay, it seems like Umbrella Corp weren't listening to me. These players sadly didn't believe me. But I just realized I now had a car that was capable of towing the generator that I'd found in the train yard. We could get the power on and see what was inside that room. But first, I went back to the spot where I'd left Monty and Dazrun, and they were nowhere to be found. So I began heading to the train yard by myself. I wanted to keep the momentum up and get the power on at the building. I quickly collected the generator inside the train yard, and we started heading down the coast. I got near the building with the vault and parked the generator nearby. And 
turned on the power. Then the door opened and straight away I could see that it was a key and it all made sense now. The truck wasn't owned by anyone. It was a reward for getting the power on. But inside there was also more stuff. Other weapons, some more armor. I took my time organizing my inventory, throwing out weapons that I had no ammo for. I was trying to stay fresh because if I enter a gunfight, I'm going to need to be organized and prepared. But this truck and the trailer nearby and stuff that I'd gotten from the SCP base that I just raided had given me an idea. One that I thought would surely work. So I got the truck and attached the trailer. I drove it into town. Got out and left it. I stayed in the town for a while trying to keep an eye on the truck, but an Umbrella Corp member, they caught me and one of them was chasing me down. Surprisingly, he wasn't shooting at me. He wanted to capture me, so I quickly told him how I feel about that. And as I kept moving, I then got a look down the road and I could see there were a ton of Umbrella Corp members around the truck that I'd left. And in my head, everything was going to plan. I had put on some Umbrella Corp armor that I would just gotten because I knew I was going to be going past the air defense base. And if I walk past an Umbrella Corp armor, maybe they'll just think it's one of the Umbrella Corp members going back to the base. And that worked like a charm. I was allowed to run straight through the field. They had captured it and taken it because that's what Umbrella Corp do. They take things and capture things. That has been their goal since day one. And here I am, outside their base, looking inside. I can even see the commander. Why had I just given them a truck? Well, I'm about to show you just why I've done this. You remember those explosives that I got? Those 64 explosive charges? Yeah, Umbrella Corp are about to eat those.
the Umbrella Corp commander and all the Umbrella Corp players around went flying into the sky and they were obliterated. I used this opportunity and the mess that this was about to create to bring Umbrella Corp down for good. Instead of going straight into a base that was obviously weakened, I headed to the air defense base where I'm hoping this commotion will leave it weaker and defenseless. And when I got there, I could see no one around. It had clearly been abandoned because something more important was happening. And I wonder what that was. I slowly cleared the base, making sure that there was no dirty camper hiding inside the base, ready to kill me. But the base was clear. No one was here. I was right. And now all I had to do was destroy the power. I tossed a grenade down, wiping the power out. The air defense system was down, Umbrella Corp's infrastructure down, no electricity. And Umbrella Corp knew with the power out, something must have happened to their energy base that I was at. And here they were, headless and charging right towards me. I was now using their base as a tactical position to take out my enemies. With them all running towards me, I was waiting for him to get closer, to get them more clearly in my sights. And hopefully, I'm gonna be able to snipe them off one by one. They were charging right towards me. I took my shots, missing the first one. But being successful on the second, taking out an enemy. After this first kill, the enemies decided that they wanted to push back. I believe in their head, they thought that there were more people than just me. I'm playing with their heads right now. With them all running back to base, I continued. And I went chasing them. And when I got back to the main Umbrella Corp base, which was looking really good, might I say. Like, look at the decor that they went for. Oh, that big hole in the middle? Love it. But I could see that they were clearly hiding out in their main building. There wasn't that many of them left. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them have abandoned ship and went to SCP already. The other admin team. But one of them went up to the top of the building. And again, I took that player out in a heartbeat. After that, I was confident enough that I could head down and take them all out in a good fashion gunfight. Oh, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I've literally got an idea. Okay. Listen up. Come down. Completely unarmed. And you guys will live. I have great plans for you. How does that sound? Look, man, we're the only ones left, okay? How many how many are there? Two. Perfect. Come down. No armor. No weapons. No funny business. And one of you might just live. Alright, stay right there. Dropping my weapons. Armor's gone. Okay. If I see a weapon pulled or anything, it's over for both of you. You hear me? Both over to the ledge. On the edge. Of the crater. Okay. Silent, so. So, is only you two left? Yes. Telling me the truth? Yes. We have the power station until the guns are offline. Yeah. Get her. All gone. Now everyone's dead, yeah? Good. 
You guys friends? Yeah. yeah. You guys good friends? Uh, a little bit, yeah. This was the end for Umbrella, and I had the perfect sweet moment on what I could do to these two players, and it'll be right up their alley. Not really, no. Alright, well then I can't do what I wanted to do. It's a shame Herp or something like that isn't still alive. Um, alright. Whoever ever wants to survive? I... Choose. I, I... Last person standing can, 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 can live. JT, I am so sorry. Well, well done. Nope. Blood and revenge had been taken. And for me, that was the end of Umbrella Corp. And I had gotten justice for the countless players they had murdered. And for most importantly, the knight in red. His death wasn't wasted. With now the threat of Umbrella Corp neutralized, I found myself lost, wandering down a road and heading in the direction of the island I'd never been to. This was new territory now. I have to say as well, I got shot at while on this road, and looking back on replay, I could see it was a survivor up in the mountains. You gotta be careful who you trust. Zombies and the admin teams aren't the only threats. But in the forest taking refuge, Hiding from the sniper in the mountains, I could hear a car, an engine. It was getting my attention and I was subconsciously moving towards it. And that's when I came out of the forest and I realized it was at the power station. It wasn't a car, it was a boat. It was patrolling the power station. This is what SCP want to keep safe. They don't want anybody going inside here. The SCP members seemed like they were containing the zombie outbreak, making their little island much easier to survive in. So I think if you guys don't know this by now, this factory right here, this nuclear power plant, this is where the zombie apocalypse started. This is ground zero and this is where rumored SCP created the apocalypse for their gain. They want this world. They thrive on the chaos. Knowing there was no way I was going to get into that factory right now, there was just too many undead. I decided to head back and keep venturing into this new territory. And that's when I came across a guard tower. It was guarding rails that were entering a tunnel. This is probably where the train's been going. This is probably the entrance to the factory. And obviously since exploding the SCP barrack space, I haven't heard that train or seen the train. I think we successfully disabled it. I snuck under the guard tower. If anything, it felt embrained into my head now. But I realized taking this sniper out wouldn't be a good thing because eventually they'll find the body and someone will alert them and they'll know that I'm here or someone's here at least. So then underneath the guard tower, I quietly slipped away and continued moving forward into the forest. My decision on not taking out the guard was a very lucky escape because two minutes after entering the forest, I heard gunfire. It was a sniper in the tower shooting, from what I see on the replay mod, at a group of survivors down the tracks. And then followed by that, a group of SCP players heading down the tracks, attempting to go hunt down those said survivors. These SCP players are very quick to respond. I need to be careful. But as I kept going through the forest, I could see I was definitely right. This was the SCP factory, so this is where the train came from. This is where all the supplies were made, and then the train would bring the supplies to the base that we raided. But then to my left, I could see a tower block. There was another city on the edge of the forest, and I could see that there were survivors on top of the big tower. Smart choice if you ask me. Makes it very difficult for your enemies to get you, or anyone who wants to do you harm. Not expecting to be thrown into a combat situation, and being right in front of the factory, I decided to hide, just for a while while I discover what I should do next. Right now I have no plan and I'm completely aimless. Thankfully, hiding in this little burrow, I was very lucky. That patrol group that we saw earlier, 
Yeah, they went passing right over me. That is a very, very lucky escape. If I was still sneaking around the forest, I would have been dead. After getting my head together, I decided what would be best would be to explore who owns or who's up on the tower and head into this new city and see what it has to offer. So once I thought the coast was clear, I emerged from my hole and I began making my way into the town very, very slowly. I made my way into an apartment building, staying crouched at all times as to not to be detected. Looking through this town, I could see it was very interesting. Train tracks went through the town, so the train clearly went through here a lot. And while looking into the town, I didn't notice that a horde of survivors had crept up on me. They were walking down the road, so many, but they didn't notice me and they walked right past. It looked like they're heading towards the tower. As I snuck down to the front door of the apartment building, I was attempting to get across the road, get more deeper into the city, feel like I can hide more. If they're gonna search anywhere, SCP or these survivors, I don't know if they can be trusted yet. The outskirts is the first place all enemies are gonna check. While attempting to sneak across the road, I could see the survivors all huddled in the middle of the road. These guys clearly owned the town. And by the way they were huddled, it seemed like they were preparing for something. An attack on the factory maybe? Anyway, I successfully snuck across the road. No one saw me. I was climbing up a building and that's when I suddenly saw Dazrun. He was still alive. Yo, Daz, 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 Daz. <laughs> Back in here. Have you got something important to me? Okay, toss me that out. Apparently that's what they call in the admins. M Monty knew all about it, but apparently he's not here, so... <gasps> Stay quiet. I'm just sussing out what's going on. Stick close to me, and hopefully we'll be all good. And we won't split up. It's good to have you back, though. I did miss you. I want to... I want to try to see if we can get this roof. Shooting had broke out in the town. And by the gunfire, I could tell exactly who that was. It was SCP using their energy weapons. Those survivors on the road and SCP, they were in an immense firefight. And rounds were being let loose everywhere. The noise of it lit up the town, while me and Dazarun were just quietly being nosy, attempting to see if we can get a better look and suss out what exactly is going on. I could see that the big tower in the city, the tallest tower here, was the main focal point, and I believe there was quite a few players up there at the time. Eventually, we were getting really close to the tower, and the gunfire was getting louder and louder. Here, we had a brilliant vantage point over SCP, but Daz and I were contemplating, should we help and get involved? Because this could end badly for us if we do. We have to make sure whatever we do, everything is calculated and our survival comes first. I thought, well, if this group of survivors here is hostile to us, if we at least engage in the SCP members, they will know that we tried to help them. So there's a slight chance we might get a common ally here, at least. And we know for sure SCP, <laughs> they're not gonna help us. They've shot at us multiple times and I've also robbed them one of their main bases. Hmm, not good. Uh, I don't know. I'm confused about what's going on. I can't. That's what I'm trying to suss out. I know, obviously, it's it's soccer, but I don't know what their team are. Like, what's their lore? What have they been given to enhance whatever this is? Do you get what I mean? So, I don't know if they're, like, evil, good, bad, survivors. Like, is it another SCP kind of team? Oh, I can see them. I've literally got SCP. So I took a few pot shots at the SCP members below and I must have got one of them really low because the others around them seemed to have panicked and they ran inside the building. And eventually, after doing my best to see if I can take out some SCP members, I was kind of failing. But these SCP members, they were climbing. They were scaling the tallest building on the map and they were dominating it. And it seemed like there were a bunch of survivors up there and they were still managing to get up. The survivors up above were clearly being overrun, and we had noticed that they were doing their best to defend, and they had even taken a few shots at us, but they probably thought we were SCP, so I won't take any offense to that yet. But they needed help, otherwise they were about to be all dead. And Daz and I could probably use an ally, especially now we've gotten past breaking down Umbrella Corp. We might actually be able to finish this game mode and whatever the admins have created for us. And to find out the new objective, we need to call in the admins. But this comes with a very, very special novelty. A one-time use. You see, there's an admin team on our side called the BMC. 
that's what they go by the name of. They've been helping us out for two series now. And by calling in its flare, it's a one-time use. They will come in to help. And they're a very strong team. And this admin team, they're at war with, you guessed it, SCP. SCP and BMC have big history. They're rivals. BMC wanted to stop them creating the zombie apocalypse. But after a fierce war, they were defeated. And BMC's numbers are now low. That's why they need us survivors to help them out. But talking about help, we can't waste any more time. The survivors up above are getting overrun and we need to call in help because this is not a situation we can fix. And obviously we're able to call in these admins because now the air defense system is down. Remember we destroyed the power, meaning the helicopter is safe to land. We wasted no time in instructing the admins on what we want them to do. We told them we want them to save those survivors in the tower. And luckily, they had brought the three elite admins to help us out. The helicopter quickly took off and began making its way to the tower. The gunfight was so loud once we got close. But the BMC elite members jumped out and they began doing the job that was asked. And while all this was going on, the helicopter was going around the building, doing loops, keeping us safe. But some of the SCP members had focused their attention on the helicopter and it was under heavy fire. And with this, the engine stopped and we began to lose control. But thankfully, it crashed into the building without blowing up, saving all of our lives. But the BMC members above had done their job. And with the survivors' helps up above, they had cleared all the SCP. The attack was completely neutralized. And now the BMC members, I could see the elite members, they were beginning to also panic because they'd realized their vehicle to get out of here was shot down. And we were told another vehicle was on the way, a helicopter. But they told us their aircraft carrier is really far out of the map right now. That's for their safety because SCP have a game mode of themselves to search for it. So it's going to take a while to come. And when things are more calm, the BMC players told us our next objective and what we need to do. And that objective was really simple. Take down the factory and capture it. They were referring to the factory nearby this town. The one I had been really close to, the one that's so heavily guarded. If we manage to achieve this, we'll get bonus supplies and we'll get reinforcements. Then we can push onwards and attempt to attack SCP's main base. And if we attack SCP's main base and take them out, that would result in us winning the game mode of taking out the enemy admin faction. When the helicopter finally came, another flare was handed out to us. This was for reinforcements, but it could only be used once we taken the factory. The helicopter flew away, but now I had a clear goal in my head and what I needed to do. Before I could take out the factory, I needed to secure some allies. I knew then if we do actually end up taking the factory, then that means that we'll be going to war completely and we'll be attempting to take out SCP from the game. So I ordered Dazrune to go back to the other city and get Monty. We're gonna need people we can trust completely and ask him to bring the survivors that he's keeping safe there. See if they want to fight. When he left, I started heading into the building that BMC had cleared. I knew that the survivors up above would know that we tried to help them, but I was still very, very wary. And I suppose the PTSD of last season of getting captured and then basically taken out of the game, I just didn't want that happening again. I had learned my lesson. So I quietly snuck into the building and began making my way up the stairs. From just being in the building for five minutes, I could see that this clearly was a base. It was their home. And this looked like a massive survivor settlement. And I was only slightly up the stairs when I noticed there were players coming down. My goal was get to the tippy top. That way, I'll be able to secure the top of the building and then hopefully hold all the power. But getting into the settlement wasn't easy. I had to sneak past countless guards going up and down the stairs, all while attempting to stay crouched and not get my name seen. I got to the top of the building and it was completely empty. No one was up here. Void. Freeze. Armor off. Please, now. 
Toss it out. Over there. Oh, I don't want it. Toss it out over that way. Guns out, please. Toss. Come up here. Follow. Follow me up. I don't want to kill you. I don't want to do anything. Just stay quiet. I'm only doing this as a safety policy. I don't know your team. Right, Ryan? Hi, oh. How are you doing? I mean, yeah, we're safe, but SCP's back already. Well, I take offense to that, but I mean, <laughs> I've been saving survivors so far. We're good because we've been fighting the SCP. Eventually, I told Soccer and all of them what I'd been told by the BMC and our goal. Now, Soccer's team was interesting. Soccer was technically, he's been brought back to life. He's played in an old series before, but he was planted here to start a colony by the admins. And I think he did his job successfully. He's taken people in, he's kept people safe. And they've made a very good base here. They just need to be ready to defend it next time when SCP come. But I told them the plan that we need to take out the factory and capture it for ourselves. And that way we can keep progressing through it and get to the end of whatever this game mode is. And then say we fully survived this experience. Clear that SCP have a base here. They're obviously clearly being told to wipe you guys out and they nearly yeah. did. Like uh, cause Jack and all them got across the map, they got like a flare that basically a helicopter come in and it would help them out. It's a one time use. We use that on you guys. So those admins so that came and cleared out the No, not in debt. I'm just saying that's what yeah. that was. That can't That's happen. what that was? The minigun guys and yeah. all that? The that helicopter? was a one time use, so we can't use it again. Oh. Yeah, kind of annoying. It's unfortunate. Um, but I'm assuming that they have a base, like that's their base over there. SCP, that, that, yeah, that's their spawn Yeah, they have a base area. in that direction. So we need to try and probably... So if anything, we got to go take them out. Yeah, we just have to think smartly about it because they have so many members, it's unreal. And while up in the tower looking into the factory, trying to think of a plan, Soccer and everyone told me that I didn't see that they believe there's a prison camp nearby the factory. These must be the prisoners that were on the island that we left behind. Obviously, SCP had went and recaptured them and moved them to a new prison. But I told Soccer about the 50 cal sniper rifle that I have, but we have a dilemma. I have no scope for it. But one of Soccer's members had a scope on their weapon that was compatible with the Barrett 50 cal. This is a big breakthrough because this sniper rifle, yes, I have very limited ammo, but this sniper is absolutely deadly. With realizing I also had a bipod, this meant we were set up for success. And I had a plan that could take down the whole entire base without us potentially not even being able to step foot in it. But for this to work, there needed to be a ground attack that would essentially be a smoke screen. This was my plan. I planned for soccer to take a bunch of survivors to the front gate and simply give SCP the illusion that they are the ones attacking the base and to continuously lay down gunfire while myself would be up in the building. The tower we were just at, but the real attack would be coming from me on the tower using the sniper rifle, which is silenced by the way. You see, the attack needs to take place on the ground so that when they start dying, they realize and they think that they're dying just due to normal gunfire and not a sniper in the tower. That way, they'll be hiding from the enemies attacking at the front gate and not from the player on top of the tower. But Soccer didn't listen to my plan and he led his team into a huge ambush. And this is how I found out. Did you guys get ambushed? Yes. Yeah. Oh, lads. Is this all who survived? This is it? This is the whole team? Yeah. And the team were sadly ambushed before they could even execute the mission. Soccer and 90% of the group were taken out completely. When some players came back from the group who survived, this is what I was told. I knew now this base, this group was weak. And SCP knew that they had clearly taken out half of this settlement, if not more. It was only a matter of time before they launch a full on attack here. And we're just going to end up just like soccer and the rest, ambushed and killed. The patrol group of SCP, the players who literally run around the map and they're not responsible for protecting the factory. They were now coming into the town and this group of players, they needed to be dealt with.
I stayed in the tower and I attempted to try be their eyes and to lay as much covering fire as possible. The reason why I couldn't go down is because I had this rare Barrett 50 cal weapon on me that could be the key to taking down this base. The patrol group were coming out of the factory and they were heading back into the town. The group of survivors who went down to attempt to take them out, they were located in this building here and they're ready to ambush. And I was attempting to get them distracted on me by shooting them a few times. There is no way that we can fight all of them. Oh. Who Leave shot? Out. Yo, power, me, power, me, me, me. crouch, bro. Yep, it's me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm making them focus on me a little bit. I shot one of them. He's crouching behind a tree. Now, now, now might be your chance. Now might be your chance. Okay. Fire. Between the buildings. Yeah, there you Let's go. Let's shoot them from top. Go, 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 go. Right, they've pushed into some of the buildings. Right, one's in the one's on the right hand side building. You see another one going. Yeah, let, let, let's try, let's try. We have They're to... on the building, opposite building, no, no, no. opposite building, on the roof, coming for opposite you, building? lying down. Okay, 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 lay down. Shot one. He dead? No. Boy, get Don't out of my do anything hand. risky. Oh, They're somebody died. Off. Two people died on my side. Oh, yeah, I got shot through a wall. Alright, they're coming across, come across. Come across in your building. No one! Oh. Wait, is there only two of us? Yeah. Right, you guys should probably try to get back to base if you can. The ambush from the players on the building was unsuccessful. They didn't even get one clean kill. And now those SCP members knew exactly where those survivors were. Kills were being exchanged, but that's not a good thing because there were more SCP in this fight than survivors. And now only two survivors were remaining. They needed to get out and get back to the tower fast. I was fed up and I wasn't gonna die without at least shooting my gun. I need Moose. I need them two to go to the prison like now. The prison. Free the prisoners. Damn it, missed it. Gum. Got one. Right, there's two. All right, moose, moose. There's two people going. There's two enemies at least at the prison. They've got three tangos pushing forward to them. Right in front of them. Okay, I see one lying down. Got one. With the assault going well and the two snipers taken out from the tower near the prison, I ordered two survivors to head towards the prison and enter the tower and lock it down. The Barrett 50 Cal had done damage to them and had taken them by surprise. They clearly didn't know where these shots were coming from. And I believe pushing the guys into the tower at the end was a good idea because they thought they were the ones attacking. So every SCP member was hiding from them when they should have been hiding from me. Scanning around, I could see no one else in my sights. The rest must have been hiding and began entering at the factory side while the two other players in the sniper tower 
keep the prison secure. There was no signs of life in the factory, but then we could see a big door. This clearly led to the prison. And when we got close to the prison, we could hear the alarm SCP going SCP guy, come out. We got you. Don't kill him. Come out. You can live. I promise that. All right, Moose, do me a favor. Open that door, yes. run back really quick. Dead? No, oh, no. Oh, no, he's not dead. <laughs> Do you need backup? Can I can I go in or? Uh, he tower? might gun you down. Should I shoot? Should I shoot? I'm coming down. I'm, I'm coming down. Oh, where are you? Good stuff. Nice job, Will. Nice, nice. When the prisoners saw us, they were delighted that we'd came from. To my surprise, we had managed to take down the factory. All thanks to the Barrett 50 Cal and these brave two members right here, IGM Wu and Paris Den, who in their eyes was heading into a death sentence, but they did it anyway. So I suppose they're the true heroes. They're the true weapon and they created the perfect smoke screen. This factory was now ours. And what that symbolized was the potential end of the SCP because now we can attempt to start making our way to their main base to end it all. Hey jump on the are. vines and throw Welcome to the apocalypse. <laughs> right. Hello. Right, we'll wait here and then we'll go into the factory because I think we've got a surprise apparently. So we're going to figure out what that surprise actually is. <laughs> okay. Wait a goddamn minute. The portable close yeah, door. Okay, the there we go. Right, so is that everyone here? Yep. We'll have to try and get people gear because we can't wait too long because there's other people and other teams waiting. So crashes are going to be yeah, I know. I don't really know what it does. It's not really friendly. You can keep an eye on it if you want to turn it on. Right. Um. So there is gear here apparently. So we're gonna find that out. We're gonna see. Um. Apparently we go gear. upstairs. There's there's these weapons here, but I think there's something special upstairs apparently. So let's go. Luckily, with this being a factory, we we're now able to supply every single prisoner with at least a weapon. Sadly, this factory is currently producing just weapons alone. So armor was not a thing. And clearly, the SCP base I raided a good few days ago now was meant to be raided by a lot of players. But I decided to do that solo because there was tons of armor inside there. But we managed to get a gun in every player's hand. And then the players that have been surviving for a while all dug into their backpacks and tossed out as much gear as they could get. The push for SCP's main base was in sight, and now all we had to do was push just slightly a little bit more to get in position to get ready to attack the main base. Dazrun and Monty had made it back. We'd been in the factory for quite a while, making sure every player was at least ready to fight. Daz only sadly brought Monty back, as the other players that he was keeping safe didn't want to fight. And that's their choice. And I completely understand that. But before we go, we also had one last thing to do. We had secured the factory, that means we can use the flare and we can get a slight boost in numbers by now calling in the BMC. We are gonna help this admin team and reinstate them and their power. Hopefully triggering the end of this game mode and us the survivors actually winning and officially surviving the 100 days. It's time for the flare to be released. With our numbers now bolstered, it was time to start heading to the farmhouse. We had only been given a picture of it by the Abbans, and as we got closer, there was a big field and a valley in between. This was prime ambush 
territory. I ordered the BMC admins to go on the left-hand side of the farm, while the survivors attempt to crawl up the right-hand side. We we're using the admins to our advantage, knowing that they're not really real players, but just here to help out. They pushed up far, while I ordered some of the players to go up on the mountainside nearby and scout out. But as I got my Barrett 50 cal out, which was going very low in ammo, might I say, I could see an SCP player inside the house. The player looked up at the people on the mountainside, and I took my shot quick, taking that player out of the game. But then this is when things got really weird. After taking that player out, we were looking at the house for a long time, and there were no signs of life. That's when I ordered some of the BMC members just to head towards the house, because something didn't seem right. There was something going on, and I was nervous. The players were nervous. Over the next 15 minutes, we slowly pushed towards the base. The BMC members inside were indicating that it was completely safe. No one was here. They were after searching the whole entire building. Not a single soul was here. Something just didn't seem right. But eventually, we got inside the building. And I ordered the players to also do a sweep of the entire build. And eventually, everybody came back with nothing. No one was here. Nothing looked suspicious. It was clear. But I was just paranoid that maybe there's a bomb underneath and they're about to blow up this building. But that never came. And that's when the BMC members told us that the town that SCP's main base is in is in sight. And there we could see all the SCP members ready, ready to fight. The attack was going to begin shortly. But then we were informed that myself and Monty are going to be taken back to the BMC's main base, their aircraft carrier, which has been keeping them alive. Shortly after that, a helicopter came to collect us and we were extracted from the site. When flying over the city, near the factory, the aircraft hangar they were talking about came into sight. It had been moved closer for the assault that's about to happen. And when coming into land, the elite BMC members were guarding the BMC leader. And this guy was an absolute mastermind. He went on to inform us that myself and Monty are going to be going into the back lines. We're going to be sneaking into the main base from the back side. While they keep SCP busy and occupied at the front. But there's a twist. Inside SCP's main base is a game mode. Which I will explain shortly if we manage to get there. But to explain it simply and what we were asked to achieve is Monty and I are gonna be responsible for bringing down SCP's main electricity grid, resulting in SCP's force field breaking, making the main base vulnerable to a tactical strike. We were given some new shiny weapons to help with the infiltration. And then we were quickly ushered onto a plane in the night. We were now deep in enemy territory and the plane was flying very low to avoid radar detection. And then all of a sudden we were ordered to jump. And now this is when me and Monty knew there was no going back. In my head, I was just wishing that we'd have Dazrun here. The three of us working together as we should. In the jungle, we were ordered to hide and wait because the timing is going to have to be perfect. Finally, it was time to now move close to the base. You see, we had to wait 
for the force field to go down. And with the attack starting, the force field went down for an extended period of time as they were letting players out of the main base to bolster the defenses in the town. That window of opportunity allowed us to sneak inside to the base. We had key cards to get inside here. Because we've killed so many SCP players now, We've been collecting key cards since the prison when we first started. One of these key cards, a level two, led us into the base. And there, we went guns blazing as quick as we possibly could. We were told in the game mode the guards at the base were only allowed to use in-game communication. So they couldn't alert the forces inside the town close by. Straight away, once we entered the facility, SCP were right in front of us. We had no choice but to open fire. And this meant we couldn't go silent. We had to go loud and we had to take out all the guards and hope that they don't go running to the front lines to alert the army to come back to the main base. We had just managed to kill one of them, but there's two more around. And I'm not sure where they just disappeared to. And in our heads, Monty and I thought, they're definitely going to the front lines. We have to move fast. We need to find a control room where the game mode can take place. Desperately looking for the control room, but still taking it slow in case these SCP guards are still here waiting for us to come around a corner. We had managed to make it to the top of the facility and we we're following the power lines because we assumed that went straight to the main control room. That's when we believed that we saw the main room. We'd have to zip line across to it, but we were taking it slow. I really didn't want to die and my hands were shaking. We were using the best tactics we could to protect ourselves, clearing room by room. We cleared one room, then Monty stayed to provide covering fire when needed. I headed to the next room, the final room to sweep, and it was clear. We could safely grapple across. I went first. No. Uh. Uh. Okay, Monty, you just right click it, then followed by Monty. Keep pressing W, don't press anything else. The two guards clearly left the base and we're now going to alert the players on the front line who are fighting. So we had to move quick and we didn't have a lot of time to decide. But here's the game mode. A player must sit inside this chair for 10 minutes. Once the player decides to sit in this chair and hack the system, they will be glued to the chair for 10 minutes and they cannot move. If they manage to knock three minutes off the clock, then the power will go down. But if they wanna survive, They'll have to stay on it for seven more minutes to even get off the chair in the first place. So that's up to their teammate to defend and protect them. But this would have been a lot easier if the smoke screens on the front line worked and we weren't detected when we entered the base. Monty, without hesitation, jumped onto the seat and began the hacking process. And after a minute of the timer going down, the base was overrun with SCP. And it was time to try and defend my friend for 10 minutes. The pressure that these SCP players put me under was absolutely immense and they had done something so smart. They had left SCP members also in the town to attack the survivors and the BMC members who were attacking there. So they couldn't come to our aid. I had to defend Monty all by myself. I managed to take out a few, but they were getting closer and closer to the control room. All that stood between us was a door, which they had the key card to be able to get inside. They finally began flooding through the door. Let's see if I could feed one through. But I'd need to kill a lot more than a few to be able to survive. There was still a lot of time left on the timer. And I was attempting to utilize everything in my inventory. A few players came up and I tossed out a grenade. I was even then tactically and slowly throwing out flashbangs to try and keep the enemies blind. With the grenades and flashbangs being used, it was keeping them slightly at bay, but it wasn't fixing the problem. None of them were dying, and there was too many of them on the stairs. I knew this. Flashbang out.
Eventually, the flashbangs, the grenades, they all ran out and they knew I was out because the constant wave of flashbangs stopped. We had successfully managed to get the power down. But Monty's life was at risk. All of a sudden, they all pushed up the stairs. Reluctantly, I jumped out of the window. But I just got out of the blast zone just in time. The blast had annihilated most of SCP, and I'm sure now their numbers were very low. Because of Monty's successful hack, I was given a camera that I could operate, and clicking into the camera, I could see somewhat and hear the assault taking place on the outskirt base near the town. It was still a heavy firefight, but moving around the jungle, trying to get back to them, I could hear an engine. Then I could see it was a bunch of SCP vehicles. They were clearly getting out of here. They knew that this was a lost cause, but in my eyes, their team is coming to an end and we're about to win. But with Monty's final act being successful and managing to hack the system, he had given us a gift from beyond the grave and the hacking he'd done unlocked a secret video, a video we were never meant to see. If you are watching this then SCP has fallen and you must know the truth. Black Moon Cooperative or the BMC as you may know them as, is the creator of this deadly virus plaguing the server. SCP was created with one sole mission to secure, contain and protect all the living until the zombie outbreak had been dealt with. A year ago we went to war with BMC and captured and secured all Black Moon Cooperative assets including research facilities and military bases. After our successful campaign of neutralizing BMC, we then began our work trying to find a cure for the virus but, our attempts to find a cure were halted as Black Moon Cooperative were beginning to build strength and rumors had it, they were coming to take back control. The strength they were gaining was coming from a small group of survivors who were taken from us en route to our containment island a year ago. We had Umbrella Corp searching the city for us as a proxy faction to try and get these players back to us and back en route to the containment facility. We had no choice but to engage in war with the survivors once they got to our island and broke free from the containment facility. BMC are attempting to get possession of a briefcase. This briefcase is the only thing stopping us from ending what BMC created and the Black Moon Cooperative want this destroyed. If you have possession of this briefcase do not hand it back or all hope is lost. Remember this though.
SCP are good. We have always been good.
We were accidentally the bad guys and clearly a load of players now and survivors had paid the price. Dazrin was dead, Monty's dead, I'm all by myself and zombies are slowly leaking now back into the world from the power plant. Instead of stopping the problem, we've just created more of a problem. BMC got exactly what they wanted and they're now back in the game. The likelihood now of finishing this game mode and actually getting to the end of whatever this story is, is very slim. As there are barely any survivors left and if anything, I might be the last person standing. So if I die, this whole game is over. I was inside an old SCP building and down below, there was a storage room. And while I was in the storage room, I was given a mission. I was told that the remaining survivors of SCP were now on the city server. And I knew this already because when I logged off, I could see them on my server directory. They had managed to cross the bridge and they were taking refuge in the city. I was given two options by the game admins. Get across the bridge yourself and go find SCP or take this communication device and bring it to the tallest building on the map. And if you manage to send out the SOS message, not only will you get an evacuation for yourself, but for any surviving players anywhere on the map. Upload the message, let SCP know that you know the truth and they will come for you. They'll save you and then you can attempt to end this once and for all. In the storage room, I freshened up, loaded up and I was ready to of course get to the tallest building and attempt to rectify the situation and get all remaining players on the map and evacuation out of this map and onto the other island. Even though I could clearly just cross the bridge myself, but now I couldn't be selfish. We needed the rest of the survivors. There was too little of us. As I left the room, the game to escape this island had now begun. And BMC were taking over the whole entire map. They were hunting down all the last survivors so they could win the game mode. And they were also taking back all facility and military bases that were taken off them months ago by the SCP. The BMC members that parachuted onto my building were clearing the zombies below, attempting to take back this base. So while they were distracted with that, I managed to slip over the fence. I didn't want to get spotted, I knew what I had to do. I had to get to the tallest building and upload that SOS signal. But I must admit, I did appreciate the BMC coordinated takeover. Planes and helicopters were flying in everywhere dropping players into the map. This was getting scary. The tallest building I assumed was the tower near the factory where that settlement was. I began making my way there, but it wasn't easy. BMC were everywhere, but slowly and over time, I managed to get into the building. I made it all the way to the top. No one was here. But when I got to the top, the signal wasn't going out. This was not the tallest building on the map. It must be in the other town. But while distracted attempting to upload this signal, BMC were now coming up the building and they were heading to the roof. But not to worry, I have a parachute, but I have to say this. This parachute is a one use thing only. I can't use it again. But this luckily got me out of this sticky situation and I was able to gain some ground and get out of there. I was now making my way to the other city. The tallest building must be there. But I was near the power station and the horde of zombies was thick. Remember, that's where the zombie apocalypse started and that's where they're coming from. While attempting to clear the zombies on the tracks and get through, a train came whizzing by, nearly taking me out of the game. I don't know who was driving that, but they were clearly in a hurry. Just after escaping death, I'd found myself now in the city. And there I could see the tallest building. This must be the one. And as I was getting closer to it, I was about to make my way in, but out of nowhere, a group of survivors came out and they ran straight to me for safety. These must be the players that Monty was taking care of. The players that didn't want to fight in the end. If anything, they just saved themselves by not fighting. I knew what I needed to do. I had to get them out of the city because it was unsafe. There was BMC everywhere. And if I just get to the tallest building and upload this SOS signal, I can get an extraction for myself and the other survivors. So I told them to head out the city in this direction.
And as they were heading out, they got spotted. And a BMC member was coming their way. I went around the other side of the shed and was crouching. And I managed to sneak past him. And get back into the town and now I was on top of the tower. I was here. It was time to send out the SOS signal. The message was sent, an extraction was coming. I was given coordinates to an extraction point, and it was somewhere in the town. I needed to get to the ground, but I could see that the BMC had spotted me, and they were coming up the tower, and I had already used my parachute on the building that I thought was the tallest one. I don't know what to say guys, but my luck had run out. It's up to the other survivors now to see if they can finish the game mode and I'll be documenting their story. Let's see if they can make it to the end. I didn't manage to get to my extraction point, but other survivors, they did. And now they were getting out of here, but they still had to get off the island. But the threat isn't over yet. Remember, they still need to get across the bridge. This car is driving up the tracks. It has one survivor inside and it's darting towards the bridge. And there's a ton of BMC members behind chasing him, shooting and trying to stop them. But this driver had an extraction already planned and an exit route that they wouldn't be expecting. Officially, that is now one survivor off the island and they're heading towards the city map. And now BMC have spotted another helicopter coming in to collect another set of survivors. And this was the helicopter that I was meant to be getting on. I was attempting to get to that extraction point. The final survivors managed to get into the helicopter by the skin of their teeth. And as the helicopter was just taking off, BMC had just caught up. The helicopter was airborne, so they were now safe. And they were making their way to the city on the other island. But now BMC knew all survivors were now off this island and were heading to the city. Eventually, the helicopter had made it to the city. They were on a new server now. This is where SCP is. And the helicopter was flying with haste making its way to its final destination because SCP knew now that all survivors are off the other island that it won't take BMC long to now also be in the city and they'll be coming to finish off any survivors they didn't get so they can win the game mode. The helicopter landed and dropped off the two survivors. And then shortly after, the car that escaped the island with the survivor was now here. All three remaining survivors were in the top secret SCP facility. SCP rushed them down the hole.
and they began opening the vault door. You see, SCP is an admin faction, so they can't go ahead and win the game mode. What lies in the briefcase and why BMC won it so bad is because that can end the zombie apocalypse. It's simple. Inside this briefcase is a way to turn the device that BMC made to make the zombie apocalypse and turn that device into a bomb. But the problem is, and you guessed it, this means the survivors must go back to the other island and now head and go to the epicenter of where this whole story started and destroy the device that's made this problem. If this device is destroyed, survivors win the game. The three players had no other choice but to agree as this was the final game mode. All right, you guys, you guys made it. Good job. Um, you doomed us though, but I got, I have, I have something to give you. And uh, that is? It's a briefcase and I'll show you the importance of that later, but I trust you know what to do with it. They were pushed onto a plane fast because BMC were now here in the city and the plane without hesitation took off and was en route to the power plant. This is the final game mode. This is what all survivors have been attempting to survive for. There could have been 50 of us, but throughout the series, only three remain. It all lies in three players. They have a lot of pressure on their shoulders. All previous survivors are root for them. The three survivors had made the journey to the power station. They were dropped off and they were now beginning the game mode of getting deep inside the facility and find a device that's making the zombies. Destroy it and they win. These are our three survivors, our final hopes to complete in this story. Those players are Teenatrix, who is kindly providing the first person perspective. The second player is Wolftar. And the third is a player who goes by the name of Hot Sweaty Garbage. In my eyes, he's a hot sweaty hero. As they were dealing with a wave of zombies, they were trying to get inside the power plant to find the access route that leads underground. But simultaneously, while this was going on, and our survivors were attempting to do this mission, SCP had a problem. BMC had found them, and they'd found their base. We're about to witness two admin factions go to war against each other. An SCP are on their last legs, and all they can do is hold their ground. They're completely outnumbered. And here's the stats. There's 50 BMC members and only 12 SCP, but they're not gonna go down without a fight. Our survivors were now inside the power plant, but the zombies were really slowing them down and they were struggling to find the access hatch that'll get them inside the facility. But eventually, and with no casualties yet, they found it and they started heading down. And at the same time, BMC were now starting to breach SCP's base. They were starting to head into one entrance, but SCP was laying down fire, attempting to hold them back as long as possible. Now that our survivors were inside the facility, they had to put on gas masks, as down here there's random gas explosions. Gas that will instantly turn you into a zombie. This is the gas that the device is making, creating zombies. So if they don't want to be a zombie themselves, they need the masks on. Now they're underground, it's gonna be very difficult because now they're confined and the zombies can easily close in on them. And if they're not careful, they could get surrounded. They set up a system of one person pushing forward and someone watching behind, and they were making their way to the main room, smoothly taking out all the zombies in front of them. But I can't say things were going as smooth for SCP because now BMC, they had really breached one of the entrances and SCP had no choice but to fall back. And some SCP members were starting to fall and their numbers were getting smaller. They were getting ready for their final stand. But going back to the survivors, steadily, after dodging the gas countless times, they had now found themselves at the door to the main room where everything started. They managed to clear the room of all the undead and they closed the door, sealing them inside. The room was now safe. Teenatrix took out the briefcase and began turning the device that's creating the zombie apocalypse into a device that can end the zombie apocalypse. But when the device was set up, it was obvious. Inbuilt into it was a one minute timer and they couldn't change that. That means if they click this button, they have one minute to escape if they want to survive this whole entire experience. The survivors, they had a problem on their hands. Who was gonna be the one to stay behind and set off the device? And who were gonna be the two that survived? Back over to SCP. They were completely distracted on one entrance. And BMC, I have to admit, were using clever tactics. Keeping them occupied in one entrance, they didn't see the horde of players that were attempting to now come in another side. It's looking very likely that this is the end of SCP altogether. It won't be long until their facility is completely overrun and SCP have nowhere to go. There's no escaping this one. Eventually, the survivors had their hard discussion and it was gonna be Teenatrix who was gonna stay behind and wait and give them time 
before setting off the bomb. Wolftar and Hot Sweaty Garbage are gonna try and make it out of here. One problem though, they'd locked themselves inside this room, but now the door, there was too many undead, and opening that door would flood the room. And that wouldn't be good because they might not even get a chance to set off the bomb. So Natrix had an idea to blow a hole in the side of the wall where they can hopefully escape out of quickly. The plan sounded like a concrete one. It should give them enough time to escape. The makeshift exit was made and sweaty garbage and wolf tar went out but unluckily there was a zombie whore too close and the exit route uh it wasn't really an exit route it was more of just a zombie wall that was never ending coming towards them. sweaty garbage was consumed by the horde and here there was no thinking this was going to be the end teenagers knew this wolf tar knew what was coming too they wanted to at least destroy the device and get the game mode over but doing this would be the ultimate sacrifice the timer has begun, there's no going back now. Finally, after a year, this is the end.